good morning, good Friday. Don't eat the bagel before stream. I ate I ate a nice piece of uh, Italian bread with some warm butter. Good, good. Mo I'm not stinky. I'm not stinky. Oh, I got this. I got this really nice. Oh, 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 oh. The butter on the dog, but the bread this time. Bright, brilliant, brisk, bubbly, boy, and bountiful, brave, bespoke, beneficial, uh, blossoming, bold, benefic, befitting, bona fide, uh, breathtaking, brows at dab day. I am in crippling pain. What? I am also in crippling pain! Why did you do this to us? My, my crippling pain is because I am a woman, therefore I must be punished by the universe. Thank you! Thank you, Toast Engineer, for that I can do any five dollar doodles. Thank you! Thank you! Italian baked with lard is better than Italian baked with butter? Sorry, even if I cooked something with lard, I don't think I could just take a knife to a lard loaf and spread it on cooked bread and then eat it. I feel I feel like that's a, that's a bit much. Keck McKeckerson, thank you the five dollar doodles. Happy fucking Findom Foxloo Friday. Happy Friday! <laughs> Wow, thank you for the nine month resub. I hope you enjoyed your birth, your slip and slide, first one of your life. Hey, boss, can I have a tangent, please? <laughs> hey, thank you. You don't spread the lard on bread, you cook with it? Well, yeah, but that guy said it in response to me saying I spread butter on bread, so I was like, what a fucking weirdo. Do I plan on taking a break after WeebCon? Do you mean like. Like a vacation after WeebCon? Or like, not streaming for the rest of the day after WeebCon? Hello, you insane woman. I can't wait to see what horrors beyond my comprehension you have lined up for you tonight. Oh boy. If only I had more time, I would have been able to dive into even more of a rabbit hole. And I am shaming... I did... I don't, when I... Fucking, when I find out that people have like fucking show producers... And they do similar things to me. I'm just like, what? Can I get a producer? Put a dog, put a butter on the dog, put a dog, dog with the butter, the butter dog. Maya, thank you, thank you, Goldgrave. I'm going I'm to put the butter on you on this Tangent Friday. Thank you. Thank you for the 69 butter dogs. Like a vacation afterwards? It sounds like something that might cause me stress and anxiety. Uh, well, thankfully, I'm not going to be at the con as, as, a, as a flesh puppet. I'm going to be there in my normal skin. So while it still be anxiety inducing, because it'll be my first time doing anything at a convention... Uh, you know, I'm not- I'm not taking a vacation quite yet, but, uh, April... April, I, uh, I might be- I might be leaving for a little bit. I, mean, I might be- I might be leaving for a little bit, chat. Let's say, hypothetically, I did have a tab for that. You gonna say that in a Ben Shapiro voice? She's leaving us! Just for- just for a little while! I haven't taken a vacation since 2020. Like, unless, unless I had tummy hurt to the point of I am vomiting and I can't stop, I have not taken a day off of stream. I guess the donathon I took a little bit of a recovery period, but it wasn't as long as anyone expected me to. So I haven't really had a real vacation since 2020. And when spicy I took my vacation in 2020, uh, it was, it was fucking terrible. I wanted to kill myself. So, theoretically, I haven't had... Any vacation. <laughs> Took one day off a month ago to catch up on business stuff. Yeah? Yeah, when I take days off, they're not real days off. They're days to catch up on business. <clears throat> hello, hello, Zytheros. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, raiders. I hope you had a good stream, dude. Kisha found her house, himbo, and face connect contract. I don't have a house or a himbo or a contract. None of those, none of those things are real. That's good. I deserve a vacation. Will I come back with a new look? Um, I'm planning things before I leave, so we're gonna we're gonna have some we're gonna have some fun stuff before I leave. Also, some fun stuff after I leave. 
hopefully you appreciate me engaging with you in the Razor Force. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't get to type in there as much as I would like to. Because uh, as people in my Discord can tell you, I also don't type in there as much as I used to. I, I am just absolutely swarmed, so I have no time for anything. Are you supposed to, what are you supposed to do while I'm gone? Read real news! Well, <clears throat> because, because I am a filthy fucking workaholic and I am also, you know, parasocial goes both ways. I couldn't imagine taking an entire vacation and not streaming a single time. So even though I won't be able to do like full streams or anything, uh, I'll probably try to do a couple of like just hanging out and chatting. Maybe I can coerce my like aunt to cook with me or something. I I could I could finally wrangle my father into into doing something with me since I'll be there in person. So maybe maybe I can do a couple of a couple. Like I bought I literally bought a laptop because I was like I can't be away from from my honorable chatters for that long. <laughs> Coercion, yay! I love coercion! And you guys know if my if my mom starts doing some fucked shit, I'm gonna pull out that laptop. We're gonna we're gonna world star, alright? <laughs> Gabriel Quintaro, thank you for the five dollars. So, so ah, 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 Background ah, music. Ah, ah. She can't live without us. I can't. Some money for the avoiding Boeing travel costs. Thank you, Irshi. Thank you. I am terrified of flying now. <laughs> flying, flying sounds literally fucking horrifying in current year. Hail and well met. I need this today. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the clown world. The yickening, the yeb, it demands it. Man, how the fuck did yick do a sequel? What is happening? Gabriel Quintero, thank you for $5. Since four years ago, you take a vacation every presidential election being part of a political party confirmed. I'm not saying that I am Wait, Donald what? Trump, Long? but China loves me. <laughs> you can imagine spending a week on a beach in a tropical paradise. You can imagine it. Imagine it is all you can do at this point. I actually wouldn't really like a long vacation at a beach in a tropical paradise. I'm an arctic fox who... I don't want- I don't want those tropical temperatures! I'm gonna- I'm gonna get there and just have to like, attach my inhaler to my face with staples. If it's a Bowen, I ain't going, dude! True. True and real. I should watch the solar eclipse. The last one looked like a raining ring in the sky. She was Kino. I would love- I would love- you know what would be- you know what would be real Kino? If you, I'm a night person, so if you go to like a gazebo by a river, you have a night picnic, and then the, and then like, and then you can wake wake up with the sun. You just you'd camp out there, and then the next day, you're laying in the grass and you see the solar eclipse. That's, that's, that'd be great. That'd be great. Tropics hate. I agree. How about that new Manju game? I saw Dishwasher tweet that shit out and I pre-regged. Like, I, I knew about it like basically two hours after it was posted. Speaking, speaking of flying, you might have mentioned this before, but did I see the Boeing whistleblower committed suicide? I did, I had that in a tab somewhere. I don't know where it is at this point, but it was in a tab somewhere at some point. Funny, funny last Friday. You might have mentioned this before. Oh, I already read that, I already read that. Night picnic at the Crocs eat you? No! Do not get eaten by the crocodile! Don't do that! How well does Kirsha tan again? I don't. I burn. Real bad. <laughs> real, real bad. <laughs> Watching a VTuber last night, I mentioned sounding, and it reminded you of me! You blame me for it for some reason, even though you have no proof? <clears throat> well, you're in luck. I can preemptively tell you guys. Uh, I'm going to be on It's a Gundam's channel on April 3rd. And I'm very much going to bring up that time I raided him and immediately Ziltek brought up sounding. I just- that- that blows my mind that that happened. <laughs> I was like, I don't- how did- how did that manage- why did you solidify me as the sounding streamer? <laughs> Last time you wore shorts, you got sunburn bad enough that the top layer of your skin was peeling off? Oh, Jesus. Not a female on my Gundam stream! It's okay, I'm not real, I'm a VTuber. <laughs> oh. 
Nice cock. Nice cock. The Papa Gundam, yeah. Yeah. He like it's a Gundam, he goes up on a rant for like 30 minute videos. Jesus, that's what I do! What do you mean? <laughs> T T Vuva! Need Kevin to make a sounding rod ass asset? Oh god, please. Can we get feet before you go? I, I give you feet and a hundred thousand followers. I am following in Pippa's footsteps. She started the trend. Clips are doing fire. Give you more content to shill out to the masses. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad uh, they're not too demonetizing for you. And Kirsha on Papa Gundam, no more a literal who. <laughs> The <laughs> game is keeping the cake. This should not be an achievement, but in today's day and age, it is. It is! Fness, they give the five dollar doodles. It, it is an achievement, but I'm also tentative, because we have to remember, all right? As, mu as much as we love our Azure Lane women, Azure Lane, Manju, a Hong Kong company, it's uh, giga-censored in China. So I'm hoping they will keep the trend where they giga-censor in China, because China, but they don't giga-censor for us. That is- that is my hope! And Kirsha and Papa Gundam taking vitamins together, that would be fucking wild! Can you imagine? Ah! Fanatical, fortuitous, fantastic, fibrous, fearless, flamboyant, fortunate, frilly, fixable, fibrous. fragrant, fashionable, fearful, filtered, festive, foxy, fluttering, flawless, forgetful, flirtatious, flavorful, feverish, fertile, feminine, fuzzy, <laughs> forceful, frisky, yeah. fox, fuck, Friday. A fucking fertile, feminine, fuck, zoo. <laughs> Spider God, thank you for the seven dollars! I love the alliteration. I love it. Steve, thank you for the ten, baby. Preach! I'm your favorite type of conspiracy theory gal! What do you mean? It's not a conspiracy if it's really happening. I just, I just like, I watch people say shit and I'm just like, wow, how can they say that? <laughs> cuck. cuck! No! How do you- Toast Engineer, thank you for the five dollars. How are you- how are you- no cock, No cucking! You love it when your fertile females are fibrous? Yeah, full of fiber. And cut off my hand and eat it. Speaking of China, have I seen three body problem? Even Chinese authors admit they'd betray humanity. No, I have no idea what that is. Slakefer, <laughs> Slakefer, thank you for the ten gift subbies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They just started saying things in front of cameras. They just started saying things in front of cameras, and you know, uh, 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 more people would know, but they only have like two subscribers. I, I don't understand it. Most powerful people in the world. Nobody's watching their videos. Bleh. Bleh. Am I seeing the shooting going down in Moscow and how CIA intel from the embassy said to avoid large gatherings beforehand? Uh, I saw the video on Discord briefly before I started stream. It's not something that I can show uh, on stream, obviously. Uh, it's kind of crazy, uh, seeing how the terrorists shot a whole bunch of people and murdered them, and then in these clumps of people who got obliterated by the terrorists, there's a couple who survived. And it's like, I cannot imagine what would be going through the head of someone who just watched everyone around them get murdered, uh, and yet somehow they did not. Moscow shooting happened an hour ago. Yeah, I've only seen the one video and it's it's a uh, hundred percent not something I can show on stream. I don't know, feel lucky. I mean, there's probably a bit of feeling lucky mixed in with feeling like terrible, right? Cause like there's no way you're not gonna feel survivor's guilt after that. Sagrun Eterna, thank you for the five dollars. Can I explain the FUDA to can't please your partner pipeline? Couldn't find anything, and you've searched FUDA enough times for one lifetime. Uh, it's more to do with porn addiction. Uh, with porn addiction, you end up getting to find more and more extreme things because, you know, once you're done watching people fuck in the missionary position, you're like, oh, well, let's go to anal. Oh, well, let's go to gaping. Oh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I need like five people banging one woman now. Uh, you know, you just, you just keep escalating. It just keep escalating. It goes further and further. And in my personal opinion, nice I think I think hentai is less damaging because most people have that solid 
It's a cartoon. It's not real. So I can't equate it to real life barrier. Uh, but unfortunately, it seems that a lot of people in current year are unable to differentiate between fiction and reality. Like calling, you know, lolly pedophilia content. You know, you're not an actual pedophile. They're not real, right? But it seems to be a trend when I've spoken to guys who have issues performing sexually, uh, that FUDA is a common trend with these men, where they have spent enough time jerking off to FUDA content that when they try to sexually perform with a flesh woman in real life, uh, they have issues either getting hard, staying hard, or ejaculating during the process, because there's something in their brain that expects the woman to have a penis. I don't know how to explain it either, because these men, again, they're not gay. They don't like men. They don't like penises in real life, for a uh, politically correct way to put that. So it, it doesn't make sense that they would sort of have this weird disconnect where they're with a woman that has the body parts that they are sexually attracted to. But because they've spent years jerking off to Fuda, there's a disconnect that just doesn't make them work. I'm not, I'm not a fucking doctor, so I can't tell you why that disconnect is there. And it seems weird to me as well, as someone who doesn't experience or hasn't experienced porn addiction. But as this is a common trend with well more than like 20 dudes that I've spoken to about porn addiction, I, I tried, it's kind of, it's a little bit of a trend, I would say. <laughs> They need to counter condition themselves with tomboys and milfs, unironically. Hey, yo, uh, that's why yeah. that's why I'm just like, if you enjoy food, you do you bro, but like just don't turn me into one, alright? I got I got a I got a fucking woman cave. Let's keep it at that. <laughs> Pretty gay. It's already too late for you. You watch Bible Black when you were eleven. It was over for you. It got imprinted. Look, I've I've watched Bible Black too, but I don't suddenly want my men with giant milky titties. You know, it's like there's a difference between watching something once and it becoming a habit or an addiction. <laughs> a big old cucumber. Thank you for the five dollars. Personally, you count the little bean on top of the clam as a pay pay. It's basically what the time? same thing, but that's just you. You guess. I got some news for you. If you're having sex with a woman and the only way you're enjoying yourself is you think of the clitoris as a pee-pee, you might be gay. <laughs> it's not the same thing. <laughs> not an FBI, thank you for the two. Ah, isn't future gay with extra steps? Oh my God. No, it can't be! <laughs> Food is gay, traps are gay, period. Period, man. Tell that to everyone who has to sexualize the blueberry thing from Willy Wonka. I think you're in the wrong chat. Bow the bowberry is a couple of a couple of doors down. <laughs> the woman and her big tits are great, but imagine if she had a big throbbing penis, a man who insists they're straight. Holy fuck. <laughs> Yeah, Discord's over there. <laughs> Kissing a woman is gay because women like men. Oh, God. I used to make that joke often, but it feels like people in current year would take that seriously. <laughs> so it's like, I can't I can't be out here. Yeah, you know, your woman kisses men. That, that woman has had a dick in her mouth, and so if you kiss that woman, that means you're gay because her lips have touched dick and your lips touched hers. So by, by the transitive property, you are now also gay. We can't have jokes like that anymore because someone will go, you know what? You're right. You're so smart. That makes sense. I like woman. Therefore, I'm gay. Time to go on Tinder and get my bussy blasted. I just joined for the first time and it's already a wild ride. Welcome to Zombocom. Radstorm, they give the $2. Kirsha explaining the pipeline is why you quit porn. I think, I think addiction to many things is dangerous. But I also don't think there's a problem with consuming something that's not necessarily good for you, like alcohol or weed or pornography, as long as you can understand to consume it in moderation, right? 
Like, everything in moderation, as it were. <clears throat> Danny D, thank you for the full 99. I remind you of a quote from a book that was, doctors describe his condition as homosexual but stable. Mm, yes, he's a stable homosexual. He's capable of keeping a job. He's not yet been infected by the HIV. Please protect him. Keep him under surveillance so that the bug chasers may not get him. <laughs> Gamer subs flavor pussy blast. You know, I would not be surprised if something like that came out. If I tried the Gamer Sup's ramen, it says protein, but given how they get the protein for their bars, you're concerned it doesn't list the protein source. When they first came out, actually, I'm gonna put this up on screen because this is gonna this is gonna be the first thing I talk about. Uh, when the when the ramen first came out, people were worried about it having cricket protein. It doesn't. It does, and even after me saying that it doesn't like a trillion times, people were still asking. So I literally asked my gamer subs rep, and he was like, "You can assure your chat, uh, there are no bugs in the ramen. So you've 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 heard it here." No bugs in the ramen is safe. No bugs. <clears throat> you consume copious amounts of tobacco, but not to the point of addiction. Malevolent <laughs> Creek <laughs> Gorilla. Thank you for the 19.99. Any word on when more Kusha cubes will be in stock? You missed out. Oh no, I'm sorry. They were they were available for about a month to purchase back in I think it was like November to December. Um. And so they were supposed to ship out in April, so they actually shipped out a bit earlier than we were expecting. I am not sure when slash if they will do another run of the plushie. Uh, usually those things are one and done. Uh, and they were interested in doing uh, more Kirsha Cube plushies, because I have I have different fruit variants of the cube. So they were they were interested in doing those in the future. Mm. Can you, can you blame your weapon insert fetish on Bible Black? Master Goa, thank you for the two dollars. But also, do not stick your gun inside a woman. The vagina juices are not going to be good on the metal. Uh, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Anya, you almost there? Play subliminal messages to get Kier back to church? What the hell? What did he mean by this? It's very important to practice moderation when consuming dangerous substances. Unfortunately, there is no dosage of Kirsha that isn't fatal, and any dosage comes with risk of addiction. Yeah, but I want you to make it so, you know, addiction to me is okay. <laughs> Help! Invisible Puma, they give the two months of prune. Your wife and you are expecting your first child! Just finished the first trimester. Hey, yo! Congratulations! I hope, uh, I hope you have a very... Very easy birth. I've I've heard horror stories about labor, so I want I want it to be very good and easy for your wife. <laughs> I can quit any time. Heard from a nurse friend about a guy that lost his balls. They rotted away. The dude didn't release the poison for about twenty years. What the fuck? What the fuck? That reminds you. Where's your patch? I don't know. Ask PK. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if he's even sent me my patches yet. I have to I have to message him again. I woke up yesterday to like 28 new DMs on Discord and I was like, oh, no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Some people are hardwired. They can't do moderation in everything. If you feel like you can't consume prawn the same way an alcoholic will quit 100% because they know even all. What? I feel like, I feel like you were making sense and then it broke down there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's easy to say just don't get addicted, idiot. But yeah, obviously some people are more prone to that. Should clarify the statement, no bugs intentionally in the ramen. Then give the hundred biddies of roughly mez. I guess, I guess that's fair. There's always the risk of some bug getting into the machinery and getting crushed up inside of it. But that's, that's for everything, you know? You need a Kirsha cube to keep your cock block company? I'm sorry, what? Patchwork said that they'd be out 4124, by the way. Thank you! Thank you, Creek Gorilla Man! I know. Radstrom, thank you the $2. Addicted to brake fluid, I can stop whenever I want. Please don't drink that. I understand you're making a joke, but like, people drink antifreeze. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> 
That's free extra protein. I'm not complaining. I do not want to eat the bug. <clears throat> yeah, big guy. Has any of the honorable chatters asked you to become their kid's godmother yet? No, and I do not expect them to. I feel like you want to ask someone to be a godmother when they have, like, access to you and the child in real life, you know? Like, you can can pawn off your kid to them on the weekends when you need a little quality time with each other. That's that's what, like, a godparent is for, you know? I'm just I'm just a fox on the internet. <laughs> Thank you for the 690! Don't be Rama-Rama, but the gas station smells so good! Hunter, why, why shit? Thank you for the five dollars. What is the LD50 for porn? When does porn become poisonous? I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to tell. I've spoken to dudes who have dealt with porn addiction and dealt with issues because of it, but I like... I don't, I don't know if there was ever a point where they were like, oh wow, this is an issue until it was already too far, you know? Am I good with kids? I mean, I would say so. I've, I've watched people kids before. What if someone gets addicted to the fox suit? Oh, I'm just fine. You know what? As long as you're not spending all of your money on me because you need to also spend money on yourself, I would say it's fine. I'm putting Kirsha VODs on to babysit your kids. Please do not. Please do not play my streams for children. You're at work, so you be lurking. I hope you have a good day at work. Big, big linemen. Thank you for the 300 biddies. The fact that gamer subs did it once is enough. We can't trust them to release anything with protein in it without at least asking a few dozen times. That is fair, but that is also why I asked them while I was live, you know? Are you supposed to be pantless right now? Yes. Who sits in their own home with pants on? You fucking freaks. It's a psychological one, so highly dependent on your specific brain wiring. Just jerk it to imagination only often enough and you'll probably be fine. Are there people in chat who get like crazy when I say just use your imagination, man. They're just like, but men are visual creature. We can't use our imagination. And they're like, well, if you don't train your imagination, uh, you're gonna you're gonna have trouble with your woman later on because women are mental creatures. And no matter how much piston thrusting you're doing, uh, the talking and the painting a mental image with your woman is going to get her off way better than any of that pistol pumping can do. Well, I said pistol, but I meant piston. Please do not, I get, please do not put a gun in your woman. <laughs> This sucks for the blind, horny men out there. <laughs> they probably got some wild finger abilities. If men can rotate an apple, they can also rotate a naked lady! True! True! I was like, if I as a whammon, who am I'm supposed to be some mythical creature that, that takes like Mensa level IQ to figure out how to give an orgasm, right? If I can do it to myself in under a minute, all right? Like, imagination can do wonders. <laughs> Women aren't real. Have I had a flavor idea for gamer slaps yet? No. Uh, I got drafts for my cup uh, art recently. So hopefully, hopefully uh, that will finish up in a couple of weeks. And maybe by the time I'm back from vacation, We'll be, we'll be ready to have a, a launch date. 50% of people don't even have an inner monologue and you're expecting them to imagine fat material? Yes. Make, make inner monologues plentiful again. <sighs> Ketchup or sounding themed gamer subs? What the fuck? Under a minute is possible, baby. How about tangerine? Call it tangentrine juice? I think they have a tangerine flavor already. You can play her snooch like a goddamn float, but she still won't bust unless she's being played as the backing track to a fanastical epic. A PP will get the job done in 15. That's called efficiency chat. What the hell? <laughs> Wait, people don't have inner monologue. Yeah, there are there are people that do not have inner monologue. If women need talking in a collaborative mental picture, how do so many of them get off with dogs? In order to answer your question, I would have to put my mind in the position of a woman who wants to get fucked by a dog. And as I have a very vivid imagination, I am going to decline this mental exercise. I do not wish to think about this. Bring, bring, bring back sounding with wasps instead. <laughs> 
Silent reading used to be unheard of. St. Augustine shocked people by being able to read without moving his lips. What a magician. What a magician. Hidden, they give you the $4.99. You can't rotate an apple, just a wampa. What is a wampa fruit? What is that? I sat there in confusion hearing that statement. Well, I mean, that's uh, almost any time during my stream, let's be real. <laughs> Remember that in history, bestiality was fucking punishment? Wait, what? Wait, what? That's, there's no way that that's true. There's no way that that's, they didn't use bestiality as a punishment. What? Speaking of bestiality as a punishment, gamer soups have been restocked on gamer subs. And there's also a new cute animu label. Uh, RNG for the, uh, the, the melon flavor. You got, you can restock on your game of soups or get, try to get, try to get anime melons for, uh, 10% off your order. Use code Kirsha. <laughs> what a transition. <laughs> Wampa fruit are the coins of Crash Bandicoot. Oh, okay. Okay. I just didn't remember what they were called. Tariq Nasheed's masterpiece films taught you all about bestiality punishment. You can't fool me. I thought buck breaking was just them getting whipped excessively. I didn't know they were getting fucked by horses. Where, where, what? I didn't learn in school that Jeez, black men were me. raped by horses in front of their families. What is happening? The inner monologue thing is crazy. I do have one, but it's not going on 24 seven like some people. It's only there when I want it to be there. I'd say like 50% of the time I'm just going on instinct. Also, I haven't had breakfast yet, so I cow I'd feel. <laughs> Breezy love, I hope you have breakfast soon so you can understand how you feel. Thank you for the $10. <laughs> Thank you. I'm fucking... I had something else I was going to reply, but I forgot half of your statement. Hold on. <laughs> My, my brain is constantly going like a million miles an hour because anxiety doesn't let you have any rest from your own thoughts, unfortunately. Which is why I enjoy smoking weed on occasion. When I smoke weed, I get to feel like an NPC and it is wonderful. Like if I, if I, if I hit the pipe and it's a, it's a good strain, yeah? My brain gets grind to a fucking halt. No thoughts, just peace. I don't have, I don't have a million thoughts or a million worries anymore. I don't have to follow 72 trillion different roads to see what'll happen with every decision that I make. It's just emptiness and nothing. Happy birds are tweeting inside of my skull. Nothing is happening. And for, for a little while, I could just feel kind of blissful, you know? They, they really do say ignorance is bliss. And when I get high, I have zero brain activity. She got the autism. That's called self-medicating. Whatever it's called, I'm fucking down for it, dude. <laughs> Yay weed, I grow that. Head empty, no thoughts, only blissful silence. Of course, your mods activated. <laughs> weed makes you sick, so nicotine's your go-to for dealing with anxiety. I know people who get like hella paranoid when they smoke, so like I can understand why some people don't do it at all. I was like, if I if I were to smoke weed and then I imagined like the lizard people breaking through my door and trying to assassinate me, I'd probably also not want to smoke weed. How often am I high? I haven't smoked in years now. Uh, because I don't I don't have anyone to sell me weed and I'm not gonna just like roam around. You know, what's the biggest metropolis I can think of? Atlanta. I'm not gonna roam around Atlanta and just be like, hey yo, uh any, anyone willing to sell some weed to a white woman? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Just yell out your window. That's why dark net markets exist. Hello, I would like one order of drugs, please. Not cut with fentanyl, if you will. <laughs> you haven't smoked weed in about two hours now. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> Yeah, you'll just do that for the opiates. I don't even remember how I found my opiate man at this point. I'm gonna be real with you. <laughs> Weed is super unpleasant for you. You were praying for M? I don't know what that means. Who's M? 
Here's your fed posting. Just, uh, you know, go up to the local Wendy's, throw throw down, like, the money for the meal, and then slide them another 20 and be like, Hey, yo, where can I get one hit of the marijuana's? If you tell me this is all yours, buddy. <laughs> Hasn't smoked in years, but still has the dildo on her desk. It's not a dildo, it's a pipe! And I have shit on my desk that I haven't used in even longer than that pipe. Like, eyeshadow and mascara and lipstick. I don't know how to fucking use that shit. Is it even still good? Probably not, but it's here. <laughs> like the ketchup bottle. Actually, I had to open a new ketchup bottle today, so you can't. It doesn't have a very loud shake because it's full. Clean your desk? I mean, I clean it occasionally. I have a lot of bottle caps on it right now, though. The fellow ne'er do wells, I don't suppose any of you know where an outlaw like myself could purchase some cannabisms? Or as I like to call it, the Mary Janes? Hey, help! How's the bottle cap collection? Uh, I bought cane sugar root beer recently. Because I, I really like root beer, but I don't like corn syrups. And it has... Do you hear that? Do you... Look, the, they're metal bottle caps! They're not plastic! They're metal! Stop, you stop. How do you do, fellow criminals? <laughs> you have around 5,000 bottle caps. That man's gonna be set during the apocalypse. How the fuck did you get so many? The fox is ticking. I'm a bomb. Is that the IBC bottle? It is! I would love to set up a whole bunch of empty IBC bottles and then shatter them if I had a vector. <laughs> Collected him for like 10 years. You were a hard drinker. Oh, that makes sense. That meant cane sugar so good. Hard agree, dude. Oh my god. Cool bug fact. 80% of all animal life on Earth are insects. Thanks, I hate it. Can we exterminate them? Flea, fleas will burn. Thank you for the five dollar doodles. Hear anything about Atlanta makes you glow? Can't go five minutes without someone acting tough on you? Or if you live in its perimeter, you got the rejects? All I really know about Atlanta is that it's a catfish capital of the United the States. I'm not into vomit butthole, but like, I'm curious if he's done it. I made a thread on X about woke gaming non-profit pixels. Also, I just had to put my dog down. I am <gasps> very sad. Tiger Knock, I'm sorry about your doggo. Hopefully, hopefully he had lived a very long, good life and it wasn't you had to do it early or anything. That's uh, sad either way, but at, at least if, you know, it's old age, you spent a long ass time with him. Thank you, thank you for the, the $20 dollary doodles. Rip doggo, sorry my guy. And uh, I do have your thread up in a tab. I have it up, I have it. Fox <clears throat> you didn't know that well? You thought he was gonna say, let's go! No, he wasn't joking. There was a period, and you think, in 2014, where 100% of murders were done by a certain group of people in Atlanta. Dragon's treasure. I'm, I'm sure I can guess what that certain group of people are. <laughs> George is really ghetto. You're from Dead Town? What the fuck is Dead Town? The whole state is dead to you! What? You plan to move to the Midwest and you don't blame me at all for wanting to head back north? Dude, Georgia fucking sucks! Don't let- Don't let anyone gaslight you into thinking anything in Georgia is worthwhile. Like... <laughs> fucking... My first encounter of the Georgian kind was when I was still in... I think I was- I can't remember if it was 8th grade or ninth grade. But my grandparents planned a trip for us to Disney World! Because, like, my aunt wanted to take her children. My grandparents thought it would be fun for me to be able to go. It was a lot of fun. But, uh, we stopped in... Oh god, it begins with an S! It begins with an S! It's where, it's where the forest gump bench is! Savannah! That's how I remember that shitty fucking town. Uh, we stopped in Savannah for a couple of days. And we saw some, like, touristy stuff there. Uh, the entire fucking town smelled like straight raw sewage. Like, absolutely the most disgusting town I had ever fucking been to. 
And like whenever whenever I get on one of my like Georgia hate rants, inevitably someone is always like, "But Savannah is such a great place to go. You t if you visit Savannah, you won't think that way about Georgia anymore." I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about? That was my first exposure and why I hated Georgia in the first place." Stankin like straight ass. Unironically, the air smells better next to a water waste facility than it does in Savannah. Icky! <laughs> How did I get there anyway? Uh, I had just gotten out of an abusive relationship when I was in Massachusetts still, and I applied for jobs in states where I had friends so I could just kind of like move wherever. Uh, first first job to hit me back and was like, hey, yo, we're gonna hire your ass was in Georgia. So I was like, well, I guess I'm moving here now. Native Georgian Savannah's a little Atlanta. How terrifying. Asked Bagman to go to Savannah. He spent like 10 years at a sewage plant. Oh, geez. You're from Georgia. You believe Sherman should have kept going. Just burn it to the ground again. Nothing, nothing of value would be lost. My life is just one long, sad ride of shit. It's a, it's a very blunt way of putting it, but uh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> and unfortunately, I just uh, I just keep hoping, you know, one day it's, uh, it's all gonna get better, you know? It's getting better lately, at least you hope so. I mean, I got you guys. I got you guys now. You guys are pretty fucking great. Andrew B, they give the five dollars. At least Georgia still has the Lego store, unlike Alabama. Oh no. I'm from Savannah. Sorry for the smell. <laughs> and the ornamental pear tree, it smells like cum. Why is there an ornamental cum smelling pear tree? I don't I don't understand. The only thing going for Georgia is that it isn't Iowa. I'd rather be in Iowa than Ohio. Let's be real. <laughs> So it could be started on Atlanta, probably the worst airport you've ever had the displeasure of experiencing. I I would say LAX and the Chicago airport are both worse than Atlanta's. Georgia love. Atlanta gives this place a bad rep, but if it wasn't for the carpet baggers from there, it'd be based. Yanks, like always, ruin what's beautiful. What is what is a carpet bagger? Is that is that a racial slur? Am I gonna get banned? <laughs> Doctor Faust, thank you for the five dollars. Thank you. I'm sh I'm sure I'm sure you could make Georgia a lovely place, but it would take way too much time and work. That's me. I'm a Yankee carpet bagger. I'm a Yankee, but what is a carpet bagger? It's a Civil War era anti-North slur, but why? What is... Carpetbag is a Northerner who moved to the South and looked down on Southerners. Oh, well then that's a good thing, because they retained their supremacy over the people in the South. Atlanta is a massive hole. It should be. Thank you for the five dollars, King Heavy Meta. You're from Ohio, you don't get the hate. The only things in Ohio are corn and meth. That's why the hate. All, all I can tell you about Ohio is that the government blew up several of your trains. And I watched 90 Day Fiance and there was a crazy middle-aged woman who genuinely believed that some young Moroccan guy was actually interested in her. And then imported him here. Also, Nim is in Ohio. Yeah, he could probably escape before Nim. he gets nuked. Nim. Gamer soups! Nim. Yeah, get your gamer soup. Yeah. You went to Ohio last year. The people there were really nice. <laughs> Which Chicago? They have Midway and O'Hare. Both are shit though. O'Hare. I've never been to Midway. Only O'Hare. The shit cunts who go into political stations and fucked and then fucked shit up. Zaxby's used to be good. I've never had Zaxby's. You live next to Ohio and you can say nothing about Ohio. <laughs> Why would anyone nuke Ohio? There's nothing to nuke. It's the safest place. That's what they want you to think. Yankees are what has become liberals overall, which is a better way to describe it. I wouldn't describe myself as a liberal. Jen Rollins, thank you for the two dollars. Atlanta has CNN headquarters, so no. 
You liked Midway better, but fuck Cicero Avenue. I don't know anything about that. I've never had, you know, I've never had Zaxby's. I've also never had Culver's, Carver's, whatever that other chicken place is. O'Hare's a good airport. What fucking clown word are you living in, man? <laughs> you loathe the street. Please give the Golden Isle of Georgia a chance. I swear our beaches aren't bad. Man, I miss going to the beach. I haven't been to the beach in years. Nom John, thank you for the five dollars. To quote a good friend, Ohioans hate Ohio so much they keep inventing new ways to escape it. Understandably so. Understandably so. Let me, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me, uh, let me, uh, Wait, is this the right browser? It is. Oh my god, what the fuck? I'm kind of cracked. I didn't think I was in the right browser. You owe it to yourself. Try Huey Magoo's chicken tenders and Culver's. I saw I saw Huey Magoo's uh, logo, and I was very confused. I was like, "That's really cute," but like, it's fast food. Am I being advertised to? King Heavy Meta, thank you for the five dollars. Culver's is mid and overpriced. Not worth it. That's how I feel about places like Five Guys when you get further north. I'm so excited because when I when I take my vacation, I'll be able to stop at Flying J's again. Bros, if you live in like the Carolinas, go to a fucking Flying J's. I don't know what it is or where their chicken tendies come from, but unironically, Flying J's has some of the best chicken tendies I've ever had in my fucking life. Move to North Texas, the commies get strung up and the bad neighborhoods get kept in check because they're right next to good neighborhoods. How come no one told me that Texas still has legal lynchings? What, you guys are supposed to be based. Why didn't you tell me about this? <clears throat> Tendies mentioned I have fully woken up. <laughs> boiled peanuts on the road. So I'm not a fan of boiled peanuts. They look gross. They smell gross. They feel gross. I just, I'm not a fan. Bucky's brisket is great. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Come to North Texas, enjoy the 50 plus acres of land under 100k. Run from the boars, coyotes, and tornadoes. Look, I'm trying to get a Victorian house. If, if there's a Victorian house in North Texas that's like not super expensive and then I wouldn't get destroyed by a tornado, I, yeah, I might consider it, but I'm pretty married to the fucking North. Bucky's is god tier gas station. Never, never seen it. Just turn peanuts into butter and Asian food like the rest of us. <laughs> the Texans talk about it too much. People want to move there and there's already way too many Californians. You would think that the Californians would prevent you from lynching people. Queen of the North. Yeah. Yeah, we could think about it that way, you know. There's only one Bucky's in South Carolina. Hmm. Ohio and Warlord. Thank you for the five dollars. Ohio love. Also, Kirsha Gamer Slaps Waifu Cup when? Soon, TM. The the design is in progress. I do not like rushing my artists, but he is he's very good and I trust him. Game of Thrones LARPer. I'm not gonna commit incest. Texas does not like to advertise about things that would cause people to move in and try to vote like where they lived. But if you, if you promote lynching, why would people who dislike lynching want to move there? Wouldn't they be in danger of getting lynched before they vote? Ask Nyaru about Bucky. She's done whole streams showcasing it. <gasps> I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to take like videos at some of the restaurants I really like and then post them on Twitter for you guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do Twitter spaces. The North, what a strange and foreign land full of strange people. <clears throat> Razorwind, thank you for the five dollars. If I ever go to Philadelphia, eat at Nifty Fiefties. The nuggets are made with cutlets and homemade breading, and their 100 plus shakes are to die for. I've been to Philadelphia before, but I never went there. Ne it was never even mentioned to me. The problem is, most people have with California expats isn't the politics, it's the money and the attitudes. Californians don't think rules apply to them. True. You're a former Californian who fled to Texas. We're not all brain dead, I swear. You're stuck in oregano until your parents move or die, but who knows if America will still exist by then. I'm sorry you're stuck in the, the Oregon state. Money. What are you talking about? The Californians are the racists that want the segregation and think certain people are too dumb to figure out where the DMV is to get an ID. While the Californians are giga racists, 
they believe that they are the correct kind of racist. So I don't think that they would advocate for lynching unless it was for why people, you know? <laughs> Have I been to Montana? No, but I've heard it's beautiful. I bet the tendies you guys find delicious have some bugs with the white meat. The fuck is wrong with you? Native Texans are too well armed for anyone to tell us what to do. And you can carry an AR-15 and samurai sword legally at the same time. You're trying to sell me on Texas. And that makes me want to look up Victorian style houses in Texas. And I know that I'm probably not going to find all that many. Hey, 50-50s lover, I see you. Do it. I have a plan for today, chat. I had things I want to talk about. You can't, you can't just have me Googling Victorian houses for sale, Texas. And then, uh, let's see. Zillow. What, what do we got here on Zillow? This is in Houston, Texas. How far- Houston, that doesn't look very far north! Zillow? How far north are we talking? Like Dallas or up in the little square with like Amarillo and Lubbock? Do not go to Houston! Houston bad! Montana me, that my home, stay away. California's trying to make it new Cali, what the fuck? <laughs> Stream's over, we're back in real estate! Hey, I like real estate, okay? <laughs> Dallas, we're looking we're looking at Dallas here. Whenever I see Plano, I think it says piano. Maybe that's just me though. Alright, okay, that's that's Air Kinsass. We don't want no fucking Air Kinsass land. Alright, we got coming soon. And for sale. I'm gonna erase the word style because you only need to have it say Victorian. Okay, it still gave me a house in Oklahoma, but this looks this looks pretty nice. Let me just uh let me just uh Oh my god. Oh my god. If there is any indication that you shouldn't buy a house right now, like holy fuck. Look at, look at this fucking garbage. Look at this, look at this fucking garbage. Uh, just fucking schwaloops all the way up. A fucking schwaloop. Oh, this is, this is a cute, this isn't Texas, this is Oklahoma, but that's pretty, that's pretty cute. That's a cute house. Doesn't look like it has much uh, land to go along with it, unfortunately. In inside inside has been kind of modernized. They definitely didn't they definitely didn't keep it maintained. Wow! What the fuck is this dog shit ass kitchen? Get out of here. I'm no longer interested. Only half an acre too. Get out of here. You dumb bitch. You dumb bitch. Friggin' white trash. How much land does a fox you need? It depends. It really depends. Oh, well, that's Las Vegas, New Mexico. Oh, I guess I need to, I need to, like, zoom in a bit more. That's Oklahoma up there. Oklahoma, hold on. Hold on, where the fuck, where the fuck is Texas boundaries? Like, right here. Like, right here. Okay, this is pretty cute. Four bath, three bedroom. That's a pretty cute house. It would need to be completely redone paint-wise, because, like, the outside definitely doesn't look... Definitely doesn't look Victorian anymore. This looks really cute. This is this is like I could see myself shooting up some cowboys out here, you know, doing some Red Dead Redemption in the backyard. Oklahoma is just California, Texas. Okay, the inside has been completely gutted. That's really unfortunate. They don't even have the original banisters anymore. That's really unfortunate. This looks like shit. This looks horrific. This looks terrible. I'm no longer interested. Uh, this one. This one's cute, but we're already- This is- this isn't cheap! This is back up to, like, Massachusetts numbers. A four-bed, three-bath, 3,000 square feet, 539,000 dollars. 
Hey, if you're looking for lovely Victorian homes, there's actually a town I know with a beautiful sprawling historic district. It's called Savannah, Georgia. We're not stinky, please. Every house bought and lived in is one not converted to a SCAD dormitory. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're too stinky! Brave SJ, thank you for the $5, but Savannah's stinky! A stinky town! Oh, that is a weird fucking fan. I've never seen... Weird little baby twin fan. <laughs> Don't look at the Washington market if I think this is expensive. I was just like, after seeing the housing prices in New York, everything just feels fucked. <laughs> like, I wish everything could be the price that it was in New York. The inside of this house is pretty nice looking. I will admit, what the fuck is that? Did they like put a weird painting over the window in the bathroom? I don't, I don't know what the fuck that is. I don't know. I don't know that. Beware of dog. <laughs> the house looks really nice on the outside, but the inside is way too modernized. Like it would, it would need to be very fucking redone. This is this is also really cute. Wait, are these not? Are these not oriented? Wait, why? Why is this three eighty five, three fifty five, and then just like a random five thirty nine? What sort sort by price? You fucking weirdos! What the fuck? Also, square foot lot! That's not a house! That's not- that's not a house! Ooh. Ooh, this is like- this is like a little- a little, like, slave house. That needs a lot of fucking work, but it's only $66,000! You- if you- if you were some kind of motherfucking himbo, you could- you could dress this place as fucking as- as electrical tape on the floor! <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> Trulia is better than Zillow, is it? I've never even heard of it. What is this laugh? What is- What is this room?! Who takes a picture like this and says, yeah! That's what I want to put online to showcase the house I'm trying to sell. I, I feel like I'm about to get fucking jump scared. <laughs> That's where I live, vehicle, please. Some homes are cheap in West Virginia. Well, yeah, but that's because, like, who the fuck wants to live in West Virginia? Also, how the fuck do we go from, like, electrical tape on the floor, weird-ass room, to like haunted room where the ghost is gonna come out and take your heart out of your chest to like oh little kindergarten bathroom butterflies and hello kitty what what is this house <laughs> back room's the house multi-dimensional that's a steal i'm gonna get your multi-dimensional house for sixty-six thousand dollars He's an investor special, by the way. <laughs> I like I like these houses a lot. They're not my favorite style of Victorian, but I like the way they are because then I can imagine that I'm a plantation owner. <laughs> Be like, I'm gonna make so much money off of all of my silk textiles. This one. This, this one, look, at the, the, the lot is in square feet. That's how you know it's tiny. It's in Palestine? No, thank you. I don't want to get bombed, but no wonder it's foreclosed on. Zillow, what's that? What's this one? Little pink, little pink peachy house. It's also a tiny one. It's also a tiny one. Three bed, one bath. Well, it's not that tiny. 1,856, but it's like... It doesn't look like it has a big second floor. What is that John Wake for? John Wake? What you talking about, Willis? What you talking about? It's like, uh, I don't, I don't know. Like these ones, they don't like catch my eye very much. This one, this, this one, what? <laughs> Why is it so blurry? Who took this picture? <laughs> don't let Twitter find this stream. I've seen that a lot of people are calling like, I get the Palestine supporters on Twitter wallop watermelon Twitter? Why are they watermelon Twitter? I don't understand. Is this house haunted too? Maybe. I don't know, man. Could be the train exploding. <laughs> 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 
true? Ooh, okay. That, that looks creepy as fuck! This looks so fucking spooky! Ah! Someone's died in this house, chat. There's no way. There's no way this house doesn't come pre-filled with ghosts. What the fuck is going on in that room? I'm- I'm tempted, chat. There's- there's a lot of paint and, like, wood in here, but... But why? I can't imagine anyone's in here doing work. That's a- that's a nice- that's a nice fireplace. I like that. I like that. Something- something ain't right about this house. This place looks creepy! It does. It oh, there's a hole in the floor? Free hole? Workers keep disappearing! Okay, for some reason there's a mirror over the fireplace. I don't know why you put that there. This room looks really weird. Ooh, What the fuck? I don't like this. <laughs> I- nice fire damage! To be attracted to a this is spooky! This is so spooky! I'm like, I know this is the shadow of the person taking the picture, but like... I don't- I don't like it, man. <laughs> the blue room in the blue house, that's the murder room? I thought that was just like painter's tape. Is it not? I thought it was. I mean, it might just be regular paint. I don't know. Fixer upper, but fixes the entire home. <gasps> Ew, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what is this like cardboard? I don't know what's I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's painted because I had to cover the blood. In before it's not his shadow, Jesus. Zedek, thank you for the 35 Zar! Dude, you can get a himbo carpenter to come fix it up. It's a honey pot and ghosts! Win win! Uh, in search of Himbo, who is, uh, really good at carpentry and can rebuild this house with me. Uh, also must not be afraid of spirits and ghosts. I promise I will not cheat on you with the ghost dick. Put Potato Radio, thank you for being born on this, the day of your nine month remember! Idaho is great if you want to do and make things by yourself or with some friends. Sadly, Californians fled here for 60 years and to buy a tental properties. You mean rental? That doesn't sound fun. Call the personality, thank you for the two dollars. But how many of these houses come squatter free? That's a good question. Hey, this one comes with a free china cabinet though. Look at that! And all you gotta do is fix the hole in the wall where the little girl from the ring ripped out of. <laughs> Bomb Fizzy, thank you for the two gift subs! Thank you! Thank you, thank you. Thank you. This looks like one of the houses that the gay brothers from HGTV would fix. I would see- I would love the before and after, dude. The good thing with the ghost himbo that comes to the property is he doesn't have modern politics. Re Revenential taxes! Thank you for the two dollars. What do you mean, no? What do you mean, no? Hey, uh, why are those- why are those cabinets tied together? Why, uh, why- why are they tied together? That house has a minimum of three to five ghosts occupying it, guaranteed. Why are so many Victorian meth dens in Texas asking for a friend? Um, I guess uh, Victorians aren't exactly plentiful anymore. And the people who were in them before, I guess, just didn't take very good care of them. Like, look at this. This is a cool fucking kitchen counter design, but it's like, it's like sloping. Sloping, man. Jen Rollins, thank you for the five dollars. Water Malones have the same colors as Palestine's flag. <clears throat> but why wouldn't you just use Palestine's flag instead of the Water Malone? Like, I don't... I don't get it. <laughs> Emperor Creatine, thank you for the five dollars. In Texas, we can remove our squatters without having to rely on vigilantes. A man's house is his castle, after all. True and real? It looks like... It it looks like they put the spackle on in the shape of a whole bunch of penises. <laughs> Penis spackle. 
I really like this staircase. I really like the wood paneling and the design around the window and how the window is an oval instead of a square. I really like this spooky staircase. Jesus, this is the crooked man's house. Nothing is true. Happy Friday. Happy Friday! Looks like they put doors on the walls. I like it. I like... I don't like this. This is... I don't know. Uh, something about this angle just doesn't make me happy. I don't know what it is. I don't know what this weird salt and pepper shaker thing on the wall is. I don't like ceiling cats free opening over here. Undead Gamer of Music is back. Who that? Squeaky Mouse, thank you for the $9.99. If money wasn't an option and it was ever for sale, you'd love to own Falling Water. Frank Lord... Frank Lloyd Wright built it in the 30s. Ooh. Ooh. You see, I would I would be super fucking happy to live in a designated historical property. Why does this floor... Why does this floor look like in such good condition in comparison to the other ones? I don't... Like, this, this, this is just, like, scraped up a bunch, but it looks perfectly fine. What the fuck? I... I don't like this room. I don't like... I don't like the way the fireplace looks. I don't like all the penis spackling. I don't like how there's a midget door next to a door that is normal-sized. I... Uh, why are they two different sizes? If you look close, you can see the chalk outlines on the floor. I think that's where the carpet was. That's why it's darker. Mildly OCD, they give the five dollars. Everything looks crooked in Texas because black clay, the foundation shifts over time. Uh -uh. Okay. Okay, it's a closet door. That's why it's smaller. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I I also don't understand why this has been spray painted white. Because this, this looks like it would be a window. Yeah, like you, this one over here, you can see it's a window on the other door. So why has it been sprayed with a bunch of white shit? Also, somebody wrote spooky on the wall with a little Pac-Man ghost. They know. They know what's up, dude. <laughs> they know it's fucking spooky in here. When the local meth heads are looking for a place to get high and they walk in here, write spooky on the wall, about face, and get the fuck out, you know. You know it's not okay to be here. Spooky! <laughs> Vile and velvet, they give the hundred biddies. If I buy the house, I'll find another me there. Jesus. Stop size queening the doors. I just think it's just too small! Too small door! This man is brave. <laughs> this man's got the foot of my father. And that is that is the only other man I know who would go down here. <laughs> oh my god. She's my favorite TV tuber. <laughs> Dr. Foss, thank you for the 543. Thank you. Get three steps down and your feet never come back up again. Yeah, this man, this man's brave. Ooh, that bathtub looks disgusting. I can't tell if that's like, like black mold and rot, are. or if someone you know just happened to get murderated in there. Also, why is there like some weird red fire alarm looking thing on the wall? I don't, I don't like that either. Kirsha needs the three to zero to fit her ketchup collection, though. What? The spray paint window thing is common in old houses. They used to open to allow ventilation and airflow in the house. But that doesn't explain the spray paint. Am I from Germany? No! How long is my stream going? Uh, well, I've only been live for an hour and 15 minutes. Like, four more hours-ish? <laughs> I probably held the shower curtain rail? Maybe. I don't know why it's red, though. Thoughts on living in a non-standard home such as a missile silo, train depot, old fixer-up or church or airplane hangar? I wouldn't want to. But if you want to, go for it, dude. How, how do they manage to not take a single picture of this house that doesn't look creepy as fuck? 
I just don't understand. <laughs> How do so many people go for so long? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's like, it's just like, I don't know. It's fun, question mark. I like, I like hanging out with you guys or something. Fucking. I get to. What? Well, I was I was in the middle of saying I get to I get to do dumb shit like look at Zillow houses, but how did we go? How did we go from blue house white pillar to brown house no pillar? What am I? <laughs> what am I looking at? What is happening? Why is there still a satellite dish? <laughs> oh God! Blue paint is a lie. I I mean yeah, it's the backside, but like what the fuck happened to the paint? <laughs> Ass of the house's ass. Ooh. That's a real cute lamp. But what happened to the floor? What, what, what happened to the floor? Just paint the front. No one will notice. <laughs> the floor doggo. Oh. Oh, a lot of the a lot of the floor is uh missing over here too, and uh, I don't know I don't know what's going on with the doorway. Uh, the door's over there. <laughs> a free cinder block, five, five bed, five bath. Bayoui. How is this house 150k? Ah, Lisa's games. I see you missed the six hundred and fifty thousand dollar meth shack I showed you guys last week. <laughs> What the fuck did this house have a fire? I mean, it looks like it. Oh, nice car. Someone came all over the walls. Why would you do that? Why would you? Who would just come in this house and come all over the walls? Gonna have a house straight from the fucking dust bowl. Randy Marsh moment. Oh my god. All right, the Wandas. You know, the windows are still intact somehow. Still not beating the allegations that they can't take a single picture of this house. It doesn't look creepy as fuck. Oh, it's back to blue. We're, we, we found another blue side. Wow. No, I am not interested in touring that home. What the fuck? I just, just the fact that the first picture is blurry as all hell is crazy to me. What's special? This is a restoration special! This beautiful 1800s Victorian home needs a lot of work to bring it back to its original charm, but has great potential for the right buyer. It has great bones and can be made into a fantastic historic home. Electrical was rewired in 1988 and most of the plumbing has been replaced. Sold as is. Yeah. Yeah, I bet I bet it does have great bones buried under its foundation and in the walls. <laughs> bones is all it has. <laughs> hey, babe, you got great bones. I got another great one for you. <laughs> That's what Jesus Christ. Why do people feel comfortable charging over a hundred k for junk? Is there a? Uh... Here we go. Here we go. Let's see. It was uh, it was like 47k in 2014. It spiked up to 155k in like 2017, 2018. Went all the way down to 112k again, and it's had some ups and downs. You know, it got some upsies and some downsies, and now it's way on the downsies uh, at, at 150k. Wow, it's like the 2008 recession never happened. <laughs> Red Heracross, thank you for the two dollars. The fox who tism noises are the best. I like it when people ask me to repeat noises and I'm just like, what noise? What do you mean? I don't remember. Joe of the Mass, thank you for the five dollars. You want a Victorian home that's not haunted? Oh no, I just expect all of them to be. Ah! Help! 47,000, you bet it was like this in 2014 too. Um, let's see. I don't I don't know what contingent means in in uh in fucking real estate speak. So it was listed for sale in October 2023 at 175,000. They dropped the price in November to 150,000. 
And then it became contingent at the beginning of this year, whatever that means. And then it was listed for sale again in February, contingent in February, listed for sale in February, contingent in February, and then listed for sale at the end of February. We have, do we have Admiral Nagi in the chat? Can someone explain what contingent means? Contingent is they have a buyer, but the buyer financing needs approval from the bank or loaner. How the fuck did they end up getting three different people to want to buy the house and then they all failed getting financing? How did that happen? Five people showed up interested, took a tour, and then reneged. Is it taking a tour or is it that they failed the financial check? People on that 400 credit score life? Oh my god. The banks have said, we ain't paying for that. Bank thinks the house is too shit, won't loan the money. I mean, maybe. I like, maybe. It's a lie, it's an SCP Foundation house. Also possibly. Probably went to the place and we're like, fuck that. I mean, you don't even need to go to the place to see how bad it is. You've got the pictures right here, man. Probably a scam. It could be. I haven't I haven't encountered any any scams yet, but I'm also a very new home buyer. I hope that the people that made the house that I wanted go active under contract fail their financial check and can't buy the house so that then I can come in and buy the house. <laughs> I wish misfortune on them because I want the fortune. <laughs> Just break their kneecaps. I don't know who they are. Cheese ward lose game. Way. <laughs> My husband and I were looking for a house mid to late last year. The photo that made me laugh the most was the photo of the bathroom with a shower curtain with the phrase, like this shower curtain, Jeffrey Epstein didn't hang himself. I'd buy that shower curtain. Kate, thank you for the ten dollar doodles. That sounds like a very funny shower curtain. My current shower curtain, I got off of a website called Mod Cloth, like a very, very, very long time ago, and it's a uh, it's a giant sloth who climbed the Empire State Building, a la Godzilla, and it's fighting off a bunch of airplanes trying to shoot it down. <laughs> And for Creaty, they give you the two dollars. Oh yeah, King Kong, whatever. What, whatever, I meant King Kong. Monkey, giant lizard, same difference. <laughs> they, all, they all look the same to me. I'm not monster racist. <laughs> yeah, sloth, the things with the, with the giant nails and uh, move very slow. <laughs> Spino summoned. As an underwriter who's revised appraisals for a living, the home has to be in a living condition for us to approve a mortgage loan. Ah, this is definitely not in living condition. And for creativity, they give it the $2. Bank looked at it and said, oh, hell nah. True. Mildly OCD, they give it the $5. To be fair, Texans are bad at taking pictures because we have actual jobs. <laughs> not gonna lie, you heard Kirsha say King Kong. Can't believe I autocorrected for brain damage. You get used to that around here. <laughs> Danny D, thank you for the 199. Have I checked tax delinquent properties? No, I don't know how to do that. Radstorm, thank you for the two dollars. Your brother has the same shower curtain. Am I your brother? <laughs> this is a realtor fee lawsuit that's poised to drop commission fees drastically from five to seven to one to two percent soon. Might want to hold out till it gets to the courts. Yeah, we talked about that on stream a few days ago. Uh, it doesn't seem like it will actually be good for home buyers, just home sellers. So it doesn't, it doesn't really feel like it's, uh, gonna have any effect on me specifically. None of the, none of these are sparking joy. This one might, but it's also a very bad picture. Well, it's like a little, it's like a little cottage. It's like a, it's like a weird little modular cottage. Ooh, I do not like that staircase. I like spiral staircases, don't get me wrong, but I do not like metal staircases. I would hate this window. Cause can you can you imagine if you have like a prankster husband or like YouTuber friends, or even when you have kids, uh, them just running up to the window and like spooking the fuck out of you while you're shitting? I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. This shit looks like a gazebo with a roof. Well, I love gazebos. I'm a gazebo kind of person. Oh my god. Okay, that's... 
<laughs> For some reason, I thought this stove was a washing machine at first, and I was very confused. I was like, what the fuck is there a washing machine next to the frigiator? What the hell? <laughs> well, oh, okay. I mean, that's probably not actual marble. It's probably granite, but like, it still looks okay. Definitely needs some cabinetry. Definitely, definitely need some of that. The, f the floors need some help. They need some help. That's a cute door. That's a very cute door. It kind of, kind of wigs me out that like these things aren't all the same size. I'm not sure I'm a fan of that, but I'm a fan of the work around the window. Porch, the porch. <gasps> Ooh, that house across the street is gorgeous. Do you think that maybe back in the day, this, this house was like the main house and then the house we're looking at right now was like the slave quarters. That's why it's so much smaller, but has a similar design scheme. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. No, I'm not interested in touring this home. I already took a virtual tour. You didn't, you didn't tickle my fancy. You didn't tickle me. Washing machine and kitchen was actually a big thing in 90s Poland. <gasps> this one is mint green! That's ugly! But you can fix the color. You can fix the color and make it look cuter. Banks! What did they mean by this? Oh, tickle you. Please don't. I do not like being the tickled. What a weird fucking doorbell. I would love to touch that doorbell and see what it does. Ooh. Okay, so like, I kind of like this. But also, why does the wallpaper stop like a foot from the ceiling? Like, did it used to have crown molding and then they removed it? Like, I don't, I don't understand why there's this big white strip. Ugly wallpaper. Yeah, I would probably change the wallpaper, but I like the mirrors. I like, I like the little brick laid uh, stove thing here. I'm a, I'm a fan of the setup, as it were. Installer too short. Ooh, it's like, it's got rocks in it. I like this. I like this little corner thing. I like that a lot. Rip that carpet up. <laughs> I don't like what's going on in this red room over here, though. I don't, ooh. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of this. Not a, not a fan of whatever's going on in this room. We're gonna, we're gonna just slide on past that. Oh, I like this dining room, though. But again, it has the same issue. Like, it, it really makes me think that this used to have crown molding, and then they just removed it for some reason. Because there, there'd be literally no reason to have your wallpaper stop there, unless there was crown molding in the way. Looks like a phasmo room. What the hell? They got a giant cock in their dining room! I have, I have a, a cock-shaped teapot. I've had it since I was a child. It's very cute. You think I'm right? I was like, that's, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. And the fact that it's in like every room, like it had to have had crown molding. And that makes me upset that they removed it. Those bitches. Also, this looks like it should have been a doorway and then they just put some shit in front of it. Why are they like this? <gasps> I love these walkthrough pantries. They make me feel like I'm in a super old house. Super old house and I can pretend that I was like the help, you know? I don't, I don't like whatever the fuck this is. Get out. Ooh, this is really ugly. Oh, that's that's ooh, eh, ooh, eh. Whenever I see a floating stove, I'm always instantly turned off. Like I, I have to have the stove connected to a counter. It's just like I don't. I hate this. I hate this. I hate it so much. Hit and they give me the four ninety nine seventies motherfuckers. We're onto something with the burnt orange. What are all y'all's shit housing design takes? Have you ever seen the houses from the 70s with carpet in the kitchen? No, but you shouldn't have carpet in your kitchen. I mean, you can have like rugs, like they have here in front of the sink, but like you shouldn't have full on carpet. What the fuck? Also, I don't think 70s had many good housing designs for anything. I'm gonna be real with you. They put carpet in the bathrooms. I've seen carpeted bathrooms and those are also disgusting. Bless this home. Bless this mess. 
Got a lot of pictures of the kitchen. They got a- they got a bard cage? Bard! I like bard. This room! This room! The wallpaper has like... Two and a half feet from the ceiling! Why? <laughs> Don't forget to, you need to make sure your house is defensible from intruders. The carpet's not gonna help with that. Does the house come with the bird? I don't think so, but you know, it's something you could ask. It looks like it's a green parrot, possibly with a smaller green parrot. I can't tell if that's another bird back there, if that's like just decoration in the cage. Oh, this bathroom. This bathroom is almost lovely. All right, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of like large wood paneling like this, like just basic wood. It has to have some sort of design on it. <clears throat> but I really like this basin. I like the sink. I like I like all the rose decor. Hey there. Handsome. <laughs> You're not going to leave so soon, are you? You spooked me. Cherries are red. Your dress is not into sounding, but I'm in <laughs> Where do I apply to be your himbo? G Goofy's lawyer! Thank you for the fifty dollary doodles and spoken me with my own voice. I'm uh, I'm gonna reread that for you since the TTS fucked it. Cherries are red. Your dress is blue. I'm not into sounding, but I'm into you. Where do I apply to be your himbo? Nice poem, but I don't have applications. <laughs> Whoa, that's new! It's not a new alert, it just doesn't get triggered often. That's a low, low trigger, I guess. Thank you! And thank you for the 50 Gooby! Gooby. The Gooby lawyer. <laughs> what is the Victorian chair looking thing? Uh, it's a, it's a decorative basin. It's got a mirror. It's got a little basin there. You probably would have put water in that to wash your face before the invention of, like, actual running water sink. I'm telling you, Fox Woman, that is by design having the gap between the wallpaper border and ceiling. Nothing to do with crown molding. Cold acid, thank you for the five dollars. If that is true, if you are correct, then anyone who does that just has really shit design abilities. Why would you do that on poipus? And that don't make no goddamn sense. Also, these people are like my grandma. She also had a cross in every room. And also like a miniature cross on the top of the door molding as you enter every room. I don't know if she thought it was like for protection or like I don't know, but like every every room had one, every doorway had one. This is a really ugly staircase. That's way too modern for my taste. Get the fuck out. Banya. What a weird bathroom. What the fuck am I looking at? What? This isn't even real wood. You can see like the linoleum peeling off. Why are there so many little bibbly boobly bumps on all of this wood over here? This is ugly. It's like a sauna, but it's not a sauna. That's a regular shower. Big lineman, thank you for the five dollars. There were so many carpeted bathrooms when you were home shopping. They were all disgusting. I've seen a couple of homes. I should have brought them up on stream. I've seen a couple of homes with the uh, <laughs> uh, toilet on a pedestal kind of thing where you have to like walk up two two layers of tiles to get to the toilet. And I'm like, there ain't, there ain't no way someone hasn't fought for their life in here and then slipped and fell getting off the toilet. <laughs> The throne keeps the vampires out. What the hell? What the hell? Arc, arc light sniper shine. Thank you for the five. The wallpaper stopping a foot or two below the ceiling is so the room feels tall. It doesn't make the room feel tall, though. It just makes it look dumb. Welcome. Why would you have that in your closet? There's also a bearskin rug in here. What the hell? No, dude. Fucking no, dude. Why? Why? Why would you do this? This is horrific as a bedroom setup. You're telling me they did this on yeah, purpose? Big guy? Fox woman. For the love of Asmongold, your one true king get back to what you are planning to do. <laughs> but we're looking at haunted houses! 
is! Muzz of Doggo, thank you for the 690! <laughs> thank you! Mwah! The demonic doll in the haunted attic bedroom? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I want that! Oh, it even comes with like weird moldy shoe rack thing. Look away, then look back. The doll is gone. My accent is peculiar. Bostonian. We all have our crosses to bear, I suppose. Yeah, I'm from Boston. I like Dunkin' Donuts. Mim. Thank Mim. you for the five dollars. Richard Gruber. Yeah. No relation to Hans? <laughs> that room fucks. Wait, why? This room is also ugly. Why does this room fuck? It's like your grandma's house, except it's missing the door that goes into the void? Um, I'm sorry, the door that goes into the what? Why is that in your house? Eh. You got, you got a pipe? <laughs> they put a decorative plant next to the pipe? Yo, this bed looks like it's about to fall through the goddamn floor. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Look at the front of the house. Is there a face in the attic bedroom window? Uh... Well, that could just be a chair in in the mirror. Uh, but I don't I don't like that. I don't know what that is. Could be a chair. I don't like it. It's a little wooden man. I don't want little wooden men in my house. Aw, look at that shelf. It's got three hearts on it. Also, there was a bird cage upstairs. There's a there's a spare bird cage down here. An empty fish tank. And then this fish tank has water in it. There's a second empty fish tank. There's a refrigerator. Is that where they keep the fish? Is that a pet snake? Oh, I guess you're right. One of them could be a snake. This one has water, though. This one has water in it. That's Pippa's basement. What the hell? That was funky-ass clock. What is this? <laughs> Also, I see this a lot in houses while I'm, like, just perusing. Where they'll have, like, multiple different carpets all overlapping each other. And I don't understand why they do that. Also, there's a little, like, cat house here next to a cat litter box with some cat bowls. How many animals do these people have? <gasps> oh, the backyard is, like, dollar store Wonka. This is, a, this is like that AI Wonkaverse thing that happened where it was just a super disappointment. This, this is like the same exact thing except they didn't have AI advertising. The clock seems like it was stolen from a Tim Burton movie set. <laughs> Guys, a million, thank you for five. Save the spooky house search for a spooktacular Saturday. Take us back to our scheduled programming. <laughs> I guess I should. I guess. You guys wanted to tempt me. You guys wanted to tempt me with, with real estate in Texas. I'm like, to be fair, this one's pretty cute. This one, this one, this one's pretty cute. It's even on Magnolia Street. That's really cute. That. Ooh. Okay, hold on. Last one. La I'm g this is the last one I'm looking at because it's cute. It's got a wraparound porch. It's got a little garage or a Winnebago. Winnebago probably doesn't come with the house, though, you know? You yeah, know, that's a big Winnebago. Winnebago, spicy if you will. Spicy cat raid. What the hell is this spicy cat raid? What? Kubi. Kubi, thank you for raid. Kubi, thank you for raid. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, raiders. Welcome, raiders. She's addicted. What? Just one more. I can stop whenever I want. They got a Barbie Jeep. Like, they got a Barbie Jeep! Ah! Uh, you know, okay, I don't think this is a hot take, but like, I don't like when an entire room is painted red. Like, it just, it's just unnerving, you know? That's a lot of red. That's, that's a lot of red. They even got a red curtain and red stained glass <laughs> around the door. Why is this picture so low quality? Like, these are normal pictures, but then this picture was taken by, like, a digital camera in 1999. I don't, uh... I don't really get it. <laughs> this- this person. How- why are the- what is... This house isn't real. <laughs> why do they have so many 
baskets on the wall. <laughs> Why do they have a television from the 1980s? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> this is the house from Don't Hug Me. I'm scared. What? What's up with the basket collection? I don't know, man. <laughs> maybe they visit a popular basket weaving for that maybe this is one of the four grands. Ooh, they got they got one of the one of the hanging lights from like a TGI Fridays. I like that. You know what I don't like? That all all of these chairs have do rags. Three of them are missing their doily do rags. Uh, but these look very weird on the chairs. <gasps> this has a sliding door. It's like that last Chilla's art game we played. This is a fucking Christmas dining room. Ew. I would not want a giant mirror in my dining room. No, thank you. No, thank you. That's weird. Kind of like this cabinet tree is weird. Because the sink is all the way to the side instead of the middle. I don't like that. And it's not symmetrical. I don't like that. Also, why is there this blue tile? Their entire aesthetic is red, but a blue tile in front of the fireplace. What am I playing the new Chilla's art game? I know it's supposed to come out today, but I didn't know if I would have enough time to go through all of my tabs. <laughs> and I did just take half an hour on a housing tangent. <laughs> so I don't I don't know if it comes out today during my stream or if I'll play it tomorrow. Because typically the Chilla's art games come out uh, too late. Like, they come out after my, my stream time. So I typically play them the day after they come out, but we'll see. Oop, oopsie poopsie. Do they release those every two months or just when the cocaine money runs out? I think the last one was, like, end of November? Beginning of December? Like, it's been, like, three and a half months or some shit. Pippa sent me a new game I should play. Remember, yeah, I'm not playing that unless she plays it with me. Ain't no way, dude. Ain't no way. <clears throat> Ain't no way. Where am I going? Well, we were we we're talking about houses, so let's go. Let's go to the house tangent, shall we? She oopsie poopsie us. I did. Collab confirmed. I'll have to. I'll have to ask her if she actually wants to, because uh, both of us are gonna lose brain cells doing that. Collab it so that neither of you play, but instead watch videos. That is kind of how we work, isn't it? Okay. All right. I have only a little bit of my gamer subs left. So I'm going to do something atrocious right now. I'm going to do something terrible. Hold on. That wasn't very satisfying. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to mix my gamer subs with soda. So hopefully my heart doesn't explode from the caffeine. But <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to pour some of my soda, some of some of my my beepus, my beepus into my my gamer subs. And, you know, I already mixed gamer subs together. I mixed the Jujutsu Kaisen flavor with the dragon fruit punch. So it, it's gonna be a triple mixer. It's gonna be a triple, baby. Okay. All right, that should be good. That looks like, that looks like it's equal parts subs and soda. You had a cardiac ablation a couple years back and you still do a pot of coffee a day. I'll be fine. What is what is a cardiac ablation? <clears throat> they call that a dumb and coke. What the fuck? <laughs> is my gamer subs a pre-workout blend? No. Is my gamer subs code still active? Always. Can always use code Kirsha to get ten percent off your gamer subs order. There was a there was a promo back in February, and I think I just accidentally left the promo in there, even though it expired like February 9th on my YouTube. 
That pour was satisfying. Sounded like coffee in the morning. Thank you. Oh man, there's a game that I want, dude. There's a there's a game that I want. Hold on. Fuck, what is it called? Um Ah uh, This this one. I put it on my wish list because it's not on sale, so I'm not gonna buy it. Hold on, don't don't listen yet. Don't listen yet. Don't listen. Yeah, you can you can download a demo for it, but it doesn't have a release date. So maybe maybe I'll download the demo at some point. Uh how do I show you what I'm looking at? Be -de -de -be -de -be. Um I guess I can just use my browser, right? Listen, listen to how satisfying this is. I want to play ASMR food experience chat. Oh boy, stuff I can do IRL! <laughs> I love the gas station simulator review where the guy's like, I work at a gas station all day and then I come home and I work at a gas station. <laughs> Housewife simulator. It's just, I don't know, it just, it seems, it seems like it would be a lot of fun to listen to. All right, here we go. I've let the soda settle a bit. It's got a lot of bubbles in it. I'm going to sip. Huh. Kind of tastes like. Kind of. Like it tastes good, but I don't know how to describe what it tastes like. It's like. It's 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 like fruity cola, but it doesn't taste bad. Like it doesn't taste sharp like cherry coke. It tastes like good, like smooth. She was a fizzy drink to compare it to. I like. I don't know. Why are you shoveling a driveway in Crocs, you weirdo? Oh, nice car. Tastes like convulsions. I I guess it's like. If you, if you've ever mixed, like, raspberry brisk and coke, it kind of tastes like that. Oh, yeah. I'd recommend it. Have I sent you my magnum opus nim meal? What does that mean? Hello, Mordred lover. What is, what is a magnum opus nim meal? Why would you mix those? Why wouldn't you mix those? When you when you go rollerblading and you make graveyards all the time, you learn you learn which things taste really good mixed together. Hidden, thank you for the full ninety nine. Y'all remember Hanson's cane soda Nim. coke bot Nim. and then killed it. Nim. Fuck man. Yeah, I was looking at Jones soda, but Jones soda is like forty five dollars for a twelve pack, and that's a li that's a little bit that's a little bit much. It's in my DMs. Oh man, why are you like this? Okay, this was almost inoffensive. I'm assuming you sent me the picture because I can show it on stream. Why are there so many smashed peas? How did you scoop this into your bowl with like a helmet? How is it so messy around the rim? You always gotta have a clean rim. It makes me upset that you've managed to make such a fucking mess. Look at, look, hold on, hold on. Look at this shit, chat. Look at, look at how messy 
his fucking rim is. Oh god, I'm gonna hiccup so bad after drinking soda. Okay, that's too much liquid. What the fuck is this? Mod slop! Demod this man and explode his penis. Am I gonna turn into one of those TikTok water girls who put sugar and syrup into water and insist it's still water? No, I drink gamer sups. Nim. 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 Is this what you feed your slaves? Yeah. Nim! Nim said that this is roast beef stew with carrots and peas, melted cheese, and ketchup. And I'd be pretty okay with this if it didn't have the melted cheese in it. I feel like melted cheese doesn't belong in roast beef stew. That's a little- that's just a little bit fucking weird to me. Uh, but also... I'm gonna- I'm gonna need you to speak up, Nim. I'm gonna need you to tell me how you got your rim so fucking sloppy. How did you do that? How did you make it so sloppy? Melted cheese and stew. But cheese makes everything better. Yeah, but I wouldn't put cheese in stew. What the fuck do you mean? Woman would be fine without the ketchup. I mean, maybe, but like, ketchup enhances the stew. If you think about it, when people make beef stew and pot roast, typically they put a little bit of tomato sauce in it. I don't. I don't put tomato sauce in mine so that I can put ketchup in it when it's done cooking. I don't know. I just put it in there. God damn. Remind me to never let you serve yourself. Jesus. Please stop calling Nim's rim sloppy. Nim got a sloppy rim. <laughs> You're supposed to put sour cream in, not ketchup. I don't, I don't like sour cream. Why are his headphones pink? He's a moderator. He's gay. Why did you even have to ask? <laughs> Kirsha, please. What do you mean? How is this man plate on par with you? What do you mean by that? <laughs> it's so sloppy. Let me, uh, oh, I just moved something? I don't know what I'm moving. What am I, I'm moving me. Hold on. I'm trying to move my browser. Gotta get this bitch back up here. Don't look at my tabs, chat. Time to change your Discord nickname to Nim Sloppy Rim. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Draw full of programmer socks, guaranteed? Probably. Unironically. To a regularly scheduled program. This sounds like two children talk about which diet habits are less disgusting. <laughs> How do you not like sour cream? What did your mother do to you? Nothing. Sour cream just tastes like shit. I like the artificial sour cream, like in sour cream and onion potato chips. Those are peak. But the actual, like, white sour cum cream? Ain't no way. That shit's disgusting. Made dad put salami cheddar cheese and oatmeal and liked it? Hmm. You fucking love sour cream? You will drink it? Ew. Ew, what is wrong with you people who drink sour cream? Shh. <laughs> sour cream plus salsa is love. I disagree. I disagree. If, if I get like nachos and they come with guacamole or sour cream, they're ruined for me. I have to like spoon that shit off and just hope there's not enough of it there. Your stream died as soon as you typed that instant karma. Get wrecked, pickle. Next time, next time I get nachos and I take the sour cream off, I'm gonna replace it with pickles and eat your family. <laughs> Used to eat sour cream with a spoon until your parents started hiding it. What? Why would they hide it? <laughs> why would they? Why is pickle not VIP? Because I don't remember to change my VIP list literally ever. It's- it's a miracle when I remember to change roles. I'm pretty sure- I'm pretty sure Nim told me I still have people to demod from the Donathon and I've just forgotten to do it. Amazing! Eating just sour cream is weird? Yeah. It's just like, I love- I love cream cheese, but I wouldn't eat just cream cheese. Eastern Europe Slav Erasure, so you won't stand for it. Darelight comes around every so often, and he was the first person I learned that drinks sour cream. He almost made me end my stream. There are a limit to the number of people who can be VIP. Yes! You you can unlock additional VIP slots. But I don't remember how you get them. I, maybe they're tied to, like, sub points? Wait, hold on. I have the internet in front of me. 
How do I unlock more VIP slots, Twitch? Uh, by getting more viewers to chat during stream, specifically getting 10, 15, 20, 25, 50, 100, 200 unique chatters in a stream will unlock up to 100 additional VIP badges. Okay, so is it is it only 200 chatters? I actually think you guys are wrong. Wait, what do you mean? Uh, VIP. How to manage roles. I know how to do that. Adding roles. Add role. Blah, 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 blah. Editing. Chat command. Frequently asked questions. Wait, what do you... Control F100. How do I unlock more VIP badges? Yeah, so it looks like... A uh, hundred additional badges are... are the maximum, which means I should already have the max amount. Uh, uh, how do I, how do I, hold on. Da -da -ba -da -da -do. A viewer rewards? No. Community rolls, mamma number. You pronounce slots weird? What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, does it tell me how many VIP slots I have? I don't think it does. <clears throat> I don't think! I don't- I don't think it tells me. Oh, it does! I have 57 out of 100 of my VIP slots taken up. Well, wait a minute, I guess that meant on the page that Twitch said it wasn't an additional 100 slots, it just means 100 is the max. So only, only a hundred of you weird nerds can be VIP. God is fucking me! What? Uh, I think the worst thing... Like, the worst thing... And it gives me anxiety when I look at this shit. Hold on, I have to remove VIP from some cum slut. Okay, we're good. <laughs> uh, where, where do I see this? Hold on. It, take, it takes my brain to remember a minute. Takes my it takes my brain a minute to remember here. Where do, where do I go to see this? Where do I go to see the people who are subscribed? Is it in Animalytics? It's like I can I can see the box. I can see the box in my face. Oh, suggest okay. Chat, are you guys are you guys in interested in watching me stream? Uh, Star Citizen, Hunt Showdown, World of Warships, and Dark and Darker? Because apparently that's what Twitch thinks I should stream. Appar apparently, apparently that's what I should be stream. No, they're not even bounties. They're not even bounties. They're just like, we think people who watch you would like this. <laughs> you didn't hear Quime Bobs in there. That's correct. You did not. Is it under stream summary? I can see the stupid fucking box that tells me how many subscribers I have. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that stupid little box. Is it under Jeez, revenue? Sally, your boyfriend lets you have two comms? View details. I don't want to download my subscriber list. Does it? Oh, I found it. I found it. Okay. So, like, this is the shit that gives me big anxiety whenever, whenever I look at it, right? Because it's like, I want people who are here who support me to have like their little special special shining star badges but uh I, I i feel bad for like removing it from people but it's like i also don't know i also don't know if like some people still watch even right that's me i'm here <laughs> so we get we get something called Founders Badges, and when you hit Partner, you expand how many Founder Badges you're allowed to have. I think, I think Affiliates, it's like 10 Founder Badges, and then Partner is 25. So it, it shows like... Founder! No, Founder! So it shows uh, like the people who were some of the first subscribers to you. And uh, like, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when I should remove people from this list because it's like I don't I don't like removing people who have founders badges but like if they don't even watch me anymore then the badge should go to someone 
who like is here and is currently subscribed, right? Like she's doxing us. What? It's just your Twitch names. What do you mean? Refuse to have the star of shame or the mark for the special summer camp. I mean, you can turn it off and on. You, you can turn off the founders number one if you want to. Take a roll call. They'll show up if they really care. Well, see, that makes me feel weird. Because, like, if somebody has a founder badge, I also don't want them to be like, Oh, no, I'm in debt and I lost my job and I can't subscribe to Kirsha for, like, six months. What if she kills me? You know, it's like, I don't want to. I don't want people to like, get upset either. Have chat vote for who gets removed. Previously, I'd been using peppermint waifu, and I had been like, okay, well, if you haven't even showed up to watch stream in like ten months, uh, then I'll remove you from the list. That seems reasonable. Uh, but with how often I forget to resurrect peppermint waifu, that's probably not accurate at this point in time. You don't have five dollars. How do you get it? Um, so every time I remove someone from the list, the next person who subscribed after that person uh, will get the founder's badge. Uh, we we are already. <laughs> I have I have removed enough people from this list who have stopped watching years ago that we are already in 2023 for for people getting the badges. Peppermint, yeah, Peppermint Waifu is my original Twitch bot. If you miss one stream, you lose your spot and go to the back of the line. Jesus. Sounds like a personal problem. It is. I just don't want to upset people, you know? You imagine there was a big change when I shifted from Terra? Yeah, but that was back in like 2020 when I started playing things that weren't just Terra. Is Mokana a VIP? You saw someone ask about it. She should be. She should be. There's a chance she's not, because I have brain damage. <laughs> but there's- uh, she should be. Oh god, can I remember her name? Blam, she's not- oh my god, why am I so dumb? <laughs> why am I so dumb and gay? Okay. Alright. Not dumb, just busy. Also kind of dumb. Each time Peppermint Waifu resurrects, a number is added! The 2023s are probably the last time they subbed, not when they subbed. No! Ayo, no, God. the, uh, the date that it tells you... Let me, let me see if I can go back. The date that it tells you on the Founders badge, uh, Entitled On. The Entitled On is, like, when... Oh, it's when I gave it to... Okay, yeah, you're right, you're right, Skewky. It's not the last time they sub, but it's not what I said either. It's the last time I updated. <laughs> My birthday falls on Findom Friday, so that means I need to give Fox Woman money. That's how it works, right? <laughs> That's how it works! Happy birthday! Happy Magnum birthday for a Magnum Beefu man! You you could be my burrito. <laughs> Frycy, what a founder! Yeah, Frycy founder. If you need space, I can remove you from VIP. No, Frycy, what the heck? No, not VIP. No, no, not VIP. I, I only have like 58 of my VIP slots filled. So I have plenty of room and I probably, since somebody was on there that shouldn't have been, probably have people I can remove from VIP as well. It's been ages since I gone through that shit. <laughs> She's got plenty of room. This baby can hold so many VIPs. DRT is king, thank you for the $5! You swear to the almighty god that I am tired of Razor Streaming Hunt Showdown! Do not play that game for the love of god! DRT, I got some good news for you then. Let me, let me whisper something sweet and lovely into your ear. I hate Cunt Hoedown. It is a terrible game with terrible mechanics that could have been fun. Imagine PvP and boss fighting. Unfortunately, it's dog shit, and that's why I will never play Cunt Hoedown. Hunt Showdown is really more of a Eurocore game. <laughs> she would never play Hunt. Oh, this good <laughs> Mini, 
played it for over a day. <laughs> you can't cover up a slur with a jaunty tune. What do you mean? That fucking song. What fucking song? What the hell is Hunt Showdown? A terrible game. Don't play it. <laughs> Have some of my money. I got a nice raise, but I'm going to Cambodia to investigate embezzlement. So let's see if I come home or get shipped in boxes. See you schizos later. <laughs> what did you just say? Hold on. Going to Cambodia to investigate embezzlement. Uh, well, please don't get cannibalized while you're there. I'll be rooting for you. Thank you for the five dollary doodles, dual wielder. Uh, I will keep you in mind and hopefully you come home safe. <laughs> hopefully you come home safe. Salka Alpaca, thank you for the thousand yen. If you don't give Kirsha money, you will actually die. Trust me, I'm typing from the grave right now. This man saying yen isn't real money dollars? <laughs> Not even one achievement unlocked. Truly a girl gamer. If someone... I, I can't... Okay, it's, it's Cloud. He said Razor has zero situational awareness or tactical sense. So watching him play Hunt is good fun. He just like me. For real, for real. Also, I'm pretty sure when I played, they didn't have achievements. Because I played when it first came out. <laughs> and my friend... My friend tried to get me to play it with them in 2021 as you can see and we we played like two matches the first one we got insta gib headshot as soon as we spawned in by someone cheating and the second one we got shot and killed by someone cheating through walls so we were just like yeah this game's shit <laughs> when it first came out there weren't cheaters so it like it was it was balanced for for what it was you miss the Tarkov streams? I miss, uh... I miss having the time to play Tarkov, but... You need to play that game like a job, and I do not play games often enough to do that. How did you get up to 24 <laughs> hours, though? <laughs> what do you mean, how? I just I played it! Took. You want to know what I got for my years of loyalty when I asked for VIP? <laughs> a slap across the face and a get back to work. SMH Kiyosh hates her often slaves you. you. Well, maybe if you were a good little orphan slave who brought more than five dollars back home, you'd get your VIP. Now get back to the mines before I decide to stuff you in the cabinet. Dark and Dark is coming to Epic Game Store now that they're starting to win court cases against Nexon. I have not been paying attention to how that's been going. It's not a terrible game. You just hate cheaters. Nice to know. No, I didn't like the game when I played it without the cheaters. The cheaters just made it worse. It was not a fun game even when it was balanced. Stalker 2 coming September could be interesting to try when coming out. Maybe. You love Tarkov, but you don't play anymore for the same reason. I saw, I saw a Sleepy tweet out that she tried playing Tarkov recently and was reminded exactly why she quit playing Tarkov. They did not win any case. The U.S. court simply says it belongs in the Korean court. Okay, yeah, that's not winning. <laughs> Cheating in PvP games is just sad. It is, but a lot of people do it because they have nothing else going on in their lives. Unlucky for them. Speaking of unlucky! <laughs> Come play scam shitizen. Affectionate. We have 30 minutes of prep for five minutes of gameplay resulting in your death, and the cycle repeats. Get a gang together, suffering is better with friends. I really, I really want to play the, the kebab game. I really want to play the kebab I was like tentatively interested in uh, the grocery store simulator thing. I saw Pippa play it too after I was interested, and I was like, okay, good, I can see her play. I just, mm, I don't know, man, it's just like, it's too much of an asset flip for even like as someone who plays every Chilla's art game. Gee, Sally, grocery store simulator needs needs more cars? stuff in it. Mm -hmm. you? Grocery store sim was something you could spend a solid day on and never play again. Oh my god. Prog Maestro, thank you for the four months of prune. Thank you, thank you. 
Benoy, thank you for a four months of prune. Wow. Double fours back to back. You guys out here DPing? Jesus. Thank you for the prune! The double prune! Thank you for the DP! <laughs> if you don't RP while playing Supermarket Sim, it's not worth it. So what you're saying is, is that I need to play Supermarket Sim and get progressively more angry and hostile with the customers until I decide to come into work and just shoot the place up? Phrasing. Did I play a Dave the Diver game that was popular? I did not. I did not. It had cooking. Yeah, uh, I got I got kebab chefs. And I'm trying I'm try I'm trying to shit up a uh, collab with the moon man and the nano bunny and, and the bag man. But I want to play it like now, dude. I want like I am itching to play this game. I don't know what it is with me and cooking simulator games, but like they speak to my autism on a level I thought not possible. Okay, all right. Phil Phillips Fidelo X2HR costs only a hundred and our king in directional sound. I don't know what that means. Cooking games are key. No, yeah. The kitchen calls the woman true. Dave the Diver feels like the old video game magic and fun. Hmm. Cooking Mama stream. I've actually never played Cooking Mama. But you own the store. Well, yeah. But I mean, I could, if I own the store, all the more reason that I'm the one to shoot it up. Oh, I still have Mabinoki installed. Why do I have a game called Magic Pussy? Did I buy this? Was this a boggy gift? <laughs> where did the where did this come from? <laughs> I wanna I wanna say this had to have come from Boggy. Like there's no <laughs> there's no other way. I don't think I bought this. <laughs> Excellent question. <laughs> Embrace the enchantment. Magic pussy. Chapter 2. Unleashed on Steam. Top tier game! <laughs> I was gonna play it with someone on stream, but then I talked the whole stream. No, that was Mabinogi, not Magic Pussy. I'm, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure I cannot play Magic Pussy on stream. Unveiling. Sex coach. Hot yoga. Sensuality. Discovery and intimacy awaits. <laughs> what the fuck? That was the misandry game. What the fuck? That punani was friggin' magical. Dave the Diver's hella fun. Not a terribly deep game, but it's like $30 and you checked and you have like 90 hours in the game. Death a time sink. Holy shit. When's a honey pop with the spicy patch? I don't think I can play that on stream either. I would like to keep playing American Theft 80s though. Oh my god, that game. That game is addicting. Cooking games tickle my tism. That is to say, Kersha is a whammons. True. Watching the Magic Pussy 1 and 2 trailers, you most certainly cannot play it on stream. Binary mind over here watching porn game trailers. Like, I'm just imagining his wife walking in being like, uh, what the hell are you doing? And he's just like, stream moderation duties, honey. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh shit, Last white woman I was live. In Cambodia, it was Uncle Sam's dime tea bagging rebels, so I am decently hard to kill, but I am old now, so we shall see how the old reflexes work. Okay, that's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. Uh, hopefully your old man reflexes don't let you down in the heat of the moment when they're trying to crack open your skull for gold. Thank, thank you, Dual Wielder, for the five dollar doodles. Thank you. You get used to it. Magic Pussy 1 trailer is good. <laughs> Thanks, Azehara. Magic Pussy 1 is the new <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy. Jen Rollins, they give you the two dollars. Is Booty Farm in there somewhere? Speaking of Booty Farm! I had, to, I had to switch my browser back. I had to, I had to switch my browser back. <laughs> oh god, I lost it. Vigilantes show up to evict squatters at Queen Home where owner was arrested as neighbors reveal three people have been living inside for free. 
and carrying out work inside. I want to know what they mean by carrying out work because they very obviously don't have a permit, right? And like, if I'm going to be inundated with people squatting in houses so they don't even have to buy the houses and they're not paying rent and they're not paying for utilities, if I'm going to bite the bullet and actually pay for my house, I'm just- I'm just gonna do work without a permit. Like, fuck you, actually. <laughs> you always gotta be doing the work. Homes are free, just go live in them. Yeah, wasn't there- wasn't there like a British community that was like upset with some guy who had been squatting in a house, but he had been there for like 10 years or some shit? So the UK was just like, I- ah, ah, you can have the house. And everyone was like, what? <laughs> Insulini! Insolent? I can't read. Thank you for the five Canadians. Watching porn game trailers might be easier to explain than watching me when sounding comes up. I don't know about all that. <laughs> Booty Farm sounds like one of Buck Breaking's rejected title ideas. My leg, my leg is, oh, unhappy. Unhappy. Gee, Sally, your boyfriend lets you have two cums? The story is why everyone is fleeing New York. Oh no, I know. This is the only story people are talking about, but I got more for you, chat. Two vigilantes have shown up to evict three brazen squatters who were living in a New York City home after its owner was arrested and she tried to remove them. Hold on, I have to change my Discord off of Nim's DMs because out of the corner of my eye, his like roast beef stew slop looks like someone's cranium was scalped off by the Mexican cartels and all I can see is like their brain bleeding out of it. So I- I need to- <laughs> It's distracting me! <laughs> it's distracting! There's a reason why it's recommended to listen to Kirsha with headphones. <laughs> Adele and Loro inherited her family's home located in Flushing, Queens, but she was left aghast when squatters moved into her childhood home last month. This man looks very confused. Has an incredibly in confused expression. Show us the slop. I already did! I already showed you the slap! And Loro confronted the squatters herself and was subsequently arrested when one of the men inside called the police on her for changing the locks. The furious homeowner, who had been in the process of selling the home, <laughs> help, said, I'm really fearful that these people are going to get away with stealing my home. She also shared her fear that by the time the authorities look into the matter, it may be more than 30 days since they moved in. Crucially, squatters in New York have rights after occupying a residence for more than a month. The more, the more I read about this, the more I unironically want to do this, right? Like what, what are, like if I'm weighing the, the cost risk analysis here, if I go to New York, find an empty home, break into it, and then stay there for 30 days, like what, what's gonna happen to me? I get a free house? Like, <laughs> What do I have to visit my properties every 30 days? It's my shit! Imagine stealing a car and as long as you have it more than 30 days, you get to keep it. The risk is you now live in New York. Just one month and you get it for free? That sounds like a deal? Yeah, that sounds like a hella deal. Like why wouldn't I do that? Can you fake staying there for 30 days? Yeah, there are people who make entirely fake leases and then you can just show the lease and been like, yeah, I've been here for 30 days. Imagine stealing a human, and if you have them for 30 days, you get to keep them! Alright, Yosef Fritzl, you calm the fuck down. Kelson, thank you for the $20. Yo, just found your channel this week through Side Scrollers and loved it. Keep up and be safe. Thank you! I'll be, uh, I'll be back on Side Scrollers next week on Wednesday. Wednesday the 27th. We got, we got two banger Wednesdays in a row. Back on, back on Side Scrollers, talking with Blabs and Craig on the 27th. And then on April 3rd, I'll be hanging out with uh, It's a Gundam on his channel. Ayo, hey, side scroller in Kirsha. <laughs> yeah, both both of these on their channel. Side Scrollers is an early program, so it'll be at noon Eastern. Gundam is a late night gamer, so he he starts at 5 p.m. Eastern. Ayo, hey, Papa Gundam. Yeah, just, I'm nervous. <laughs> what the hell? I know. Paul, Paul Ardez, thank you for the two-month member. 
Get chat to squat in all of the nice, untampered and unoccupied Victorian homes left behind in New York. Keep whichever ones last the full 30 days. That could be a reality TV show. Hi, my name's Kirsha, and welcome back to Himbos for Houses, where I've sent 30 honorable chatters to squat in 30 Victorian houses across the New York State area. At the end of the 30 days, whichever one of them has managed to become a rightful owner under squatters' laws will become my husband. <laughs> Shut up! Silly woman! <laughs> Is this the Mr. Beast School of Real Estate? Did you figure out what you and Jim are going to collab after his reply? He he hasn't reached out to me yet, and he, he said he's going to be busy for a while. Like, the, the man's got the cancer AIDS, all right? I am I am patient, Foxu. The, fa the fact that he acknowledged me even is just like tipsy-turvy worldy, you know? The story about the UK squatter was actually very different from the title. The owner didn't visit or pay attention to the property for 20 years. Hadn't even bothered to change the title deed. To his name after his mother died, the court this determined that the squatter who lived there. Announcement. Chat are super mega duper cute and wonderful less than three. The court determined that the squatter who lived there with no interference from the owner for nearly two decades and spent tens of thousands of pounds of his own money restoring and rebuilding it had more right to the land than the neglectful son. I don't remember that, so maybe we're thinking about two different places? Maybe maybe we're thinking about two different ones. Do I fear my literal who shell is slowly cracking away? When I when I see Proctor getting more cancel attempts on the Twooters than me, no, I have no fear for my literal who armor. <laughs> she just psh, 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 Bailey's ooh no no I just, I just I can't talk with the TTS at the same time Bailey Bailey I know psh, 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 you like a cat. Bailey, thank you. Thank you for the super mega duper cute and wonderful five dollar doodles. You are also very cute, Bailey, sir. Hand holdable hands, Bailey. So much hate. Poor Proc Tussy getting raked over the coals. Yeah, you gotta stop using the femboy model, man. Like you just You can you can run a den of DGens, but not not the femboy model, man. Like my the respect for you goes down every time. <laughs> Paul Ardes, thank you for the two-month member again. Thank you, dude, for the great idea of a reality TV show. <laughs> I have to have Pippa on if Jim comes. Oh, don't worry, I've messaged her. Don't you, don't you fret your little buns. <laughs> what did Proctor do to get Twitter to start going after him? I don't even remember, man. <laughs> I think he tweeted out something about, like... One one of the one of the VTubers who tried hopping on the the trend of outing people because like uh, that that ti uh, that I almost said tiger knock <laughs> tiger tiger's not a weird sexual assaulter was a, there was some tiger man VTuber I think his name was Tora I don't I don't remember dude I don't remember dude but he he assaulted someone and then like a whole bunch of other people started like trying to cancel other VTubers uh, like some of them were just like I'm I'm 19 and did things consensually with a with a man, and he's a pedophile. And it's like, what the, what the fuck? Still can't get on any lists. I'm so mad. Why is my literal hooness rubbing off on you? What? What? I don't think it is. <laughs> he called out idiot V tweeters over their farming faction rep. Yeah, true. What about having illegal immigrants hunt child molesters, and if they catch one, they get citizenship? We can call it aliens versus predators. You know, I would. Th I think I'd be okay with that. If you if you want to live in this country, but you you can't you can't wait the full process time because it's too long. If you if you hunt down a child molester and kill him, in Minecraft, not in real life, of course. And this is a hypothetical situation. <laughs> I, you know, I'd be okay with giving you citizenship. <laughs> You love the show idea. That one girl who tried to accuse a guy of doing something completely legally and consensually because she got the ick when he didn't ban a lollycon in his community. You know, you wouldn't feel regret for hooking up with someone if you just didn't hook up with them. Godzilla95, thank you for the five dollars. Watching the Fox while playing Azure Lane and drinking the gamer subs, it's a good time. I hope Azure Lane's new game is going to be free to play friendly as well. I'll be really disappointed if it's not. 
because it's like, look, all my skin money in Azure Lane has gone to building a new game, clearly. So like, please, please be free to play friendly. You're only famous when fan cords write rules about posting your content. True. Do you remember how crowdsourcing hunting snakes turned out for the British? No. No, I didn't know they crowdsourced hunting snakes. That's weird. Service grant citizenship. True. You signed up for that and you're considering sharing it. I already pre-registered and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask and see if I can maybe get maybe get a sponsor stream. Cause I I have loved Azure Lane for so long. So you know, if I could get a sponsor for their new game, that'd be cash money. On that note, the woman who tried to cancel the man admitted she ran a community of miners who repeatedly raided them into his community of 18 plus users, then tried to get him to ban one of his users when they were found with porn on their profile in his community. She just sounds like a fucking idiot. Like, what? <laughs> in India, they paid people to bring snake bodies. Indians bred snakes for money. Government gave up. Indians released snakes. More snakes than before. Snake. Godzilla. Thank you again for the $5. I almost read your thing again, but thank you. Thank you. The Azure Genshin. Yeah, the Azure Genshin. What the only thing I could make Genshin Impact better besides improved graphics would be being free to play friendly. Just promise them you'll spend all your sponsor money on SHKI. I don't know what that is. Danger Noodle. I don't want a Danger Noodle. Can pull up county records for ownership and only target institutionally owned properties, BlackRock and Vanguard to squat in. Otherwise, you're just fucking over people like this lady. Well, I mean, I guess it would depend on who you squat in a house of, right? Like, if you can't find a BlackRock or Vanguard property, if you find a property owned by someone who owns, like, 20 other properties, I'd say squatting there's probably fine. <laughs> You'd play Genshin if it was an offline single-player only game? I feel like it'd be boring if it was single-player only, which is kind of what it was when it released. Do not redeem. Spend on the ship waifus. Oh, true. <laughs> true? <clears throat> Back to these weird people squatting in a house. Look at this fucking guy. Look at this fucking guy. According to neighbors, the unruly squatters have been seen and heard carrying out home renovations. I was right. It wasn't drugs inside the queen's property. On Tuesday afternoon, two men pulled their black truck into the driveway of Andaloro's home looking for the brazen occupants. We're looking to get this guy out, said the unidentified man who appeared agitated and was dressed in a black Trump t-shirt. He said, I am here to talk to him. I want to see why he's here. Did they, did they really need to point out that he was in a black Trump t-shirt? <laughs> One of the neighbors on the block who saw what transpired said, holy crap, and said she had no idea the squatter issue was causing so much backlash. What a dumb thing to say! I... I am a little bit floored. Why would she not expect it to cause backlash? <laughs> Bitch, you what? Many of the neighbors are baffled by the ordeal, and so they want to know how the squatters gained access to the house in the first place. It's disgusting, one person said who mentioned that he'd seen one of the squatters walking around inside. He added sarcastically, I wish I could live rent free. You know, this is what's gonna happen as well. If you allow squatters to have more rights than homeowners, as, as we've seen, and as I go through these articles, you're going to get progressively angrier, chat. Why should I participate by the rules and laws that you have set if those rules and laws do not apply to everyone? If you can squat in a home instead of paying a million dollars, why would I ever pay the million dollars? It's, it's just like, I, I am tired of the rules for thee, but not for me kind of thing. And especially when it comes to spending ridiculous, inordinate amounts of cash in a horrible housing market. Uh, yeah, I don't think I want to follow your rules, actually. If you can't steal a home, why, if you can steal a home, why wouldn't everyone else do it? Yeah, exactly. Rules and laws are free. <laughs> community needs to come together and resolve this issue instead of staring there and going gosh that's bad oh you don't you don't even know how dumb some of these people get just just you fucking wait 
up my new moon. Another neighbor who asked not to be identified told Daily Mail that she's seen concerning activity at the house over the last few weeks. She said she saw one of the squatters carry a door into the house late at night. I actually saw the door go into the house. The guy looked at me and then looked away. I don't know what was going on. The same neighbor said that there had been a for sale sign on the house for a long time and said this guy, the squatter, came out of nowhere. Costa, a 24-year-old college student who lives with his family next to the squatter's house, told Daily Mail that he remembered the former owners and said he has been on edge since they arrived a few weeks ago. The neighbor added, they're doing construction on the house all night long. I heard a drill and saw through my window that they were drilling holes into the wall and putting up boards. Okay, that that's really weird. Right, I might, my first thought reading this was like, okay, maybe they're not doing any kind of renovation. Uh, maybe they're trying to like strip the house of its copper wiring before they fucking peace out. But why the fuck would they be putting up boards on the wall? Those poor walls. And they're making a meth lab. Oh God. That's why they allow it. They are trying to remove home ownership. It's a basic idea of their beliefs. I mean, yeah, you will own nothing and you will be happy. But it's like, if you can own a home by squatting in it, see, see, this is where things kind of go south, right? If you, if you stop home ownership the legal way and you can just own a home by squatting there, uh, if I live in like a castle doctrine state, I am going to defend my home as it were, right? Like if people try to come in to take my home from me, I will just shoot them legally. So I don't think it's a good idea to start having this crazy, well, if you squat in a home for 30 days, it's yours, buddy. It's tragic that you own something and you can't get your own house because some cunt illegally lives in it. What the fuck? Yeah. The squatters make money renting out rooms to dumb people. Yeah, we, we read that article before and I have, I have another one on that house here today. You hate how the lawmakers and the laws allow them to steal the houses this way? I, again, it's just like, why wouldn't I? And the retort is usually like, well, because you're a good person and you have morals. And it's like, yeah, but why would I stand by that if all of these other people can just squat in a house and then become an owner? Why would I spend the money? Why would I waste my time getting pre-qualified, spending tons of money, spending tons of time, getting inspections, paying for renovations when I can just go and get it for free? New York, if they're there for 30 days, you can't remove them. Castle Doctrine, can they last more than 30 seconds? And I know, I know it's illegal to do some booby trapping, but uh, when I do get a house, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to be looking up the laws on that. <laughs> Reminds me of when the law, the British occupiers had where the Redcoats could live in your house for free, right? The police are communist. The police do not work for you at this point in time. I think in small communities, police have a place, right? But as it stands, the police have not been for the people for a long time. You're going to be making Home Alone 5. As a single woman, I got to take, you know, extra measures to make sure nothing bad happens. Literally, Brazilian favela rules. Ayo, nobody lives here. It's mine now. I'm fucking, I'm fucking down, dude. Let's go. Get me some Kui Festival hats from, uh, from Chile. Trapping your house is basically illegal everywhere. Yeah, but like, why would I care? <laughs> if someone, if someone tries breaking into my home and I got, you know, like a, a shotgun Jimmy rustled up to the door, uh, just takes them out as they try getting in and I sleep soundly in my bed. Like, why, why, why do I care? <laughs> you can buy unshielded laser systems and hook them up to a Raspberry Pi with a camera for eye tracking. Oh my God. Because they might be a firefighter. They're not going to be a firefighter unless my house is on fire. <laughs> Malevolent Creek Gorilla. Thank you for the $4.99. Avoid living in major cities. Rural areas aren't as toxic yet. Oh, I don't want to move to Montana yet. I guess I could look at Victorian property in Montana, but I doubt there's many there. I guess America's going into China warlord era. Imagine Slumlord having hundreds of armed people stealing homes. That's going to be me. That's going to be me. <laughs> Kirsha hates the Antichrist. Don't break into my home. 
He said one of those boards was placed over the window. Costa added, I don't know if the board is still there, but it looked like they were trying to hide what was inside. Sorry to hear about your bussy. Remember to play the third when someone tries to force you to allow squatters? It's what it was for. Here she, thank you for the 333. I actually couldn't tell you what the Third Amendment is, I can, you know, now that I think of it. Hands up, who is disassociating to prevent yourself from punching a wall in anger over the rules these liberal communists are implementing? Get a, get a stress ball, because like I said, it's only going to get worse as I move through these homeowner articles. Many of the residents have lived on the tight-knit block for more than 30 years. We all know what they're up to, so we're all kind of pissed about it, Costa said. Well, if you know what they're up to, why do you try to say it looks like they're trying to hide what was inside instead of just saying what they're up to, my guy? Jesus. One of the vigilantes uh, getting out of his car attempting to confront the squouters. It's a shame they live in New York, honestly. Chat. Uh, this man is literally doing the virgin walk. Where is where is the virgin meme? Hold on. Vir virgin meme. Images. Open image in new tab. I don't I don't want another fucking greeting card, Google! Yo piece of shit. Yeah, here we go. This is this is literally the guy. This is this is literally him. And you can't you can't tell me it's not. Look at that. He's even got a fucking purse. He's even got a fucking purse chat. <laughs> Artist new meme. Flip, yeah, you gotta flip it over. But this is yeah, this is just how I found it. Oh, this, is, this is just how I found it. Might have a better chance at finding a Victorian style house in New England as an older part of America. So going by that, the architecture is more likely to match the older era. Spino, you bitch! You haven't been coming to stream. Imagine not being devoted to your Oshi. Most boomers have destroyed Victorian houses in New England by turning them into multi-family homes to rent. So one Victorian home that I'd be able to buy for like $250,000, seven bedroom, four bath in New York, uh, is actually not available for me to purchase in Massachusetts or New Hampshire because they have renovated it to fit five different families renting out each apartment for like $2,000 a month. Can't relate. Fuck you. Man's done got called out. <laughs> Life imitates art. Truly. Truly it do. Others who live on the street complained that what's happening to the owner is unfair, as one local called the squatter sons of bitches. Many neighbors living on the street said they wanted to help the owner as much as possible to get the squatters out, and so they were keen to sign a petition. According to the locals, Ann and Laura was living in the house with her daughter and mom. How was she living in the house and then squatters managed to take it over? Like, did... When her mother passed away a few years ago, she stayed in the house and rented out the basement to an older man and his dog, who was said to be a beloved member of the community. When the man moved out of state, and Deloro put the house on the market. Two-story home that sits on a quiet street in Whitestone, Flushing Border. Estimated value is more than 1.2 million. According to Homes.com, there's no way that house is worth that much. A woman who appeared to be living in the home would not answer the door after several attempts were made, but earlier in the day told a source that she doesn't know what is going on and said that she is a roommate in the home. The same woman, hours later, had ordered takeout that was delivered to the home around 6.30 p.m. She opened the door to pay for the order, but soon slammed it shut. I hate this. Cringe nuclear fan! Thank you for the $10. Adverse possession? Yes. Absolute squatter's rights? No. If the owners don't notice for many years, it makes sense to reassign property to people who will use it. I, I guess that depends on what you mean by if the owners don't notice for many years. Right? Because, like, I, I just, I don't feel, I don't want to just take things away from people who paid for it. You failed as an honorable chatter. She hates me! You will, you will have to prostrate yourself at the altar of Oshidom. 
They need to change New York squatter law to stop this shit. They really do. They really do. Miss me with that commie garbage. Yeah, I don't I don't like the, the redistribution. Many years, maybe 30 days. No, that's fucking bullshit. Idiot carrot! Thank you for the $10. BlackRock is buying all the houses and causing a housing crisis. Search for Ohio Senator raises alarm over corporate investors. Oh, I mean, I know that's happening. I know that's happening. It's interesting that the journalist decided to now write in a neutral stance. Tenant rights kick in in New York in 30 days. Adverse possession usually takes 20 plus years. And most states have gotten rid of it. That's really weird. That's really weird that they would... I mean, I guess it's not really weird if they're pushing to own nothing. That they would get rid of the adverse possession and then have the squatter's rights instead. Ohio mentioned... Reminder that Graystar is BlackRock's rental property company. I don't think I said anything about Graystar in this article specifically, but uh, moving moving right along to the next one, we have a, an update, a little bit, a little bit of an update. <clears throat> Couple who bought the two million dollar home in New York. It's occupied by a squatter who found loopholes in the law and won't leave. Again, this does not look like a two million dollar home to me. This looks like a fucking cottage. I would not pay $2 million for this. Like, I, I do not understand the absolute fuckery nonsense that's going on with the housing market. You can't run it. Find a way to run Xeno Saga, you weirdo. You'd pay $250,000 at most. Yeah, this looks this looks like maybe $250,000 at most, depending on how much acreage is there. That's like $150K in your mind. A couple who purchased a $2 million home thought they'd be surrounded by family and taking care of their son with Down syndrome, but a squatter upended their dream. The ongoing legal battle between the couple, Joseph and Susanna Londa, and Brett Flores began late last year in the idyllic Douglaston neighborhood of Queens, New York. Although court documents viewed by Business Insider showed the Landas bought the entire lot in October 2023, they soon discovered that Flores occupied the home and refused to vacate. It's been five months and the Landas have not moved into the house. Flores, however, has a different take. Flores said he had permission to remain in the home from the previous owner, whom he took care of until their death in January 2023. The AB According to WABC7, the ABC affiliate in New York. Representatives for Flores did not immediately respond to a request for comment from Business Insider, and representatives for Joseph and Susanna Landa said they had no comment. Here's everything we know about the real estate drama. And I feel like if this man is smart enough and able to afford representation for this case, uh, if he had legal right to the house, he would have been smart enough to give over paperwork, right? <clears throat> have I heard of Regina Hill? Name doesn't ring a bell. Hayden, 75, thank you for the 20 dollar doodles. You have 40 forest acres out in the middle of nowhere in Ozark Mountains. You haven't been able to go out there for a few years, but if somebody has decided they're living there, they won't be for long. You paid for it. It's yours. I mean, I'm sure somebody's probably tried setting up something on a zoning space if it's 40 acres, because that's pretty big. Some woman got killed by the squatters. Uh, Regina Hill doesn't ring a bell, but I do have somebody else who got killed by squatters. There's a thread going over how these squatters get free legal assistance from lefty orgs. Now, it's possible he got free legal assistance, unfortunately. <clears throat> He's getting free representation from an NGO that provides services to criminals like this? That's fucked up, if true. Idiot carrot! Thank you for the $10. For every one squatter tormenting a homeowner, BlackRock owns 50 houses vacant because no one can afford their rent. Why no coverage about squatters in their property? Because we wouldn't care. Well, we wouldn't. I would praise someone squatting in a BlackRock property. Maybe that's what I should do. <laughs> Maybe I should find a BlackRock property and then go squat in it. <laughs> I don't know how you'd be able to find those, but like there's got to be a database somewhere, dude. There's got to be one. There are definitely people you can hire that will get rid of the people off the property. When you decide to do some spring cleaning in a New York summer home, <laughs> loading gun sound. I don't think you can do that in New York. How did the family of the deceased owner just forget about the guy taking care of the place? Someone had to know he was there before listing it. Well, that's where it gets a little funny. Flores lived in the Douglas Town home with the previous owner until January 2023. Court documents viewed by Business Insider showed the three-bedroom, four-bathroom home had previously belonged to Bernard Fernandez. Flores earned $3,000 a week taking care of the then-elderly Fernandez before he died in January 2023. 
Something does not add up about that. 3000 a week for home care does not sound normal. Like, I... I'm in the wrong job! So, there's, there is something fishy about that. I remember watching fucking uh, Law and Order episodes where home care people would take advantage of the elderly and like take more money than they were supposed to be paid because the elderly aren't going to notice. Uh, you know, like they, they don't they don't notice. Was he a boy toy? It's tax fraud or something. It's pretty common for home care to actually be fleecing the elderly. Yeah. So, so it's like, I, I'm sure that's not really what he was supposed to be paid. That's like $80 an hour. That's more than I make by a lot. <laughs> it costs almost 10K a month for your Alzheimer's ridden step grandmother in a care facility. So it's not that much more. A care facility is different from someone who is doing like the home care kind of stuff. My my mom has had temporary home care people after coming out of the hospital. My my uncle who was paralyzed on his entire left side had a, had a home care uh, person as well. You have your money on the documents he presented being fake as fuck. True. Following Fernandez's death, Flores remained on the premises even after the Bernard Fernandez 2009 revocable trust claimed the house, according to court documents. So this guy, this guy had a trust, I guess, that the house belonged to and he had nobody, I guess, to take over the trust. So does that mean it just goes to the bank? Is that how that works? And that's how they were able to sell it? If you truly have to live with a guy to take care of him, that's a 24 hour a day job. It depends on what he was doing, but I'm not going to believe this guy. Like, are you going to take this guy's word for it? Amazingly, this first scumbag steals money from the elderly and now wants to steal their house after death. A reverse mortgage, probably. I don't know. You still say non-citizens should not be able to own any property. Well, there's no way to know that Flores is a non-citizen and you'll see you'll see why shortly. <laughs> Went to the trust. The trust might be the seller. <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly how trusts work, uh, personally. So, trust has successor trustees to take control. Yeah, like, I, I know that it has a trust. So that means there are people who had control of the property that aren't Flores. But I don't, I don't know exactly how trusts work. Regina wasn't killed. She's an Orlando rep that stole a poor family's property by forcing doc, or forging docs. Just Tiffany Henyard on more drugs. Oh, shit. It's owned by the trust, and the trustees can use the property as needed. <laughs> could see that he got 3000 to take care of himself, the elderly, and the place. Like, potentially. But still, a week? That's nuts. Idiot Karen, thank you for the $5. You can make yourself the beneficiary of a trust, but people hide their assets in trust from public records. <laughs> the home was later sold to the Londa family by the new trustee, Joseph Russo, for $2 million, according to court documents. Since Flores was still at the house during this time, the Londas were forced to take on the task of evicting him. The Londa family attempted to move in, but couldn't because of a loophole in New York City's squatter's rights laws. The Londas told WABC7 that they purchased the home because it's right next door to family members. We're looking to hopefully retire and most of all provide for my son Alex, who has Down syndrome. However, discovering Flores squatting inside the home upended their plans and Joseph called the situation a total nightmare. Uh, anyone who lives in a residence for more than 30 days is considered a tenant, granted temporary rights. We know that from the other article. To reclaim property from a squatter after 30 days, an owner must be able to prove a right to the property and proceed with legal eviction proceedings. This is where the Londas have faced hurdles. The couple told WABC7 that they've had five hearings, but the process keeps getting delayed. Flores once arrived in court without an attorney, and then he delayed the process by filing for bankruptcy. New York City law states that once a tenant files for bankruptcy, a landlord cannot continue to obtain possession or enforce judgment until the bankruptcy case is resolved. Holy shit, this man is vile. Who does he have advising him to do this shit? Because there's no way he knew that all on his own, right? <clears throat> it's basically his house now? Yeah, pretty much. What a piece of shit. If you have no lease and you're not paying rent, what is your right? Joseph told the outlet. The Landis told the New York Post in February they gave Flores 10 days to leave, but when they, when they and an insurance inspector tried to enter the home, Flores called the police. The Landis said Flores is renting out rooms in the meantime and they're being forced to pay his utility bills. The Landis said that while the legal battle continues, Flores has listed the home online as a rental, offering one room dubbed the Prince Room for $50 a night. 
The couple also said they were now stuck playing Floris' utility bills, which they estimated to be thousands of dollars. It makes me feel completely forgotten in the legal system, unfair, and not able to do anything. And see, this is, this is where I'm like, why are you still paying? Why haven't they shut the utilities off? There's, there's zero reason for them to keep paying for these utilities. And in, in the first article we read on this, uh, they, they mentioned how he would like run the heat and the air conditioning with windows open to drive up the bills to be even more expensive. It's illegal to stop paying utilities. At my apartment complex, when a family is given an eviction notice, and it, maybe this is different because the Georgia law, I don't know. I don't know if this is a law thing. When a family here is served an eviction notice, the owners of the management property can legally cut off their water, cut off their electricity, cut off, cut off like everything to their apartment in order to force them to leave. So there's zero reason, unless there's something in New York law that says that they need to keep paying it, that they should have to be doing this. You don't live in a dystopia like New York. It's possible they have some weird dystopia law. It's very possible. But from what I know, it's a very typical, typical thing. I like my my mom had it happen as well. If my mom couldn't pay for the electricity, or if my mom got evicted from a place, they would shut it off. They would just they would just shut it off. And that was that was in Massachusetts. And that's a pretty lefty state. New York laws are just totally different from everywhere else in the country. Cold states typically have laws that prevent heat shutoff in the winter. In the winter, that prevents like heat shutoff. But other than that, if New York is anything Sorry like Portland, and the owner of the property has to keep paying the utilities. That sounds really shitty. Samba, thank you for the full 10. The only judge needed in this situation is chambered in 410. <laughs> That's uh, judge and jury right there, as it were. I don't think it's a legal eviction notice unless the court agrees in New York, like California's laws. I, I mean, even if it's a law at this point, just shut it off. Like, what, what are your other fucking options? Especially when they said that they've tried to go to court with this five times. At that point, I would be like, I'm shutting it off and dealing with the consequences. Keyword, just get evicted. It's very easy to get eviction in many states, assuming you legit own the property and the person legit doesn't have a valid lease. It's like, it's not like he has a tenancy agreement with them. He's claiming that he is able to live in the home. So he should be able to be paying his own utilities, not relying on somebody else to do it. Flores has countersued the Londa family who've hired security for the home this month. The Londa family hired security to watch the home amid the legal proceedings. And the security guard told the Daily Mail that he sympathized with the Londa family, whom he called good people. It's a shame what's going on, they added. After the Londa family sued Flores, he countersued them for what he called harassment. WABC7 reported earlier this month. Imagine paying $2 million for a shitty home that isn't even worth half that because you want to be next to your family while taking care of your disabled son. And then a squatter has taken over your home and you try your best to go through the legal means to get him removed. And then he countersues you for harassing him? Holy shit. Flores' attorney, Dennis O'Sullivan, told the local Fox affiliate the Londa family was using intimidating tactics against Flores. The Londa's attorney, Anthony Mor Mordente, meanwhile, told the outlet that Flores asked the family to pay him money if they wanted him to leave, but that they declined. Good. Don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> Separately, the court documents show that Flores, also known as Brett Fisher, was arrested in December 2023 for assault and harassment charges. Flores pushed, picked up, and threw his wife, WABC7, reported. This guy is named Brett Fisher, and he's changed his name to Flores. Gee, I wonder why this man with a white sounding name would want a more hispanic sounding one i wonder why how does he get away with being so blatantly obvious that he's trying to scam them because new york doesn't care about human beings they only care about criminals you ever just pick up and throw your wife <laughs> maybe this guy might just disappear it's unclear if Flores is, lives with his wife, with whom a source told the New York Post he shares a young child. 
The source, who declined to say whether she was a friend of the family or of Flores, told the outlet they're unsure if the wife and child lived at the residence. The source said that the baby is on a ventilator. Flores' attorney says a revelation will change the course of the case. When Flores and his attorney arrived earlier this month at the Queens County Civil Court, a judge requested they provide audio recordings to support Flores' legal claim to the home. If there was actually a revelation, they would have provided it way sooner than this. And in addition to that, they're probably going to use the ventilator baby to make people feel bad. It's like, who who are you going to support in this case? A family who has enough money to spend two million on a home? They can just buy another home. You want to kick this young man and his ailed baby out on the street like some kind of monster? These images of brown third worlders crying in another country will make you go, fuck the laws. We don't need them. <laughs> I'm for creatine. Thank you for the five dollars. This is the part where you hire some distinguished Italian gentleman to have a sit down with the squatter and settle the beef. That's what that's what we're missing from modern society. We need more distinguished Italian gentlemen again. The judge gave Flores and O'Sullivan one week to produce the audio recordings. During the hearing, O'Sullivan said he'd been retained just hours before the hearing and required more prep time, according to the outlet. When asked why Flores hadn't produced the audio recordings or hired an attorney before this hearing, O'Sullivan said Flores has a newborn child with respiratory issues. A revelation will turn this narrative on its head, O'Sullivan told WABC7. The homeowners, the Landas, are not victims in this case the next hearing is scheduled for april wow i can't wait to hear the update on this in a in a, in a week or two Monia, you you swana thank you for the five gift members thank you thank you thank you fucking call me i'm sick of this shit in new york dude Idiot carrot, thank you for the 10. You think lease agreements must go through county governments for confirmation? Unless you have the capital to monitor your rental, you can always be a victim. I just, if, if your rental isn't being rented out, I don't even know how you would keep tabs on it. Right? I was like, I... Like, the, these people didn't even seem like they took long between buying the home and trying to move into it. So it's just like, what the fuck? Isn't the food in New York shit? <laughs> Hayden, thank you for five gift member. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What if the squatter ODs in Minecraft, in Terraria, in Fortnite? ODing in Roblox? <laughs> Burn the house down is the only way to be sure. But wait, chat! If you're not angry enough at the state of homes in the country, I present to you Town agrees to foot the moving bill after judge orders Porsche driving Long Island squatters to hit the road. A pair of Porsche driving Long Island squatters accused of duping a Nassau County judge so they could legally live in an abandoned home now face eviction after the jurist reversed his decision. The court orders that Denton Gale and Margaret Grover immediately vacate the property at 39 Brussels Drive, New Hyde Park, wrote Nassau County District Judge Christopher Koshignano Kush in his March 6th decision. Gale and Grover ran to Nassau County Housing Court in November, claiming to Koshignano in court papers that Edward Lacono rented them his home and then illegally kicked the couple out of the two-story, seven-room Cape Cod for no reason. It's glowing time. Edward Lacono died in 2016. His son, by the same name, along with his wife and other son, all died by 2018. That's crazy. That's crazy. That, that their entire family just died by 2018. How could COVID do this? <laughs> Leaving the home abandoned and in a prolonged foreclosure proceeding, outraged neighbors later told the judge in their own court papers. Grover, 19, claimed during a Wednesday hearing she'd paid $20,000 to Lacono. But when she couldn't provide Cushignano proof, the judge, <laughs> help, repeatedly told her that's because Edward's dead. The couple appealed, claiming neither the neighbors nor the town has legal standing to get them evicted. 
What is this fucking facial expression? I was just like, if Chris Chan was a woman. <laughs> King Heavy Meta, thank you for the $10. Your mom and uncle owned many rentals at one point, and growing up being built like a brick house giant, you were responsible for handling non-payers and squatters. God damn, good luck with that. Big bouncer, man. Alex Blackfoot, thank you for the $5. And you want to go back to this? Are you sure about that? Alex Blackfoot, did you just insinuate that New York is in fucking New England? I will come for you! And not in the sexy way, in the violent way! You're a local, it's pronounced Nassau. Nassau? Nassau. Cro. Croissant? Nassau? Landlords are a leech on society. Hello, Kami. <laughs> we really need to kick New York out of the union at this point. <laughs> Thank you for the hundred biddies! It's all northeast. It all sucks, except for New Hampshire. I love New Hampshire. The Nassau County Sheriff's Office said Friday it has yet to receive a warrant to evict the pair. The home has been in foreclosure since 2013, but the process has languished in state court for years. That's a little wild that it's been in foreclosure since 2013, but the homeowner didn't die until 2016, and then the rest of his family who lived in the house died by 2018. Something, something's a little weird here. Something's a little weird. You have bad news, look up where Old York is. It's in Old England, the bad England. Thank you for the $2. Sorry to tell you guys, but Massachusetts peoples are in the middle of gaying up New Hampshire. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but they, they sure are fucking trying. They sure are fucking trying. Why does the law provide squatters with rights? The law was designed to help prevent long-term tenants from getting evicted. New York City's law was partially made in response to vacant and abandoned buildings that were becoming a blight on the city. That doesn't... That doesn't make any sense. Why would... Are you, are you hoping that the squatters that take over those buildings will actually beautify them instead of making them worse? Have you seen Chicago, New York? What are you doing? What are you doing? Ultimately, the home stood empty for a decade before Gale, 29, and Grover appeared there in August with their 2013 Porsche Cayenne, a baby, and dog in tow. Hold on a second. Gale, 29. Didn't they say this other bitch was 19? Am I high? Grover, 19. So this is, this is a, this is a 19-year-old white woman with a 29-year-old black dude and a baby and a dog who just decided to take over a house and squat in it. I'm... noticing they can start taxing them after they get the rights to the building imagine thinking that people who are squatting in there would actually be able to pay the tax imagine now the town of north Hempstead said it is giving the bank 90 days to finish the foreclosure or they will take over the property under the state's zombie housing law i don't even know what a zombie housing law is but this, this town is sick of these squatters i guess Oh, they just, they just whole ass showed the license plate. I can't, if you can afford a Porsche, why? I just, man. The town of North Hampstead, which declared the Brussels Drive house unlivable in October after police were called to check on the couple's baby, said it has no authority to force its way into the home to inspect it. Police are fucking useless, dude. Police are fucking useless. Free houses for zombies. The town has agreed to foot the bill for the commercial movers and 30 days of storage required before an eviction can proceed at a cost of $2,500 or more, a spokesman said. The permanent fix has to involve selling the property to a new owner so squatters don't try to reoccupy the house in the future. The situation just speaks to the weakness in state laws governing these matters, said town spokesman Umberto Mignardi. Porsche is probably rented. If it's rented, it's not getting returned ever. Zombie house, dead and dangerous. That's that's kind of wild that this town has collectively decided these squatters are such a nuisance, we no longer want them here. Uh, it's actually more beneficial to use our tax dollars to get rid of them than to allow them to stay here. Man, I wish we could collectively <laughs> decide that in many other circumstances. That seems like it would solve a lot of problems. They're Keynesian economists. They treat crackheads and professors like they're the same thing. 
<laughs> Impound the Porsche. It's not weakness in state law. That's laws suppressing the rights of homeowners. With a child involved in testimony from the inspector that based on the observable exterior condition and or no water and power, a reasonable suspicion exists that the child is in danger. Yeah, good luck. Good luck getting CPS to do anything. And if your blood was not yet boiling, chat, I have another one for you. Nadia Vitels, 52, who was found stuffed in a duffel bag in her Manhattan apartment, was killed by two squatters who beat her to death as cops hunt the male and female suspects. Police have revealed that the mother, found murdered and stuffed into a duffel bag at her New York City apartment, were a pair of squatters who beat the woman to death. Nadia Vitels, 52, was found dead in the East 31st Street apartment in Manhattan's Kipps Bay on March 14th after her family called the building superintendent to do a wellness check. The medical examiner ruled her death a homicide on Friday after an autopsy ruled she died from multiple facial fractures, a brain bleed, two broken ribs, and blunt force trauma to the head. Now, NYPD chief of detectives said the suspects, who already already believed to be a black male and a black female, both in their 20s, were squatting in Vitel's apartment. We believe that some squatters took the apartment over. This woman came home and walked in on the squatters that were there. The two suspects were spotted driving off in Vitel's Lexus SUV around the time they believed she died, and even caught on surveillance footage, which has not yet been released to the public. Kenny added that the unique design of the upscale apartment means they may have been able to hide from Vitel's for some time. The apartment itself is very unique in that there's no front door to the apartment. You take an elevator up and then you key your way in. The elevator is actually your front door, Kenny told the New York Post. That's actually pretty cool, but also, if that's the way they get in, how the fuck did they get in there to squat? If you have to, if you have to unlock the elevator and then take the elevator up and then key your way in, how? How is this? Warm weather hate. I know, this global warming is just out of control, chat. They've been arrested. Update. Oh, hell yeah. I hope that updates in this article. Michael Medvedev, Vitel's son, made the grisly discovery of his mother's corpse upon return alongside the building superintendent, Jean Pompey, who has lived in there for 22 years after Vitel's had not been seen for 48 hours. As they're getting ready to leave, the son opens up a closet door near the front and discovers a duffel bag with a foot sticking out. While the suspects, one of whom has a prior arrest, of course they do, remain on the lam after swiping Vito's car as of Thursday night, police believe they're on the right track. As of right now, we have probable cause, we have two subjects, we have had the regional fugitive task force actively hunting as we speak. The couple are believed to have driven across George Washington Bridge into New Jersey before crashing Vito's SUV in Pennsylvania's lower Paxton Township. Zale, thank you for the $10. One of the issues about this is that these squatters are mostly people that are trucked in from out of state because other states don't want them. I mean, you understand why these people are awful. I don't I don't know how much like actual citizens are trucked around, but like I I got the potential to believe it. Working with a guy on the inside or stole her key? I don't know. I hope the kid doesn't have PTSD. I'm sure you're not going to get over finding your mother's dead body in a duffel bag like that. That's going to create some issues. If you were son, the government would need to use death penalty to punish you for the things you would do to the squatters, right? Right? Man, she looks... She looks really fucking young for 56 as well. God damn. NYPD officials did not receive the plate numbers on the car until the next day, but they know that the squatters immediately tried to spend $1,000 on a replacement vehicle. Medvedev remembered his mother as a smart, beautiful, and adventurous woman during her funeral at Gutterman's Funeral Home in Woodbury on Monday. I remember she showed me a gold medal she earned in high school back in Russia, a student medal of honor for being top in her class. That medal, for some reason, has always stuck with me. It made me feel proud to be her son, and I wanted to earn my gold medals to live up to her. He said his mother had moved to the United States from Russia to attend college in Oklahoma and play tennis, then moved to Miami for graduate school. According to her LinkedIn profile, Vitels was a marketing professional who worked at Canon, Nokia, and tennis star Maria Sharapova's candy line, Sugapova. I didn't know she had a candy line. You would also exile many squatters to Somalia, right? They can, they can squat in a house in Somalia! 
can't say anything about this because you would glow brighter than a fucking nuclear bomb. Yeah, it's uh, <sighs> she's Russian. They're going to walk. I mean, it's New York. They probably would have walked anyway, unfortunately. Uh, New York City Police Department officers were seen hauling out several bags of the victim's items, including three suitcases and bags of her clothes out of the building last week. Her family told Medvedev that they hadn't heard from her in a few days, so he went up to her apartment to check on her, saw signs that something was wrong. Medvedev said his mother loved her dog and she had adopted the pup while going through a hard time in her life, caring for her sick parents. He became her obsession, her best friend, her man. He was the only man she needed, the son said at her funeral. The little puppy gave her the love she needed to get through the hardest time in her life. Pompey discovered her dog urinated all over the floor because it had been unaccompanied, which was very unusual. Then they found a bag in the closet. I believe there's a body in there. Kind of sensed something was wrong. It looks suspicious, Pompey said. He added that he saw signs of struggle in the apartment as the breaker panel, which he believes is electric, was left damaged. Vitel's concerned family members then called the fire department, who arrived on the scene quickly. The fire department opened the bag and discovered her body, Pompey said. I didn't peek and see the body myself. They just said there was a body in there and called the police. It was in the closet by the entrance to the door. It was in a little type of bag you zipped up, a soft case type. I felt bad. You never want to hear anyone is killed or murdered. You stay quiet on this since you had squatters try and take your home when you were deployed in Okinawa. Oh, shit. What ha- Ooh, What happened to those squatters? Can we just get off New York as a national prison colony like an escape from New York? I feel like we might need to do that at this point, Mr. Lunchbox Man. Thank you for the $13 doodles. And this is why the real estate in the large parts of New York away from the city are crazy cheap. Like, why would you, why would you want to live around this garbage? How glowing. <laughs> that man's about to violate the TOS. He can just say something like, well, I came home and I thought I had to deal with the squatters, but suddenly they had mysteriously vanished. You bought a new bottle of Heinz? You can't wait to put it in the refrigerator? What's wrong with you? I'm Bert Creatine. Thank you for the ten dollar doodles. Remember that the 1974 movie Death Wish was a direct response to how absolutely shit it was to live in New York during the 70s. Except now we're going to have entire towns of Paul Kersey's. Yee! Drop them off into the middle of the gulf during hurricane season. Tell them they get citizenship if they can make the swim. These aren't even illegal people. These are like just people who are here. Is it glowing time? The superintendent confirmed there was another name on the lease of the apartment Vitels was in and said he'd only met that person once and forgot what they looked like. Apparently, she, Vitels, was subletting. I didn't know she was going to be moving in, he added. Vitels had reportedly moved into the apartment just days before her death, and Medvedev said that his mother was looking forward to starting the next chapter in her life. Getting ready to move to New York City, where she would conquer the world, she was excited to move to the city. Well, that's where she fucked up, it, being excited to move to the city. God damn. But also, I'm wondering if the person she was subletting to was angry that they wouldn't be able to live there anymore, and so they let these two people come in who they knew would fuck her up. There's a reason most rentals make subletting a breach of lease. Yeah! How out of touch can you be wanting to live in NYC? <laughs> Silly Gordo, thank you for the hundred biddies. Hey, Grandpa, how was Okinawa? Also, what's that fox woman on your screen? American Democrat cities are starting to resemble South Africa, not in a good way. Yeah, it's real unfortunate. It's real unfortunate. All right, so it looks like this article doesn't have the update. So you said that they were arrested over here at the New York Times. <laughs> um, That's being sought for murder. Let's see. Let's there's a nut suspected squatter in a million dollar NYC home. Is subletting space in a bizarre twist, conned co-resident says. This is another fucking case! This is, a, this is a completely different one! What? He posted the new article in stream suggestions. T 
teen squatters arrested after a woman found dead in duffel bag in New York City apartment. Nadia Vitel. Two teenagers? How can... I'm always just, like, absolutely fucking stunned when, like, young teenage people end up committing murder. I just... I blow it. Like, I even know about the child murderers in Japan, right? When they, when they like, start killing at, like, 10 years old. But it still blows my mind every time. <laughs> Teens could be here. Teens could be anywhere around here. I hate teens. <laughs> Two teenagers were arrested after a woman was discovered dead in a duffel bag in New York City apartment last week. The woman, identified as 52-year-old Nadia Vitel, earlier this month, she went to check on her late mother's Manhattan apartment, which had been empty for months, according to two senior law enforcement sources. <coughs> if it had been empty for months, what was with the subletting? The teenagers, identified as 19-year-old Haley Tejada and a 16-year-old, were unlawfully occupying the apartment. NBC News did not usually identify minors accused of crimes. I feel like they should. Right, I, I don't care if you're a minor. If you've murdered someone, like, people have a right to uh, know your name. Are 19-year-olds teens in the USA? It's in the name. 19 years old. 19, it's a teen. Never forget the vast majority of soldiers throughout history have been teenagers. A boy in his late teens is basically a man physically. I'm not denying that they're actually legally adults, right? Like, they are adults. But because 19 has teen in it, you can still call them a teenager, which is why that happens. And they're getting tried as an adult, and you should report them as adults. I mean, they're probably going to report somewhere in here that they're being tried as adults, I would imagine. They don't normally identify minors, yet they identify the names of the Kenosha kid or that smiling demonstrator at Washington, D.C. Also true and fair. Also true and fair. I meant more like 15 to 17. I mean, 19 and 18 are still teen. Again, it's in the name, but legally you are an adult at that point. The other one is Kensley Alston, but different sites claim they're either 16 or 18. Can't even nail the name down, dude. Can't even nail the name. I uh, know. Vito's body was found on March 14th after a wellness check at the Kipps Bay apartment, police said. Her cause of death was blunt force trauma of the head, according to the New York City Medical Examiner's Office. Investigators found surveillance footage showing Vitel's movements around the apartment building on March 10th and the teenagers entering the building shortly after. Investigators also found items belonging to Vitel in the building's garbage receptacle area. This seems really weird. And also, again, if you have to key yourself into the apartment, where did these teens get the key from? Where did these... Where did they get the key? <laughs> Help. Tijana and the 16-year-old are seen leaving the building on March 12th. When they allegedly stole Vitel's car, they drove to New Jersey and eventually crashed in Lower Paxton Township, Pennsylvania. Crash led to the arrest of the teenagers by U.S. Marshals Regional Fugitive Task Force in York, Pennsylvania, per the law enforcement sources. It's not clear if the teenagers have attorneys or what they've been charged with. Weird. Weird. My poor homeless teens just wanted a warm home. She was- she was gonna evict them! We can't have that! <laughs> At least you, Florida, the average squatter either gets kicked out immediately or they win a Darwin Award. I feel like if someone squats in your home in Florida, you are legally obligated to hand wrestle some alligators and then set them on the home to remove the problem. Picked up by the marshals. That's what it says. It says they were picked up by the marshals. Murder charge would be a good start. You would think so! You would think so. Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson are on the case. God, I fucking hope not. You think they used a key? Well, they... The way to get into this apartment, right? They, they said in the other article that the apartment doesn't have a traditional front door. That you have to unlock the elevator, take the elevator up to the apartment, and then use a special key card to get into the apartment. So I imagine the way that the apartment is locked up, you can't break into it like a normal apartment. So I'm wondering how they got in exactly. And hopefully, fire escapes though? I mean, maybe. Maybe they got in through a fire escape. They didn't mention fire escapes, but like, I'm, I'm interested. I want to know. I want to know how they got in. In Vermont and Virginia, if you're late by one day on rent, they can call the police on you and evict you immediately. Sorry, only Virginia. It's a good thing that I don't live in Virginia. Virginia also has some real fucked laws. I hate Virginia. Imagine, imagine going 15 over the speed limit is a felony. Fuck off with that shit. They do mean one man, one jar kind of squad in Florida. What, what the fuck did you just say to me? 
Legally, there has to be stairs that go in case of a fire. I wouldn't know. I don't think I've ever lived in a place with a fire escape. Here in Florida, can confirm you're allowed to get very rough with the squatters. Hell yeah. Florida man wins again. Thank you for the five dollars, King Heavy Meta. I followed her from behind and then mugged her? I mean, maybe. Maybe they- they- because like... The other article said that they were in the apartment before the woman. So, I don't know. There's conflicting stories. We need more information. Virginia Cannonball Run when? No. No! Re reduce the population of Florida men and eventually the state will be sane. I feel like we need the Florida men. They're the, they're the counterpart to all the soy men in California. The lawlessness makes you worried. It's not too long from this before ordinary people have enough and take the law into their own hands. The left is starting a fight they can't win. Good. Uh, like, unironically good. They, they think they want no police and for people to police themselves, but I don't think that's actually... I don't think they realize what that's going to usher in. Florida men are better than most, believe it or not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The weak soy men of California need the strong, drug-addled Florida men uh, that don't afraid of no alligators. ISIS just bombed Russia? Wait, what? Is it- were they responsible for the shooting this morning as well? ISIS is still a thing? <laughs> Meth does insane things to the brain. Yeah, clearly. When the left doesn't win, they cry and shout, ism this and ist that. Yeah, but I mean, if we're in the middle of like devolved crisis where the police don't work anymore and we're all self-policing, uh, who's going to care that they're crying ist and ism? ISIS came back after Brandon surrendered the sandbox. <laughs> I'm tired of the sandbox, chat! I want a schoolyard without a sandbox! <laughs> ISIS claims responsibility for an attack in busy Moscow area concert venue that left at least 40 dead. You don't curse often, but what the fuck? Yeah, it was 40 dead and at least 100 injured before I started scream? stream. <laughs> Freudian slip. It was at least 100 injured in that shooting, so it, it could be more now. Russia says 40 dead, 145 injured in the concert hall raid. Islamic State group claims responsibility. So they shot up a concert hall and then they also just bombed them? Fucking poor K. What what the fuck is ISIS's gripe with Russia of all things? This is how Russia gets a Second Amendment and guns on every civilian. Those shots are too accurate. Oh my god. Curious enough, the attack happened a few hours after Russia and China opposed Israel in the UN. You need you need to shut the fuck up before Clinton friends come and find you, okay? <laughs> Remember, just because you notice something does not mean you should say it out loud. <laughs> he knows too much. Oh my god. Nutters in chat trying to tell you protein. <laughs> Who cares? Am I right? Oh my god. It's 6.30. Do I get protein? No, nah, I don't want protein. I had, a, I had like a slice of Italian bread before sleep, stream. I'm slurring my words. I'm drunk on, on power of soda. <laughs> Chechnyans are the ones with the problem against Russia. Russia supported Assad and basically wiping them out. It should have finished the job. <gasps> Sleem! A sleem of Italian bream! ISIS opposes everything the CIA hates. He was the Kiwi Farms Whisperer! What? <laughs> It's honestly- you're honestly suspicious if it's some kind of gay ops to cause diversion with the bricks. I don't know what the bricks is. In- insolent! Thank you for the five Canadians. Russia did try to occupy Afghanistan at one point. Rambo 3. I was gonna say, I know- I know Russia's allied with one of the sandbox countries. I just can't remember which one. Malevolent Quake Gorilla. Thank you for the 499. I've been saying your name this whole time, and I've been reading Gorilla the correct way, like warfare. But when I say Creek Gorilla out loud, I think of, like, Harambe, and then he's got a bandana on. Russia's planning to mobilize 300,000 troops for a new offensive. This may have been part of that agenda. Most countries do this for war. But why would Russia mobilize 300,000 troops against a country that has Hello, ISIS in it? Aren't they, aren't they kind of busy with, like, a different war that they've been fighting for a few years now? I don't, I don't, it's like, uh, what, what, what? <laughs> 
I'm for creatine. Thank you for the five dollars. Isis's problem with Russia is very simple. They're not Islamic. Anyone not Islamic must convert or not exist anymore. It's that simple. Maybe, maybe I am crazy. <gasps> Maybe I'm crazy, chat. I'm about to put some tinfoil all over my visage. My tinfoil hat is growing bigger and more beautiful by the day. What if, what if... What if ISIS remembers how Obama gave weapons to Syria and those weapons ended up falling into hands of terrorists there? All right, keep, keep with me. And now ISIS also sees how the majority of Americans publicly seemingly have flipped and decided that they're going to support Hamas in the in the Israel-Palestine conflict. And so ISIS was like, if America is going to give terrorist weapons, if America is going to support terrorist groups in our region, why would America not support us? Let us attack an enemy of America so that America will then give us weapons and support as well. We just signed a bill that gave billions of dollars to Ukraine and Israel. Why the fuck wouldn't ISIS want to get in on some of that oil money? Hey, Kirsha, why is there a red dot on your forehead? <laughs> She's cooking. That's bullshit, but I believe it. I'm just, I'm just saying, if I was in ISIS and I was looking at what America's doing, and it's just like, well, if they can support Hamas, why not ISIS? I, I'd be like, okay, let's go attack imperialist America enemy. We can we can pretend to to be to be on America's allied side so that they give us all of the support and then when America least expects it we just turn on them and fuck them instead. <laughs> Israel treated Al Qaeda militants in its hospital in the past. Yeah, but why the fuck would Hamas or ISIS care about that? I seem to remember that something along those lines is how they got started in the first place. There, there are weapons of mass destruction uh, in, in the sandbox, and they are a threat to our security as a nation. So you must give up your freedom so that we may fight this war in the sandbox. <laughs> WM days. Turns out ISIS with another CIA op. Wow! Imagine. That's unironically how the Taliban started. I hope I'm not cooking too hard. I swear. I swear I am just a brain damaged fox woman on the internet. I do not have inside information that would lead to the arrest of the Clintons. I, I, j I am an anime woman. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's how Al-Qaeda started too, right? Oh man. <laughs> She's not- I'm not suicidal! I did not kill myself! <laughs> Count seven, they give the $10. It's likely Ukraine provided some support to ISIS for this. They definitely have used the nukes by now if they still have them. Anyone who will hurt Russia is their friend right now. I don't think anyone would use nukes, quote-unquote, if they still had them at this moment. I think- I think the only country crazy enough to even try something remotely close to that is a uh, little, little pudgy Kim Jong in North Korea trying to shoot his uh, erectile dysfunction missiles, right? Like, he's the only one who would try doing something literally that fucking stupid. No, no one else is going to. Emperor, Emperor Creatine, thank you for the five dollars. We learned that lesson about supporting the Mujahideen when Bin Laden turned on us. Then again, it is Biden in charge. Did Bin Laden turn on us? Or was he always doing exactly what he was meant to do? Hope you come back from your vacation and don't graduate. It's a good thing I'm not fucking flying, eh? <laughs> what Kirsha didn't tell us at the start of stream is that her vacation is gonna be permanent. And now per I bought a laptop for you, chat! Zima Devon, thank you for the $10. You find me via side scrollers. I like you. You'll speak truth. I speak conspiracy theory, but thank you, good sir. <laughs> Rip Kirsha, I can't believe she shot herself ten times in the back of the head after packing her bags for vacation. God damn. <laughs> Mick Clax, thank you for the hundred betties. Still don't 
doesn't comprehend how Hamas has been universally understood as a terror organization for decades by the media and people alike, but magically they become trustworthy bastions of freedom versus Israel. What am I missing? Well, they needed some way to make it okay to be anti-Semitic. So, you know. <laughs> like, the, the people who are progressive are just as racist as the people on the other end. The horseshoe theory is true and real. But you couldn't be openly anti-Semitic until now. They just, they needed a push for that, you know? Cauldron here, thank you for my $10 doodles. <laughs> I pay my dues. I read your comment while I was thanking you, and so the wires got crossed and my brain turned to soup. <laughs> thank you, thank you for the $10, Cauldron here. Idiot, carrot. Thank you for the $10. During the Cold War, Russia invaded Iran and the Middle East. The Mujahideen were created to resist them, but they radicalized into Al-Qaeda and now ISIS. They've always hated Russia. Yeah, but again, maybe they think Russia's in a compromised position because they're fighting a war on a different front with Ukraine right now. But also, like... Maybe you learned something from, like, Hitler? <laughs> he tried to invade Russia, and that did not go so well for him. So I'm just saying, if, if, if Hitler, with the army that he had at the time, could not, could not do the harm to Russia that he wanted, maybe the people in the sandbox won't be able to either. I just, I'm, I'm just saying, I, it doesn't seem rational to me. Cut it out of context. Why did you pick Hitler and not Napoleon? Because I don't remember shit about Napoleon and as an American, I had two Holocaust classes in high school. <laughs> Reminder that Napoleon marched into Russia with 600,000 and marched back home with less than 200,000. A million Russians stocked with vodka in every snowbank. It's like America, under every blade of grass is a gun. You cannot defeat the Russians in their snowbanks. <laughs> Insolent! Thank you for the two Canadians. And now we're at Hitler. It all comes back to Hitler. It all, it all comes back. Sluts. Brewing Storm, thank you for the $10 doodles. Bye, Dan! Gonna go burr with all of your money. I wish he would not. Al Rillen, thank you for the $9.99. Russia used to be a big weapon manufacturer. They probably used to hand them weapons under the table. <laughs> While the U.S. was in Afghanistan and then the U.S. left and Russia went to war, probably cutting them off. <laughs> Help. True. Much like how the Vietnamese are in the trees. And that's why forests are terrifying. ISIS is against Hamas too. It shows who their friends are. What the fuck is happening? Come in to hear about Hitler and invading the Russians. Good time to come and watch! German fought Western Europe, Africa, and Eastern Front. There's a little, a little bit too much to go into Russia, man. <laughs> That's what the Lord of War was doing. I also don't think it's licking Russia's ass to not want... To not want civilians to get shot up and bombed. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, man. Bad time to be the Lorax. Google 1999 Russian apartment bombings and start noticing. Also, can't find Taliban taking credit. I mean, it's all, it's also possible that Chad is gaslighting me. Also, they didn't say they didn't say the Taliban took credit. They said ISIS. And I mean, maybe the Taliban is ISIS. I don't fucking know. There's too many names for all those little organizations over there, dude. I can't remember them all. Sergeant Buck, thank you for the three month member. Hitler and Napoleon really should have played Risk when they were kids. Oh my god. I can't believe Kirsch's last stream was the one from Tuesday. Chat's not gaslighting. Mainstream media is saying ISIS claimed responsibility. Thank you, Binary Mind. I believe you. Fun I fact, Kirsha. The only people yeah. to actually march into Russia during the winter and win were the Mongolians. That's why they have the best beef. Not nah, Tally's fighting ISIS. Ay, 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 Thank you for the gift sub to Spino. Spino, please enjoy my feet pics in the only way that you can. Idiot Karen, thank you for the five dollars. Is it racist to make American policy anything east of New England can fuck off? I'd be okay with that, but we would have to have a very strict border policy for New England. Like, way stricter than anything south of Texas. My, sh my shady beef! <laughs> 
You're new here. I'm your favorite Doomer Femcell conspiracy theorist. I'm not. I'm not stinky Femcell. I want himbo and and have baby. <laughs> you don't want Canada. That's true. We'll need to have a very secure border around all of our perimeters. Want to rewatch the episode of South Park about the Mongolians? Kish is not an incel. Not incel. What if himbos like it stinky? I've definitely been told it would be hot if I got all super sweaty at the gym and then came home after the gym and then, you know, did the did the thing. But it's just like, man, can you let me shower? Like, that's, I, that's probably going to be kind of stanky. Like, what? You played Mabinogi for five minutes. Sorry, you're a femcel now. I don't think that's how that works. I don't think that's how that works. You don't choose the femcel life. The femcel life chooses you. I don't like that. <gasps> Need to make the stank together. It's a team effort. Exactly. Exactly. You gotta go for Burger King after the gym, right? Look, man. Look, man, that was that was a different time in my life. I was getting over being a vegetarian. Okay, all right. Jordan kicked Palestinians out after they tried to overthrow the king. No sandbox country wants them, including Egypt, who didn't want Gaza back. I'm gonna be real with you. Everything you just said in that sentence, you know more, I guess, about this than I do. Cause like, as someone who lives in the United States. I don't really care which sand countries want to fight with each other. Like, not not my sand, not my problem. That's that is my that is my stance. Kier ain't a femcel. She just hangs out with them. I'll turn them femcels into housewives one day. Like <gasps> base, but your tax dollars are hard at work in that sand. I know, and I wish they weren't. I wish we could do something to not spend our tax dollars over there. Count seven, thank you for the five dollars. It just came out that the U.S. warned Russia about the risk of a terror attack on the 19th. I heard people saying that as well. Uh, I'm wondering to what degree Russia might have listened. Because, like, you can't be looking all over your country for where the terror attack might occur. You can only protect the things that would be, like, prime targets, right? Like, in the U.S., if we were warned about a terror attack, you might want to protect, like, the Pentagon... The Empire State Building, like biotech lab facilities, potentially. But it's like you can't, you can't just imagine they would go for like some random fucking concert hall, right? American policy could be to China. You can have Taiwan, but you also have to take over the rest of the Asian continent, including you know who. Imagine bartering with countries like you're in an actual game of Civ. <laughs> Are, you, are Russia and Ukraine cold sand countries? Yes, let's call them that. <laughs> it was a warning to US citizens in Russia, not to Russia itself. Basically, avoid public places. Oh, okay, all right. Count seven, they gave it $2. Putin called it outright blackmail and ignored it. Oh, oh that sucks. That, that sucks. It's a subtle espionage war, to be honest. Master Go, I think you the five dollars. Bows, please don't shoot yourself in the head. Honey shot or don't do it. Also, most Middle East groups were created as our proxies against Russia. That is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> what what kind of fucking idiot would go, you know what we could do to destroy Russia? Let's just create a bunch of militant groups in the Middle East. That'll work. What? <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense! The CIA circa 1970 to 1980? That is the dumbest shit I have ever heard! That, that is so fucking dumb! Dumb, but we did it. Holy shit! Literally US foreign policy. We need to get people who have more than half a brain cell uh, doing foreign policy. <laughs> That's why Hamas exists. Jesus Christ. That is so fucking stupid. Look up West and East Berlin. I mean, I know what happened with like communist Berlin and the, the Western allied side of Berlin. I remember watching movies talking about how the, the commie side of Berliners were having to like burn money for fire because it was cheaper than buying firewood. 
rip the Deutschmark. That's why terrorists use Tau missiles and ARs. Please stop funding founding military groups. Oh my god. They made a movie with Tom Hanks in it about it, Charlie Wilson's War. Master Go, thank you for the two dollars. If we thought we could take Russia, we would have. I am just so confused. <laughs> I'm just so confused. We're basically doing a prequel to Ukraine with wasting Russia's time. Brewing Storm, they give the five dollars. Their scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Literally, the seagull with giant muscles. <laughs> Science gone too far. When it backfired on us. I'm, j I'm sick of it, dude. I'm sick of it. Speaking of being sick of things, since I am no militaristic-minded foxu, I can only talk about what I know. I don't- I don't know- I don't know shit about Jack when it comes to military stances and war. I just know I want my tax dollars to stop going to it. But, uh, what I do know... Western game developers screaming at GDC 2024 against Gamergate, patriarchy, and the industry. Totally sane behavior. No wonder they end up making female characters look like vegan gremlins. This... It's absolutely fucking nuts to me. As I don't know how you can look at everyone in this image and think that they are doing anything. If I was like somebody who worked at a high position in a game company, I would be like, I want to know the names of everyone who was involved in this. And I want to make sure they are never hired in our company. <laughs> Oh boy. Kiyosh, you must understand that most of what the CIA does is fund terrorist groups to get rid of the terrorists groups they funded. Get rid of the terrorists groups they fund. Get rid of the terrorists groups they funded. And this goes on and on. Well, maybe they should stop fucking funding terrorist groups. Oh, crazy idea. Breezy love. Thank you for the five dollars. <laughs> Can you imagine how many SSRIs are out in this field right now? I, I can imagine, chat. <laughs> They're not screaming about development crunch or mass layoffs or even sexual harassment at companies like Riot and Ubisoft. They're screaming about my racism in gaming. Us, us evil racist gamers who aren't buying their commie gobbledygook. It's like the old man yells at the sky meme. GDC has thousands of attendees. This is maybe 50 people. Yeah. Yeah, but these are 50 people who should not have jobs in game development. They're, they're showcasing their insanity. At the Game Developers Conference, the games industry really needed a good scream. Today, over 50 game developers met in a park across the street from Moscow Center where the annual Game Developers Conference was taking place. And they had one objective, to scream as loud as possible. The event, known as GD Scream, took place in an open area in the middle of Yerba Buena Gardens where event organizers assembled the crowd by holding up pieces of paper with SCREAM scribbled on them. One of the organizers wore a shirt printed with Munch's The Scream. Another participant wore a shirt printed with an ice cream cone. At exactly noon, the cluster of individuals from all corners of game development let loose a loud scream that lasted for several seconds. As it trailed off, the group broke into relieved laughter and applauded before slowly dispersing. Is this, is this an NPC thing? Like, I remember the, the 4chan, you know, and then and then everybody clapped, right? But, like, they're unironically doing that. What the fuck? Applause, nice ESL. Hey, cool it. The, the, the chat GPT sometimes makes mistakes, all right? <laughs> it's reminded of the yellow jacket lady falling to her knees and screaming over Trump winning. Oh, my God. 
The screen was organized by Scott Jean Segal and Carol Shaw in response to growing discontent among game developers in the face of ongoing industry mass layoffs, as well as coordinated harassment campaigns against marginalized individuals and overall fears of worsening industry conditions. Wait a lie. You pieces of shit. I spoke with Siegel post-Scream, where they told me the event came together after they posted, half-jokingly, on Facebook about the general powerlessness they felt about it all, and wanted to get everyone together to scream. Shaw reached out upon seeing the post and seriously offered to help organize it. It's an industry that really takes advantage of passion, and that's broken my heart over and over again. These developers do not have passion, and that's the problem! I see Lumberjack, thanks for the dollar. You're glad your Canadian tax dollars are helping fund these things? Me when I lie! True. True. This is a, they got so scared of le evil racist gamers, the, the governments got more involved. How fast was this article written? You suspect chat GPT? Same. The two set up event pages and used word of mouth to get the information out. Siegel says their hope was to get enough people to attend so everyone would have a moment of feeling good, a moment of camaraderie, and a moment of just fully acknowledging how messed up everything is. And acknowledging that we're all here at this event pretending everything is fine. Can't be a constant topic of conversation, but it feels like there needs to be just one moment of just letting out. This is so poorly fucking written, no wonder you idiots are losing your jobs. Seagulls, what, like the band in the 80s? I'm screaming because I was just in a really good, valuable, much appreciated GDC session that I absolutely hated. One game developer who asked to be anonymous told me. We talked about diversity in games and we were all marginalized people. And we're all looking at each other going, yeah, it sucks. For some reason, we have to do this. And we cannot not do this. And I don't know how to deal with the obligation of having to do this just because I'm the person that I am. What? What? He's like, I'm literally sitting in a room full of people who are all marginalized and we're all here at this expensive convention to celebrate our fucking narcissistic endeavors. But oh, poor me. Pushing DEI and trying to subvert video games is so hard. Another anonymous industry figure who works on the business side told me they were screaming because the industry is in an interesting spot where our fiscal needs and our creative needs are not matching up. And it's causing a lot of damage, which I think will have long-term effects on the pipeline. Also, obviously, a lot of people came together for something that isn't the usual GDC vibe. We have a lot of tension that needs to be released. I like how they admit right here by trying to inflate my penis like a dick that they can't finance that DEI, one. but DEI is a need. someone who did game design, I wish to grant you my fex post tax so I don't fed post. Thanks for the fed post tax. Thank you for the $10, Himawari Kutetsu. Thank you. Also among the crowd were two representatives from the Code CWA, a union organization representing developers from studios such as Tender Claws, Activision QA United, Blizzard Albany, Zenimax Workers United, and Sega USA. The layoffs in the past couple of years have been absolutely horrible, said Robin Labuglio, gameplay programmer at Tender Claws. My partner was actually. Mm, my partner was actually laid off almost 18 months ago. It's nuts. We screamed because we're angry, but we're also here because we really want people to know that you don't just have to be angry. You don't just have to feel hopeless. I think it's really, really urgent in this time that people use the leverage that we have, that we unionize because while you have a job, you have that leverage. There's still time. And I think the last year has shown us if we don't stand up for ourselves, they will treat us like trash. <clears throat> trying to embed themselves even further so they can't be gotten rid of. That's interesting. I hope even more get laid off. Also, it's funny that they say their partner was laid off 18 months ago. Uh, does your partner have a new job? It's really, it's really weird to say that they were laid off 18 months ago. Have they just not gotten a new job since then? Rathbone, thank you for the $10. Our taxes go to war, indoctrination, fentanyl, and to those whom are too lazy to work. I hate paying taxes. Idiot cat! Thank you for the $5. The Tumblr community didn't die, they just got jobs in game development. 
That's why, that's why it's like, Gamergate never ended for these people. And I am sad that I didn't realize it sooner. We were, we were too busy laughing at how Gamergate was living in their head rent-free when all of us thought it was done and dusted. And I guess I'm also disappointed in myself for not noticing it sooner, especially after seeing shit with, like, Bridge. Right? Like, I noticed Sweet Baby, but I was like, oh, well, Sweet Baby is, like, not a, not a big deal. But then I noticed Bridge, and I didn't make the connection fast enough that obviously they're going to try terraforming the games industry as well, since the games industry is a huge part of culture that they can use to subvert people. Kami's always played a long game. Yeah, it's just, it's just really disappointing, right? Because it's like they, they flaunted it for years. They kept referencing Gamergate. And instead of, oh, ha ha, it lives rent free in their head. I should have been like, oh, they keep referencing it. That means it's still alive for them. Why would they think that? It's disappointing because the DEI infiltration part was always out in the open in GDC talks. So look at that vault link under advocacy. Yeah. Yeah. Hatman was right. All they had to do back then was keep attacking and not cuck to the rules of engagement. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, you can't you can't beat yourself up too much about the past, but it's just like I wish I had noticed a little bit harder. Uh no. Uh, Dara What the fuck? Dara in six three D artist at Tender Claws added, the state of the industry has been at such such a low point. And screaming out our frustrations, our anger, but also channeling that into something where we, together, working together as a community, we can empower ourselves to fight back and to stand up for our rights, our jobs, our livelihoods. As the crowd dispersed, I asked Siegel if the scream had helped them at all. Aside from how my throat will feel tomorrow, it helped me, they replied. Not enough opportunities in life to scream. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Screaming like a child in a field is empowering. Oh man, screaming outside is empowering. I fucking guess so. Glad they consider this a low point. Very heartening. Thanks, IGN. And that uh, that kind of brings me over to Luna Luna Archivist here had a had a little tweet that said, uh, "Yo, Kinel Ryan." It's a U.S. Navy veteran outspoken about everything. I don't know. I don't know who this man is. I'm sorry. Uh, CBC's the Canadian broadcasting company, Matt Galloway, early riser bike rider, the current CBC Radio One, did a show where he played a clip from one of your videos, said that you, Elon Musk, and others subscribe to a conspiracy theory about Sweet Baby Inc. and stated that everyone criticizing them are part of a harassment campaign. And again, we already know that the parent company i forgot their name i did the stream i think a week ago everything blurs together in my mind we found out that sweet baby gets funding from baby ghosts which is a arm of weird ghosts and weird ghost has another company that funds it and that other company that i've forgotten the name of that i already reported on talks about how they've been recognized by the canadian government so it doesn't surprise me that a canadian funded news reporting website would also run defense for these people there is a new conspiracy theory gaining ground in the gaming world. It's centered around a Montreal-based video game company called Sweet Baby Inc. And according to believers, including Elon Musk, this small 16-person Canadian company is trying to radically change the video game industry. Here is one of the many men on YouTube speaking out against Sweet Baby, specifically about the new Black Spider-Man character. The controversy started when Sweet Baby Inc. employees, a woke game consulting company whose sole mission is to push the agenda in any games they get their hands on. They're all about diversity and equity and inclusion. They lay that out. They said they want to take over the street. They hate white, straight male gamers. In reality, he's not wrong with anything he said. He's not making it up. That is directly from their mouths, things they have said. Sweet Baby Inc. is hired by the video game companies to consult on stories and help write diverse characters, including, for example, the Miles Morales character in the most recent Spider-Man game, who is black. I thought they weren't responsible for writing those characters, though. That was their, that was their defense this whole time. Their defense was, we only make minor changes. We're not responsible for writing entire characters, even though when you look at the credits for these games, they are responsible for writing these characters. They're responsible for a lot more than what they claim to be doing because they don't want to be found out for what they're doing. And in addition to that, when they try to claim, why are you mad at us? It's the developers that hire us. We're mad at fucking both of you. We're mad at Swear Babu for existing, and we're mad at the developers for wanting to cuck this fucking hard. 
The developers are just as corrupt. Sweet Baby isn't a lone worker in this thing. They're just the one that's currently blowing up. Which is, again, why I'm trying to shove Bridge in front of as many fucking people as I possibly can. Because Sweet Baby is just one arm in this giant amalgamation of a train wreck, pretty much. And Bridge is not just a mere renaming of DEI. This is them admitting the time for asking is over. The time for normalization is now. They really don't want to be found out, hence why they're calling it a conspiracy theory. And I'm sure some normies will still believe this, but it's like... You, they tried all of this logic 10 years ago. And the majority of us who've been paying attention for at least this long, even if we slipped and didn't notice they were going underground like the cockroaches they are, it's not going to work this time. It's, it's genuinely not. And that's that's why, like, when Matt Walsh comes out and he's like, we're finally noticing, it's like, no. it's we're not We're not finally noticing. There's a huge backstory here, and it would be great if you'd report it correctly. Bridge the DEI on steroids where everyone is forced to take it. Uh, it's, it is, it is insane, but it is something that is fightable as long as you get in front of it, right? If you catch cancer early on, you can get rid of it, you can recover, and you can live. If you don't cut out that cancer, you're gonna get fucked. And I know Matt Walsh hates video games. I know he thinks they're a waste of time, which I've already criticized him for, but I wasn't gonna loop on that. I've, I wasn't gonna loop. I just, like, it fucking it makes me angry. Miles Morales was literally the original woke race change. It was a trash character that was literally just Spider-Man. They used the existence of such a character to put it in the game and justify it with, but it was in the comics. You can't complain. Razor had a good rant about Walsh earlier this week. I know, I watched it. Reminder, don't let them gaslight us. It's very hard to not get gaslit, but just keep reminding yourself what you've seen with your own eyes, what you've heard with your own ears. I've made plenty of tweets on all of this stuff. Maybe maybe I'll bring up the more recent ones that I tried tweeting out at the at the beginning of people starting to blow up about Swear Babu. I guess I <clears throat> help out with my mom's work in Harlem every now and then. She's Councilwoman Rio Morales. And I also got bitten by a radioactive spider that gave me superpowers. Now Sweet Baby is the victim of a giant organized harassment campaign, and gaming insiders say this harassment shows just how toxic certain parts of gaming culture still are. And they're warning this toxicity has real-world consequences that gamers and non-gamers alike need to pay attention to. It doesn't have any actual real-world consequences unless these people start losing their jobs, which would be a good thing, I might remind you. They can get jobs in another industry where they can't be subversive Marxists. Brewing Storm, they give the five dollars. Might be something a lot noticed, but if you look at Sweet Baby's logo, it has a swirl on the baby. Look at the FBI groomer symbol. I'm aware of the FBI groomer symbols, but I'm not going to start saying wild things without any proof. This is exactly how they win, right? As, as soon as you start being like, hmm, these symbols are familiar and they look like they're child trafficking symbols that are for child predators who have gotten found out in Pizzagate, everyone will take you and throw you into the trash and not pay attention to anything you say. That's what they want you to do, exactly. That's a pyramid chat. The one on Sweet Baby's logo is a circle. They're a dying breed and they know it. They're now pulling out all the stops from the feds, the media, the legislation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. No reason to make stuff up. Yeah, you gotta you gotta stick to the facts, because as soon as you even slip up and say one thing that's like slightly wrong, like you misremember a date, they're gonna just disregard everything. They're just gonna disregard everything. They're gonna pick it apart and the normies will be like, oh, well, if that one thing was wrong, maybe the rest of it is too. It's a lollipop. It's still creepy. Still creepy. And there's a, there's a full podcast here. There's a full podcast here. Somebody looks like they've covered the, the CBC uh, basically lying about the harassment campaign. Because, again, it was started by the Sweet Baby Inc. employee not only telling his audience to go and take down a Steam curation page that was not violating Steam's TOS and was using public information available on Sweet Baby's own site, but he also encouraged his audience to report Cabrutus's Steam profile itself because he was like, oh, this guy clearly values his video games. How about we take that away from him? These people deserve no sympathy because they have none for you. 
I'm for creatine, thank you for the five dollars. Kind of, the kind of people who say harassment are the people that think kids are chortling over the idea that harassment has the words her ass in it. Ain't no way, dude. Ain't no fucking way. Let me see if I can find it super quickly. I don't know if I'll be able to, but I'll try my best. I'll try my best. Uh, I'm not good at hunting down stuff like that. Harassment. It's like me when I pronounce things bad on purpose. The harassment. I wonder how long ago I posted these videos. Time is a vortex chat, and I have no idea what happens with any of them. With any with any of the the times. Okay, so here's one. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I quote tweeted it. I did, so there should be a second one. Am I nuts? Am I crazy? Where's my where's my quirt retwirt? Where my quirt retwirt? Okay, there it is. I don't know why my quote retweet isn't on my like actual profile page. It's not, it's not my my actual profile page. Every I'm fine. I'm glad that some people are finally starting to play like the Larry Fink clip as well, talking about needing to force behaviors because that is what they're doing here. And so for people, for people who are just now paying attention to all of the quote unquote Gamergate 2 nonsense, or for people who've been paying attention for ages, but still have no idea what bridge is, please, please. As I said, I've been talking about SBI and bridge for a long time, have a lot of threads that I've made public. SBI is not a scapegoat. They're a symptom of a problem. They're an arm of the problem. It's not about video games. This isn't a niche thing only certain people care about. This is an all encompassing issue. They want to make sure you can't escape the principles of DEI. And there are people that are trying to claim that this isn't political. And like, yeah, the video game part specifically, when it started with Gamergate a decade ago, was about ethics and journalism and about people doing basically sex for good reviews at the time. And nobody, nobody was reporting when they had friends or a conflict of interest in what they were reporting on. But at this point, it is it is morphed into more than that. It morphed into more than that back then when we saw what some of these people were trying to push politically. And I've watched a whole bunch of these videos and I have another one I'm going to bring up today. But this woman at the beginning of this video is Cheryl Dija. Cheryl Dija is the CEO of Bridge and the initiative is called We Are Bridge. And they have a new IMAX way of pushing DEI under the name Bridge in a way that is inescapable. And when you when you get to hearing things like equity of product availability and equity of pricing of products, it, you st it, right. start, it starts it starts getting real fucking weird. I didn't mean to hit play. I don't know why that played. We got we got da Dan the man is a foot job, man. Did Dan the man go to some apple apples to get that under the table footy? Hello, Smug Alana. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, raiders. We're talking about Marxist subversion, especially in the game industry. Dan Schneider. Where my fucking girls at? Dan fucking Schneider. <laughs> Howdy. Dan is a sicko. Oh, man. Has nobody heard that pink guy song? <laughs> Dan the man is a foot job man. Where my bitches at? <laughs> I want my bitches back. <laughs> Dan the man with the van and the candy has a plan. He's a dirty nasty man. That's true. Watch a little blurb talking about Dan. Take care of these frickers. I might end up watching the same blurb as you if it's that interview with that dude who worked on a different show. Thank you. I hope your stream was fucking wonderful despite talking about the weird foot man. The we and foot man, right now our topic is bridge. Bridge is DEI on steroids, and if you haven't heard of it, please pay a fuck attention. Sweet baby, small time compared to these bridge fucks. The the woman on the screen, Cheryl Dija, see she's the CEO of Bridge. And she's the CEO, the uh, the big the big whammon behind the push, as it were. And uh let me let me turn off my background music so we can we can really hear just how crazy things are ramping up. I've been I've been ranting about bridge since fucking January. That bridge is an acronym for belonging, representation, inclusion, diversity, the G is the gap in all of those things, and then the E is equity. And our mission is really about moving the narrative of DEI 
away from philosophy to operationalizing inclusion as a business practice. So operationalizing inclusivity as a business practice. And if that sounds like fucking nonsense to you, you'd be right. But it's also all of these DEI hires that have been getting fired. They're not getting fired because companies are cutting out DEI. They're getting fired because the companies want their employees who actually know how to do work to push the DEI tenants themselves. DEI is not going away. It's becoming embedded in the company practices. It's a philosophy. You cannot separate philosophy from this. It's, it's a moral imperative to these people, but also it is supposed to be something that you do in all aspects of your life. Well, our North Star is that. Um, our North Star is not necessarily marketing per se, because we believe that inclusion needs to cross the entire organization, marketing included, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, everywhere from organizational practices all the way to advocacy. Uh, yeah. And so the way that we come at it um, is that we look at the business practices, you know, our goal is really about operationalizing inclusion, as I said, as a business practice, not a philosophy anymore. Yeah. And, you know, to your point, Sasha, what that does is it removes the dependency of DE&I from an individual personal function and it places it squarely on everyone in the organization, right? Um, and so I can talk a little bit about a framework that we've created, but I'll I'll let you, you know, maybe ask other questions and then we can get there. Uh, no, I mean, I would love to hear this framework because you are speaking my language, right? I have always been one that said this needs to be a part of the DNA of the organization. That's right. If something happened to the one person that's responsible, it should not make everything else fall apart. Um, and so one of the things that we're noticing right now is so many organizations are letting go or cutting back the resources or funds to their diversity and inclusion offices, their chief diversity officers, et cetera. And people are just like, okay, so if that's gone, what else do we do? And it's like, it is, it should be part of your DNA. It should be part of your, your everyday operation. Like I've been saying, they are making it inescapable. A lot, a lot of us just want to be left alone. And unfortunately, if you want to be left alone, you have to actively fight to be left alone. You can't just be left alone the entire time. Because there are people who are interested in making sure you are never left alone. Ideological subversion in action. It's crazy that some people unironically have come out and been like, Kersha, I agree with most of what you say, and it's good that you're bringing attention to these things, but when you call it Marxism, you just sound kind of dumb. And it's like, that's what it fucking is! What do you mean? <laughs> Don't care if you make games for you, but leave my Spider-Man alone. Yeah. There are two sides, one that wants to win and one that wants to always be left alone. The side that wants to win will always win? Yes. It's very unfortunate. If you want to have freedom, you gotta, you gotta fight for it, man. A swap, eh? Thank you for the $50. Just realize that me and another creator, hard bastards, I'm very similar in what you're fighting against and how hard you go at it. He'd be a great interview. Escaped a cult, was a mega lib, saw the light, hard bastard. Oh my god. What kind of cult did he escape? Thank you for the 50! I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to remember that guy's name, like Mike's Hard Lemonade, Mike's Hard Bastard. <laughs> K Drake, thank you for the $5. Most people, don't burn your bridges, Kirsha. Nuke them from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. These, these people will use your standards, your sensibilities, and your morals against you. Because they want you to comply with what they're doing by any means necessary. They do not follow your rules, and they do not care what you think. And they are not above using your principles against you. And this is why it's impossible to fight against this if you are trying to be the better person, as it spicy were. Spicy cat raid? What the hell is this spicy cat raid? There's a playbook and they follow it, true and real. Me, me and my ghost tail, thank you for the raid. Welcome, raiders. Hope you had a good heckin' stream. Have to fight to be left alone? That sounds like Bridge the Kenosha Riot of Taming, and we're all Kyles. God damn. Having rules and morals only means someone without those things has a weak spot to attack. Good always fights at the disadvantage because they won't stoop to what evil will do to win. Um, you know, 
He was a Jehovah's Witness. You watch him all the time. Hot damn! That would be an interesting conversation. I love I love watching the uh, the A and E extreme cults and beliefs uh, show. I wish if there was you more of it. Buy a fox. Buy me. And you put the fox in your house. It's gonna do fox things. I'm gonna pee on your house. As someone that has been legitimately sexually harassed, these types of people make me angry. I can only imagine. I'm sorry that you had to deal with something like that, Gordo dude. Thank you for the ten dollar doodles. When I'm weaker than you, I ask for your freedom because that is according to your principles. When I'm stronger than you, I take away your freedom because that is according to my principles. Children of Dune. Yeah, that's also a good quote. Brewing Storm. They give the $10. Do pardon my autism earlier. I agree. Their ideology is good is evil and evil is good. That is it. Don't reason with that shit. I don't remember what your autism was earlier. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> regardless of um, which department you're a part of, and it goes beyond your employees. That's like, right. how is it impacting the industry that you're a part of? How is it impacting your customers and clients? You know, all of those things. And so, like I said, you're, you're speaking my language. Um, <laughs> so, you know, tell us a little bit about this framework, because I think, you know, many of the people that listen to the show are... You know, some are DEI practitioners, practitioners. some are in HR or in Interesting work. teams, and some are just leaders, you know, within their organizations that want to be more inclusive. And so if if you could share that framework so people have an understanding of, okay, this, these are some things I need to be considering or thinking about. Yeah. So, um, okay. So we decided um, kind of early on when we, um, when, when, you know, we created Bridge and, um, and you know, it should be said that we're still a young organization. Um, we're not yet a toddler, but I f but you know, we we're courageous, so we act like teenagers. Um, <laughs> and so, um, and so, uh, very early on, I got I was connected. So I had worked in a past you know past project with an incredible um, professor of marketing. These are the uh, ones who Emory make University, bad times. We've been in the bad times for a hot minute. And I was talking to him when I was creating uh, Bridge, and I said. You know, Omar, what can what research can we do that will change the trajectory and start to allow people, everyone in every company, to understand that inclusion is the job of all and not the job of one. It's the job of all. We don't we don't need DEI commissars. If everyone is pushing the ideology and doing the work, you want to keep your job as a programmer, right? Well, you're not going to be checking that inclusivity box anymore. You're going to be actively pushing our tenants. And so together we created a research program called Voices of Inclusion. And what we wanted to do was to understand what the business practices were that mm -hmm. contribute to equities or inequities in the marketplace. We focused on the marketplace because clearly there would be dependencies on the workplace. And there was not, there's not a lot of research out there on the marketplace, right? right? And so if you're an inclusive brand in the marketplace, then you're obviously doing some pretty good stuff in the workplace. So we interviewed about 50 chief diversity officers, chief marketing officers and CEOs. And, um, and what I should say, just as a kind of aside, uh, Sasha, I think it's important is if you look at the bridge board of directors, you'll mm -hmm. see an intersection between chief diversity officers. So we have like the chief diversity officer from Discover Financial and Unilever and Nielsen. But then we have the marketing leaders from Colgate and Indeed and Campbell's. And then we have CEOs from a number of different companies. Mm -hmm. um, because we believe, again, this is kind of acting out on our mission, is that the change needs to happen at that intersection of de and marketing and business. So fucking soup. Fucking soup! We need DEI at the intersection of marketing and business. Soup is what started all of this. Soup is what made me notice. Soup is what made me notice. And so I I like watching this and re-watching this every so often because it it just reminds me of how crazy these people are. Cause like you you can't read this and listen to this and hear what she's saying and think any of it is right or logical. Literally can't stop noticing. It reminds you what you fight against. It reminds you that all these game journalists circling the wagon and trying to gaslight you 
are doing the same exact thing as these people. They're pushing the same exact ideology and they're trying to use gaming as a culture mechanism to push their ideology. What do you mean, these peoples? Master Goa, thank you for the $5. You hate that people are calling both sides Gamergate or the whole culture war Gamergate. You remember, you remember Gamergate. They, Gamergate, were the good guys against the SJWs. We forgot that. I feel like it got muddied after a while as well because like people who did not really care about gaming or care to point out the Marxist subversion at the time were just trying to make like careers for themselves off of it instead of continuously talking about things that could be damaging. <laughs> Take your news from Foxy rather than Benny Boy. Who do ah! Help! Who's Benny Boy? Now yeah, give it the $2, Wrathbone. They wish the cult would take a page from the Heaven's Gate playbook, unironically. Why are people defending these things? <laughs> I don't know, man. Also, only 50 likes on the stream YouTube side. I don't I don't usually ask people for likes. I notice that. I notice that whenever I watch like other people's streams on YouTube, they're constantly asking people to like like the YouTube stream. Maybe I need to do that? I don't know. Maybe YouTube people need to be reminded to, to like it. I don't know. Mm, I just- I don't do it. It feels weird. Like, comment, and subscribe! Ironically, their ideology is very comparable to those who supported Jim Crow laws. Well, K-Strick, thank you for the five dollar doodles. I get that the YouTube stream has 700 plus likes. Oh, it might just be bugged for that guy then. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't ask people. Like, I know it's good, right? Like, I know getting more likes and getting more comments, like, the algorithm eats that shit up. Sometimes, you know, they eat that shit up. But I just, I feel weird. I feel weird being like, like, comment, subscribe, fuck, do it. Do it. I, I don't know. I've always, I've always felt, I've always felt really fucking weird about that. So it's like, if, if people do it, I, I feel happy. You know, I, I'm not gonna ask for it, though. Tim Combs, they give the two dollars. God, this is why you only play train games and chess. My uncle was trains, man. Trains is hard job. The likes don't update unless you reload the page. I don't even look at the likes. I don't think I've looked at the likes on a single one of my streams. <laughs> Wasn't Gamer Gate started because of two who are trading sex for game reviews? What a fucking train wreck. Yes, that is that is how it started. And because it all sounds nice, optics, it's simple enough for the normies to latch onto without much thought and get to feel like they're a part of something during these times of crisis of meaning. True, true and real. And then uh, I got this other this other video that I also posted here talking about how you must embody the work. This is, this is a lady who works at a university. A lady who works at a university. And again, like we, we've watched it. these videos on stream before, so that's why I'm not doing like too much commentary over them. But I, I think they are very important, especially if you haven't seen them before. It, it really puts into perspective what these people believe, what they want from you, what they expect the company and corporate culture to change, and how they expect to be forming consumer opinions around this culture as well. This is, this is all-encompassing, it's dangerous, and I think people are focusing too much on just Sweet Baby. Sweet Baby is an absolute problem. It's, it's parent companies that fund it are also problems. There are more companies like Sweet Baby and Bridge is the over-encompassing thing. Like companies that you buy shit from, that you consume ads from. Like you, you will not be able to go anywhere and escape this ideology unless more people start talking about it. Mm -hmm. I find it to be much more beneficial if somebody's living that in yes. their, you know, whether they're at home or not at home, but when they are in their world, because actually work would benefit, right? So what we do during the day, mm -hmm. I hope is beneficial, and I certainly believe uh, in the value of that work. I also think like if people go either turn off their computer or return home or air in their communities and nothing's really changed, then that's where it's this, you know, well, it's great that we do it between these windows or within this context, but have we really created the social or cultural or community shifts that ultimately, I believe, will benefit the broader society and, and world and community? And that's where I think, like, there's sort of... All this shit is garbage, it's propaganda, and this kind of propaganda will die anyway. Nobody buys the games they work on. And voting with your wallet is good, it's a good start, but these people do not care about the money, which is why, despite these companies bleeding out, you still see them doing it. 
Like, after after the Bud Light fiasco, we saw Dylan Mulvaney get hired by multiple other companies, including Nike. And everyone was like, but why would they hire someone that just tanked a company billions of dollars? Because it's not about the money. It is about winning the ideological war. And I, I know people don't want to hear that because culture war sounds cringe. But it's like, man, you've been in a culture war since before you were born. It's just about the amount of noticing you've done to see how far along it is. It's not, it's not about the money at this point in time. Voting with your wallet is good, yes, you will make an impact, but more needs to be done than just that. Like rats, they jump from ship to ship until the harbor is turned into a wreck yard. Yeah. If it were about the money, they would have left the comics industry a decade ago. Yeah. And it's, it's unfortunate that it's at that point that we have to figure out how to fight ideologically now. The song riff is still stuck in your head. You haven't forgiven me for that. What the hell? Larry Fink has destroyed us all. Honestly, we should have seen it coming. It was in the name. Hla! This isn't relegated to just the game industry. Yeah. Oh no, they will. They will lose hard. It's like you said, don't talk to them. Talk about them and do something about them. Yes. Yes, I'm I'm not demoralizing you, chat. Do not get demoralized. If you if it was um, impossible for you to win, the propaganda wouldn't be necessary. I do believe that we can change this around. You just have to remember that it it's not a fast process. It's not something that can be cured in one year, in three years, in five years, in a decade. But you have to start now. If you don't, if you don't start as soon as possible, it's only going to get worse. It's going to fester and it's going to rot. Be the change you want to see. Exactly. This, you know, almost like this, we, we rub close to it, but we just can't get there. Yeah. Um, and so when you think about it, like if for, for any of us who live the work, which can be problematic as well, because then when are you taking you know, rest hey, Haley, I care, refer to it as but also work. like when you're living the work, you're engaged in it in all aspects of your life, not just at work. So I don't know if yeah. that helps kind of make some of the distinctions Absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, the word that came to me as you were speaking was embodied, right? Where it goes beyond just checking the box of, I went to this DE uh, training, I, you know, mm -hmm. checking the box. What is she talking about? If you, if you aren't understanding what she's saying, she's saying that DEI should not just be a philosophy or something that you check a box on at, at a training at work so you can go continue about your life normally. DEI and the tenets of diversity, equity, and inclusion need to be something that are embedded into the tapestry of your life. You do the work of DEI at your job. You do the work of DEI in the face of your consumers. You do the work of DEI in your personal life, at your dinner table, at your conferences, in your friend groups. You are never done pushing the tenets of DEI. Fucking hell, ain't that a cult? Well, communism is a cult, yes. These, these are exactly what Marxist subversion is. This is how they subvert people, how they change language, how they try to get you to believe something that isn't real. These people are deranged, yes. Yes, and you can only convince people that this is happening without being called a conspiracy theorist by watching these people say this shit themselves like once once you see something with your eyes you should be able to believe it and trust in it do not listen to them saying don't believe your lying eyes listen to the party instead this is to how are you embodying bodying you know what you are learning and experiencing and what does that look like outside of this place that is going to compensate you for this work Right? How are you checking the folks that are at your dinner table right. or in your homes or communities like outside of this work? Remember, remember all those uh, family members that turned in their family members who were at January 6th? How they were like, uh, my uncle is a, is a danger to us and the community. I had to turn him in. Rem remember how they want people to be reporting on their loved ones in that manner? Um, because that could be very scary right and there's probably even more accountability outside of the workplace do these people have any idea how much they're despised they don't care because the way that they see the people who are against them and who despise them 
they see you as some sort of incompetent, deranged, racist, homophobic, sexist pile of worms. The, the dehumanizing language has been very evident for many decades now. And I'm sure if you've been paying attention to politics since at least 2016, you've noticed how the dehumanizing language has ramped up. You'll notice how it's okay to dehumanize certain people if they have certain beliefs or look a certain way. The hypocrisy is, is on purpose. It is purposeful. And because you are nothing, because you are a maggot, it is not only correct to be against you, it's good that you are someone who despises them because that's how they know that they're doing the right thing. In their, in their brains, the right thing. Reminds you of that list of the steps of genocide. Than there is inside of work. Um, and so that's the word that just came to me as mm. you were, were talking. And it's funny because when I was listening to, or I was kind of flipping through TikTok this morning, um, like I didn't have other stuff to do, but <laughs> was doing that and fell down that rabbit hole. And it was just one guy um, who talked about a white guy that was talking about being a keynote speaker at this event. And he was sitting at a dinner table, like, you know, kind of the networking thing and someone started one of the leaders another white male started to tell a joke that um he's like i can immediately tell it was going to have racial things, things that totally the happened the line was going to be a black person right he was like i can immediately sense that and, and tell that and he's like i have a decision to make in this moment do i kind of ignore it and you know ha ha, ha you know halfway laugh at it or do i stop it and he was like, that was probably one of the most difficult decisions, you know, to make because now you're risking your social capital mm. in order to, to speak up. Um, and he's like, you know, you may lose friends, you may, you know, all of those things, but embodying the work, right? I'm here as a keynote speaker to talk about, you know, how white men show up in diversity and inclusion. This happens. What do I do? Yeah. Right. And so it just kind of made me think about, you know, what you were saying. It's not just checking the box to say, I know the knowledge. It's how do I action this every single day in and out of work? Right. So that I think that that's um, just a beautiful way for us to or well, I can't even say beautiful way. I, I think that it's a it's the evolution. Mm. Going back to what you said earlier, an evolution of where we need to go at what organizations need to do. Right. It's not just checking that box but how does this look day to day yeah i have to ask what did he do did he say he said he spoke up of oh, course he did totally yeah. happened so that's yeah. where you when you live into it and the first time is probably i'm sure if that happened to be the first time for that person forget your personal life the work is all that matters when when she says that all i can think of is like the bland society in fucking uh equilibrium like, you, you are constantly doing the work, suppressing your emotions, and acting like a robot. Like, that's that's all I can think of. <laughs> and everybody clapped! Oh, yeah. It can feel disorienting or uncomfortable. Yeah. Maybe even empowering and uplifting. And then figuring out ways to just live that way all the time and, and, and again we're all live it all up. the time it's like obsessed with the perfection and it's like look you know it's not about the perfection but it is about a commitment and that that commitment yeah. is unwavering you need an unwavering commitment to the work tm and we're going to learn every day about a new community or a new group or a new set of language or whatever it is that we need to be better mm, cheeseburger <laughs> Oh God, not thus video again. Take another $5 to stop this for a moment. Thank you, Bleezy Love, for the $5 pause. <laughs> and just keeping that open mind and perspective to saying like, well, how we've done it is not the way we're likely gonna be doing it the rest yeah. of our lives. And um, yeah, I mean, so it's never, nobody, I don't think anybody has ever said this work was easy uh, that I'm, I'm aware of uh, and or if they did, they're not doing the work. They're not doing the work, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. right? And they're not living it. And and again, not yeah. not from the perspective of one shouldn't have, you know, 
<laughs> These people are fucking crazy. Like, I, oh I can't whenever I hear that shit. I think one of the most unnerving things is how they refer to pushing their destructive ideology as the work. As yeah. if it's ministry. This is 100% neo-religious style cultist shit. But that, that's cultists, exactly what somehow. Marxism was. There is still. Brewing Storm, they give the $5 doodles. Some 1984 shit going on. I wish I could go to another dimension. A ninth circle, thank you for the $5 doodles. You're not doing the work. I am doing the work. I'm doing the anti-work to their work. The way they speak about their ideology reminds you of an interview with someone who was going to be an unalive bomber. Jesus Christ. I love that both you and the dono had the same thought at the same time. And again, the, the woman that they're talking to in this one... Uh, is a justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion practitioner, by the way. Practitioner, by the way. Serving as an inaugural DEI director in Northwestern University's Office for Research. That's not, that's not awful at all that she's working in college. In <laughs> Hi, you, you just found me through a clip. Ooh, you appreciate that I speak up against this. The whole entire shit. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully I can keep looping on bridge and eventually... Those with more power and reach than I will rant about bridge and more things can get done by people who are smarter than me. Today you learned that your credit union only authorized 16 debit card uses a day. You gave too many super chats and now you can't buy Steam games. There's a fucking limit on cards? What the fuck? There's no way. That sounds crazy. <laughs> DRT is king! Thank you for the five! The left has taken from 220 years to 107 years to get to this point, and it will take just as long to pull them from every redoubt and fortress? You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And it's like, when you look at something that will take that long to fix, it can feel bleak. But again, just because those who came before us allowed things to get this bad, didn't want to notice, wanted to profit off of what they could in the meantime, just because they were shit about doing something about it doesn't mean that we have to be. If you, if you are someone that wants children, you should want to leave the world in a better state for your kids than it is right now. And if we start fixing it, we may not, we probably will not, be able to reap its entire benefits. But we'll know that we're building something that we can be proud of, that our children will be able to live better in, and it'll just, it'll just be, hopefully, they continue fixing the mess that was left behind. The question is how? I wish I had more brain cells, but I am just a retarded fox woman who managed to stumble down a rabbit hole because I decided to look up Campbell's Soup. You know, like, I, I didn't do some hardcore investigating. I was looking up Campbell's Jeez, Soup, man, and I fell down this way. well. And now I need to scream from the mountaintops until smarter people pick it up. people so very hard. In real life, not in Minecraft. Thanks for all the information, Finsub Fancy Foxu. Mike and his golden gear, thank you for the ten dollar doodles. I got doodles. a bonus at work today. Half of it was grabbed by Uncle Sam. The rest of it paid off my taxes from last year. Hate. I am still waiting on my CPA to finish my taxes, and I feel like when he sends them to me, I'm going to vomit. So thank you. Thank you for the $5, Centurion Max. Thank you! Isn't that what all foxes do? Stumble into rabbit holes, rip and tear into it? I mean, I guess fucking so. It's in my nature. It's in my nature. I'm a revolutionary against the Marxist march. Hopefully we'll do you proud. I don't think of myself as a revolutionary. I'm like, I'm like a little drummer boy, right? I can, I can wave a flag, I can drum a drum, but that's about the limit of my abilities, man. <laughs> your tax return didn't even pay for your TurboTax? Yeah, my, my tax filing is pretty expensive in and of itself, but thankfully that is uh, deductible for next year. <laughs> taxes hate. I don't want to pay taxes, but I also don't want to get shot by the IRS. All it takes is someone speaking out. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna rant and I'm gonna speak out, but I actually want something to get done. I don't, I don't want to have to loop ranting about this uh, forever, right? Like, obviously now it's going to be in a loop, but it's like... I don't want to be someone who becomes complacent and is like, well, nothing's going to get fixed, so I might as well just keep screaming while offering no solutions and thus just grifting. 
I don't want to do that. I want actual solutions. I want to help those solutions, and I want to do what I can despite my lack of ability. I don't. I don't want to rant always. I want to play video game again. Guess I just need to get an audience with Asmund Gold then. I think my my bridge rundown stuff is way too long for Asmund Gold to react to, and there's there's no way to like condense bridge into some sort of like 30 minute digestible video because it's way too much information and way too much that could be taken like far out of context oh i forgot to like link you guys that other post like if you I if you don't have everything in front of you obviously people are just gonna be like well that's just a conspiracy theory well that's just a conspiracy theory it's not real you're being crazy it's a far right fear campaign it's it's not happening but if it is that's a good thing Hayden, thank you for the ten dollars. As a business owner, you just had a state treasury send you a letter telling you owe them an additional three thousand from twenty twenty. I hate the government. Jesus fuck. I'm sorry to hear the government is raping you. King Heavy Meta, they give the two dollars. The IRS can have your taxes led first. God, I wish. I wish. I wish that like as a collective people. I wish as a collective people we could just be like, no fuck you. We're not going to pay taxes anymore. Like. Like, if collectively, the entire state of Texas like was like, dog, you fuck you us, are. you don't let us fucking defend our border, no one in Texas is going to pay federal taxes anymore. I don't know how you would do that, but it's just like, the only way to make a change would be to have so many people participating in that, that it would be impossible for any repercussions to matter. All of Kirsch's bridge coverage can be found in Discord. That's true. All of all of the resources that I have are, are in one big mega thread on bridge. Did that once, then we became a country. I know. We have lost the fire in our American blood. We need we need to once again throw the tea into the ocean. And uh, I also have I also have some some more little twittery twittery toodles here on uh on the swear babu nonsense. We have uh we have Cabrutus again saying to the developers out there, we're on your side. We just want to be respected and heard. Do not be afraid to reach us and say that you don't want DEI stuff in your game, or even that you had one of those companies working for you, but you don't want to do that anymore, and removed what they did from the final version of your product. Remember that we're fighting with you, not against you. If you're a developer and want to talk about it, be, be Cabrutus' guest at info underscore D-E-I-D at protonmail.com. Don't worry, I'll never reveal your identity if that's what you want. If you do this, be 100% sure that we'll support you. We will be on your side. I would love to see developers very publicly cut off Sweet Baby and any of the other companies that push this nonsense. If a developer decides to stand up and say, we don't want this in our game, we don't want to support this ideological subversion, we don't want to be forced and fear tactic into having to make these changes that people very clearly hate, we're not going to work with them. Any company that comes out and says that and actually lives by it, right? Not just lip service, but actually means they're not going to be working with any of these people will get very much rewarded for it. I know I'm not the only one that has the opinion you reward developers for doing good things in their market. I know a lot of you have strong feelings on gacha games in general, but again, Azure Lane is something that I feel has done well in their division. They don't make you pay for gacha. You don't need to spend money. It's not forcing you. There's no cuck mechanics. So I spend money on them as a developer. There are plenty of people who think like me who only spend money on devs who are doing good things in their market. Liar, thank you for the $10. Hey, Kirsha, you agree that we need to do something about these crazies in the game industry, but you think politics are stupid and gay. How can you help without having to do anything hard or boring? Unfortunately, even though politics are stupid and gay, you have to engage with them to a degree. I would say the best thing to do right now is vote with your wallet. If you're going to buy a game, if you're interested in a game, look at who the developers are, check who they're working with, look at the credits on the game, see if any of these people are associated with companies like Sweet Baby, or if they're associated with any sort of DEI pushes. Because it doesn't have to be with a company, right? It doesn't have to be with a company. It can be just a regular employee 
who's also done DEI summits. They could have done DEI talks. They could have gone to uh, DIGRA and participated in these things and then tried to bring it back to their company. I'm curious if he's done it. To solve this bridge issue is to speak with your wallet. Stop buying games. Fuck you, please! When their games flop, then they'll stop hiring these idiots. Tanker, I think you the fifteen dollars. Uh, to a degree, uh, yes, but also no. Like we just watched in the bridge videos, what happens when they start bleeding too much money is they fire the DEI officers, they fire the positions of specific DEI people, and with bridge, they're embedding it in the company culture. If you're not wasting that money on specific DEI hires, but you're having your programmers, your SFX engineers, your your like storyboard writers, your graphic designers, your 3D modelers, if you're having all of them do the same job as that DEI hire, you're saving money and you're still pushing that ideology. That is what Bridge is trying to do with all companies, which is why, again, you can't just focus on Sweet Baby I keep saying their name. I can't remember many of the other company names off the top of my head because I've been drowning in this rabbit hole for ages. But you you gotta pay attention to like the other the other people who have done stuff in here as well. That's why it's like I I hate it. But now when I go to buy a game, I'm going to have to look up who has worked on it in the same way that when I want to buy something on DoorDash or Uber Eats, I have to look up if the restaurant is real or if it's some fucking ghost kitchen from Chuck E. Cheese. It's been in the system in large org for years to try to submit a project for approval. They have a section about how the project forwards the goals and the goals are DEI. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying it hasn't been happening for ages, but bridge is the culmination of before the new bridge initiative of embedding it in company DNA. Bridge was created to monitor how DEI is doing in companies. And that's why they came to this conclusion after only two or three years of monitoring DEI efforts in companies. They were like, they're doing something, but it's not enough. Now is the time to normalize this as company practice. It's no longer marketing. It's no longer just an ideology. It's something that everyone will practice. Bridge is an overreach, and if exposed, it will be the point where the wave breaks and rolls back. That's what I am hoping. That's what I, if we can shine a light on what Bridge is trying to do before it gets it's too far time and again i only found bridge in january they started the initiative they set up their imax in august of last year so it, it's still fairly new but if we can get people to notice this before they start making it embedded in companies it will put a massive fork in their plan you're certain this will make me mad you only been able to get bits and pieces. So you're just going to be a filthy VOD watcher. Yeah, tonight's a doozy. That was a doozy. In insolent! Thank you for the 10 Canadians. Unfortunately, all the fake jobs created by people like Baby have become normal. You watched Dial of Destiny the other day, and there were like 5 or 10 COVID-adjacent jobs. Yeah? Yeah, they've, uh, they've been a little wild with what they're doing. Grums here has a S Proof Sweet Baby Inc. Ruins Games. SBI game Flintlock by A44 Games has been overrun by the woke. I used to work here. Flintlock was a good project with lots of potential. Then it was ruined. This last sentence is a quote, not directly from Grums himself. Before I go further, please note this is a rumor from a source that seems very knowledgeable about the studio's inner workings. Take that as it is. If others would like to verify, please DM me anon. The CEO and COO at A44 are no longer with the company, but the damage seems to have been done. The good devs at A44, I tell you how to fix this at the end of the thread. Do you know the protagonist of Flintlock used to be white? When COO and casting director Andrea Topps Harjo joined the studio, her first actions were to change the character to Hire Sweet Baby Inc. And change the main character to a POC. Gee, Sally, your boyfriend lets you have two comms? This marked the beginnings of the problems with the game and studio. Andrea Topps Harjo is rumored to have used the company's funds and manpower to power her personal agenda and projects on initiatives not related to the game or even the studio itself. One such initiative that I found is Inclusion FX, a VFX company, an advocacy company, with shades of Sweet Baby Inc. Here's the bio from the company. And she held this position at Flintlock at the same time that she ran Inclusion FX. 
I asked and confirmed, yes, I have witnessed our UI artists making art assets for its website as their sprint tasks. And here's uh, Andrea's bio, producer and inclusion FX founder. Andrea Tops Harjo has worked in the entertainment industry for almost 30 years. She has worked for Sony Pictures on Contact and Starship Troopers, <laughs> CineSight on X-Men 2, Electronic Arts, Medal of Honor, Weta FX, Rise of the Planet of the Apes and The Hobbit, and James Cameron's Lightstorm Entertainment Avatar sequels. She produced three independent films, Secrets, All In, and The Available Wife, and served as Mind and Machines VF VFX producer on Ridley Scott's Raised by Wolves. Andrea served as COO at A44 Games, Flintlock, in Wellington, New Zealand, and while there, founded Inclusion FX which is a platform designed to support and amplify underrepresented voices in the VFX for features, televisions, and game industries. Audria continues her work with IFX while producing independent feature films and now resides in Washington, D.C. And on the Inclusion FX page, it says, Inclusion FX is a platform designed to support and amplify underrepresented voices in the VFX for features, television, and games. Our goal is to give the next generation access to role models by sharing the hero's journey of a diverse range of professionals. Our team are uniquely positioned to unite the voices of giants in the VFX and games industries and present their perspectives as a united group of heroes the next generation can look up to. This will be achieved by broadcasting an ongoing series of panels that anyone can access. Every three months, we invite individuals from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds, from all aspects of visual effects, animation, and game development, to impart their wisdom, survival skills, and hero's journey via the IFX online channels. You want to know if she's made parts of those games to be shit in comparison? As <laughs> just like... When you when you start looking into these things, there is no limit to the depth. Survival skills. Didn't you know that you need survival skills to be in the room around white people? And that's why you just shouldn't hire them anymore? They might commit microaggressions, and that's just exhausting. A VFX company's problem isn't diversity related, it's exploitation and overwork. They don't care. <laughs> They're not actually trying to fix real problems. You want to know how she fucked up Medal of Honor, right? Aside from working with Sweet Baby Inc. and making changes to the game, Audria also directed numerous changes in HR in her role as COO. In 2021, most developers were denied raises and evaluations were postponed for at least six months. Audria told HR to inform anyone who complained or asked questions that the reason is because I said so. She also ordered the HR department to hide the salaries of the top execs of the company. HR tried to help, but were unable to get past this. The team was worried about the studio finances. Meanwhile, new hires and changes to the game resulted in a project where these people know nothing about how a video game is made. After nearly two years of these DEI changes at A44, the damage had been done. At this point, the studio was purchased for $175 million, an unusually high sum for a small studio, by the way, by Kepler Interactive in September 2021 a gaming collective fund whose founder also funded the Kowloon Knights Gaming Fund. It was at this point that Audria, the COO, left the company. Perhaps this was the start of a cleanup of the game's troubles. Hit! Help! The state of the game is unknown at this time, but it is believed to be in shambles after the two-year round of DEI changes. Hit! Help! As we now know, A44 reached out to Cabrutus to refute SBI's involvement, saying they're no longer involved and all their changes reversed. But when Cabrutus asked for proof, they refused to speak to him any further. And I think that's obviously very weird. If, if like, there's got to be some kind of proof that they have reversed the changes. And I don't, I don't think asking developers for some sort of pre-release build of their games is ever going to work. I don't think that developers should be put in a position of, like, they need to hand over their entire early access build. Because that, that brings in issues of, like, leaking, right? But I do think that they can provide screenshots. They can provide evidence of, like, this is what it was under these people. This is how we've changed it. They, they can show dialogue changes. They can, they can show these things, right? Bring back demos. Yeah, or they could make some sort of public demo to showcase it. 
I just I just don't think that was a really out of touch request. I agree. I think I think it was really out of touch to ask developers for an early access build. And like as as someone who worked closely with GameForge, even as a trusted partner with them that that they were paying me, I was on their payroll. Even then, it was a long process to get access to their test servers. Like it was it was difficult. That would never have worked. Indie devs still do demos. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes they do demos. It depends on how far along they are in, in the process of setting up the game as well. Why does she say help after she hiccups? Because it hurts. Because it's painful. Cabruta says, another thing here. Update. Uh, Illisk, ops manager for Kepler. This is Lissy K. Oh, it's a watermelon. Ops manager for Kepler Interactive, the studio that bought a44 that we were just talking about the studio that purchased a4 oh he says that next <laughs> the studio that purchased a44 is not happy with me breaking the story on flintlock a quick review of her homepage shows funding source is woke seems they won't be taking my advice or being honest with cabrutus and it says absolutely fuming vibrating off the fucking plane of reality this this week, pseudo journalism that the far right Gamergate asterisk are taking is so vile, incredible to see in real time and closer to home how wrong Grums. Oh, he's got the he's got the asterisk. He's a special special asset is damaging and how damaging he and his weird trope are. Yeah. How dare you look into what we're doing? How dare you? It's pseudo-journalism to look into what's going on around you. Here's my story. Good day. I'm Lissy, a video game producer by trade with a particular love for building and leading happy and engaged teams. I've grown diverse studios, shipped games, sold a million problems, or solved a million problems. <laughs> Freudian slip. I'm the force multiplier with a pinch of optimism. I thrive in the strategic business world in order to create solid foundations for creativity. Lissy Kane is a video games producer and co-founder of Girl Geek Academy. She's currently a senior operations and grown manager for Kepler Interactive as well as advisor for the Kowloon Knights Games Fund. She's also a board member of Vic Screen, a frequent advisor of game funds and public speaker. Previous to this, she formed her production career at League of Geeks, a Melbourne independent game studio, with her last role being production director, which saw her shaping the production department and broader team. Forever looking to improve and learn, Lissy is also an executive MBA candidate at Australia's top business school, graduating in August 2024. He says, it, this looks to self-confirm that many funding sources and games are woke, as I previously discussed. And somebody else has some more uh, information here. Uh, she protected all of her posts because, of course, you know. LissyKane.com, in preservation mode due to targeted online harassment. If you want to reach out, please use the regular channels. If you're experiencing online harassment, please review Take This's amazing resource here. Oh, we remember Take This Entertainment as well. We we remember that. That's uh that's interesting here. That's interesting here. The victim narrative. <laughs> and we have uh we have a, a big a big W as it were. Kotaku EIC resigns over new editorial edict. Staff at the site will be expected to create 50 guides a week. Jen Glennon, who took over as editor-in-chief of Kotaku in October, resigned on Thursday. In a resignation letter seen by Aftermath, Glennon says that she made this choice due to the management team's recent decision to deprioritize news in favor of guides. Kotaku always claimed to be about gaming, uh, but instead of being about gaming, they were more about complaining about people who enjoy games. And honestly... 50 guides a week does not seem possible. So it looks like to me when this edict is handed down and they say you must play video games as you work at a video game reporting agency and you must make an impossible number of guides per week. This is trying to get all the ideological freeloaders to leave. Chat GPT Kotaki. <laughs> Glennon is the second editor-in-chief of Kotaku since Stephen Totilo's departure in 2021, following Patricia Hernandez, who was fired in August 2023. Patricia is another name that is familiar as somebody who has been 
uh, crying out as she strikes you during this whole ordeal. Aftermath co-founder Riley McLeod functioned as interim editor-in-chief prior to Hernandez's hiring. After careful consideration, I've concluded that the current management structure and decision-making process at Geo Media are not aligned with my values and goals for Kotaku. Glennon wrote in her letter of resignation, which was addressed to Geo Media executives Jim Spanfeller and Leah Goldman. I firmly believe that the decision to invert Kotaku's editorial strategy to deprioritize news in favor of guides is fundamentally misguided given the current infrastructure of the site. Nobody, nobody fucking reads Kotaku for news. I've never once heard a single fucking person be like, you know what? I need to read the news today. Let's go to Kotaku. Values, goals. I mean, she's not wrong. The work is her values and the goals is to restructure everything in the Marxist view. The decision is directly contradicted by months of traffic data and shows an astonishing disregard for the livelihoods of the remaining writers and editors who work here. Glennon also announced her resignation on Twitter, writing, I've resigned from Kotaku and Jim Sponfeller is an herb. That's a weird insult and I'm not sure what it's supposed to mean. <laughs> Insolent! Thank you for the five Canadians. Creating that amount is easy. Create a guide that needs a guide that needs a guide that needs. I just read old ass guides, dude. See the girl that made the infiltrating Discord article say she was going back to. Oh, I have that in a tab as a horror. Don't you fucking worry, baby. According to a source close to the situation, Kotaku's staff will be expected to create 50 guides a week at the site. Currently, Kotaku's homepage features a prominent games and tips and guides module at the top of the page in a space that was previously reserved for major stories and breaking news. Nobody goes to Kotaku for breaking news. Nobody, nobody thinks for one fucking second anyone who writes for Kotaku, one, actually plays video games, and two, is capable of writing objectively. Staff members have criticized the homepage redesign on social media, noting that Kotaku's major source of traffic is not guides. That's because you post rage bait, dude. Which, again, I was I was a bad goral and I didn't fucking archive that IGN article I read earlier. Strive, strive to only read these things archived if you can remember. Ugh. Aftermath reached out to Geo Media for comment but did not immediately receive a response. Since Great Hill Partners' acquisition of the sites, then known as Gizmodo Media, in 2019, the overall portfolio has seen a decline in traffic as well as an exodus of editorial leadership and staff. The co-founders of Aftermath included. Most recently, Spanfeller announced the sale of Deadspin and the layup. Oh no, that's Meat Spin. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. And the layoff of all staff working there. In November, Paste bought former Geo Media site Jezebel following the site's closure and a full layoff of its staff. In March 2023, former Geo site Lifehacker was sold to Ziff Davis. That sounds like a Futurama name. <laughs> Professor John Wolfman, thank you for the $10-y doodles. Game journals have to write about games. Oh, no! Imagine being a game journalist and having to actually play a game! What a travesty. I can't remember the name of that journalist, but last year, I was, like, looking up... People, people were talking about how Sekiro was harder than... Uh, oh god, they're saying Sekiro is, like, much harder than Elden Ring or some shit. And the article I was reading, I looked up the guy who wrote it, and I looked up his Elden Ring guide. And it turns out that he didn't play either of those games. He watched a streamer play those games, and then wrote articles based on what he watched the streamer doing. And it's just like, man, games journalism is, like, even more dishonest than regular journalism somehow. Like... If you are a games journalist, you, you might as well not even be sentient at that point. <laughs> you think you called this in Discord? I wish I could remember the name of the guy, and I don't even know if it was a stream that's been tagged or not. That's saying something. <laughs> that's like getting paid to do shitty work on a school project, right? Right, it's kind of fucking nuts to me. We got, a. Uh, Who's, who's this? We got Megan Farouk, Farouk Manesh 
senior writer for Wired, covering video games previously at Axios and Verge. Urbass decision to deprioritize news and have the staff focus on content churn. According to a source close to the situation, Kotaku's staff will be expected to create 50 guides a week. Currently, Kotaku's homepage features the Game Tips and Guides module. I think this was the article we just read that she uh, pulled it from. They're deprioritizing news because not only can you people not write news articles, you can't write them honestly. Like, if you're going to lie about situations boldfacedly where any random person on Twitter can post the proof that you're lying, you have proven that you can't do your jobs. I don't understand. We got uh, Alyssa Mercante, everyone, everyone's favorite. Guides are not a switch, you flip. Reporting, news, reviews, guides, they all use different muscles, require different abilities, different resources, different prep time. Some writers excel at one and not the other. If you don't get this, you don't understand how to run a website. <laughs> they require you to play the game, imagine. Imagine being a video game writer, journalist person and having to play video games. <laughs> Guides take muscle. Kotaku is supposed to be a gaming website if the writers aren't talented enough as writers to quickly learn how to write game guides for a gaming website instead of racialist activism like this, then they can and should find jobs elsewhere. Fucking based, dude. Correct. Based and correct. <laughs> Kotaku was a joke 12 years ago. Kotaku's always been a fucking joke, and it's nuts! It's insane that these people are so deluded that they think they had any sort of status anywhere. Nobody has taken them seriously. <laughs> we have uh, another, another old December 21st, 2023 tweet from Alyssa Mercante, where she says, I'm just gonna go back to sex work because at least then when I get fucked a lot, I'll get paid well for it. Imagine having a job as simple as playing games and writing about them. And yet you think going back to sex work is better. No wonder she can't write for shit and all she can do is lie. Oh my God. <laughs> Need a bridge emote for quick referencing. Ah! Would, would rather would rather devalue herself than play video games. Yeah, because video games are for fucking losers, obviously. <laughs> Given the traditional game journal sex trades, how do you think she got this job? True, true and real. Grums does more journalism in one tweet than Kotaku in a month. Also fucking true. Just uh, I've probably done more journalism since the beginning of this year than everyone who works for Kotaku collectively in a year. <laughs> like, come on, dude. <laughs> you stopped trusting video game journalism when you read a low effort review of Warcraft 3. <laughs> Zoe School of Job Hirings. <laughs> they did, they had to do the work. The work. Re <laughs> This kind of led me down a little bit of a nutter hole, which I'm just going to do super fast, I think. Um, where does it start? Okay. This is this one. Fortune. Inside the turnaround plan to make Vans Supreme and the North Face cool again. VF Corps' new CEO, Bracken Darrell, knows his way around a big corporate fix-up job. Before taking the helm at the troubled footwear and apparel maker last summer, Darrell spent more than a decade atop Logitech, whose tech accessory products like keyboards, headphones, and microphones were no longer needed as tablets became popularized. Earlier in his career, he bought Procter & Gamble's Old Spice brand back to life by appealing to younger men. I don't know if he's responsible for them, but the only the only Old Spice commercials I know are the ones with Terry Crews in them. And those are fucking banging. So like if he was responsible for that, I can I can give him a bit of a thumbs up there, obviously. Why does that start in a sexual uh -huh. way? What the heck? Andrew, thank you for the 
two dollars. Lie on the site or lie on her back. She's good at doing both, I guess. Insulin! Thank you for the two Canadians! Have you seen Corn? We're both video games and segs. What? <laughs> Terry is a national treasure. He is! He is! I don't really understand how Old Spice didn't appeal to younger men, but I guess I would have to, like, go and look at Old Spice commercials to see exactly what they were changed from and why. But I don't know about all that. Continuing, now at VF with a stable of brands like Vans, The North Face, Timbaland, and Dickies that are all in decline, Daryl again has his hands full. Take Vans, the once hot, now cold, skateboarder shoe brand. Sales fell 29% last quarter, and some argue it has lost its cool factor. The North Face, meanwhile, has lost ground to brands like Cotopaxi, Arcteryx, and of course, longtime arc rival, Patagonia. I have literally only ever heard of Patagonia. I have never heard of Cotopaxi or Arcteryx. Nev I don't know what those are. And let's not forget that in May, VF took the second of two big write-downs, totaling one-third of the two billion it spent in 2021 on Supreme, the hip streetwear brand that was supposed to re-energize the whole company. How is it supposed to re-energize? The majority of people I ever heard talking about Supreme were making fun of it and the people who bought it because it was incredibly fucking dumb. Supreme is a psyop, right? These numbers are sobering considering just a few years ago, VF was held up as a model for running a portfolio company. Revenue doubled and profits quadrupled between 2000 and 2016. In the last two years, however, shares have fallen 75%. Daryl, under pressure from an activist shareholder he has mollified for now, admits he is making changes that will likely take some time to pay off. But still in emergency mode, he says he's very hands-on in fixing vans for years VF's engines of growth. And I stopped here. I, I still have not finished reading this entire article. I s immediately stopped with under pressure from an activist shareholder. And I was like, what did they mean by this? So I went down a bit of a hole. And I looked at VF Core's uh, page, and they obviously have an inclusion, diversity, equity, and action program. We are committed to building and maintaining a workplace at VF that celebrates the diversity of our associates, regardless of gender, identity, nationality, ethnic origin, religion, worldview, abilities, age, sexual orientation, or other aspects of identity, and celebrate them as they bring their unique selves to work every day. And they have their uh, ESG report for 2023, uh, their Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Action annual profile from 2022, uh, the Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Action policy statement, uh, and whatever an EEO1 report is. I have no idea what that is. Uh, elevating inclusion, diversity, and equity means aligning our strategy with our overall purpose to create a culture of belonging that encourages associates to thrive. This strategy serves as our roadmap and is focused on three key pillars. The associate and VF culture, associate and VF culture strategic pillar focuses on impacting the entirety of the employee life cycle. We want to ensure all of our global associates experience an authentic and inclusive work culture. And there's that, there's that bridge language again, eh? Brand and consumer. The brand and consumer strategic pillar emphasizes the promotion of inclusion, diversity, equity, and action through brand campaigns, product designs, and activations. How would you, how would you emphasize equity in product design or equity in product activation? What would that even mean? More bridge language. Society and movements. The society and movement strategic pillar reinforces our intention to promote inclusivity and equal access to self-discovery across gender, ability, ethnicity, lifestyles, and economics within the local communities where we live and serve. VF, our brands, and our associates continue to exemplify the hard work it takes to improve the effectiveness and success of our organization. We will continue on this path of creating a better company and a better world. Equal access to self-discovery across gender and lifestyles, where we live and serve. This, what is, what did they mean by this? Our leaders at VF are advocates and allies for inclusion, diversity, equity, and action, and we are proud of them. They're using their voices to set our strategic direction through four councils. The G 
IDEC, Global Inclusion, Diversity and Equity Council, the EIN, which is an MEEA inclusion network, the AIDC, Asia Inclusion and Diversity Council, and CARE, the Council to Advance Racial Equity. And I want to remind you guys, they said that North Face was one of the brands under their umbrella, and North Face recently had that initiative where you can get... to my favorite weather woman. Weather woman! Hold on, I'm going to skip the alert. I'm sorry, I'll have to read it after. This is, uh, the North Face company did the, if you complete diversity, equity, and inclusion training, you'll get a 20% off coupon. If we remember that. I am most devastated by, by Vans here. I always knew Vans had, like, the LGBT inclusion diversity stuff on their webpage. And I haven't bought a new pair of Vans in a really long time, but it still, it still hurts me, man. Just like Wayland Yatani building better worlds. Funny story. You should watch it. Alan, the eighth passenger. It's like flipping over a nice rock and watching all the insects underneath. I know. I know. They missed a perfect time to name themselves AIDS. Currently, we have four employee resource groups, ERGs, with 20 chapters across the globe that help us cultivate an inclusive culture. What a weird fucking thing to say. They create a safe space for learning and dialogue about underrepresented groups, establishing a sense of community amongst associates and providing platforms to collect and share insights to support business imperatives. They have uh, ACE Diversity, which is Attract, Connect, Engage Diversity. Uh, they have Women of VF Employee Network called Woven. Uh, VF Pride, focus on creating inclusive environment for LGBT plus employees and allies that support and enhance authenticity and individuality. This ERG connects, engages, and empowers the VF Pride community. And then they, uh, they shoved veterans down here at the bottom for some reason. That's the first time I've ever seen veterans included in an ESG policy. Our partners for progress are the United Nations Human Rights Office, the CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion, Paradigm for Parity, C4DI, I haven't heard of this one, uh, Camber Outdoors, Envisioning a Future of Everyone's Outdoors. This national organization is dedicated to achieving equity for all women in underrepresented communities in the workplace of active outdoor industries through innovative and thought-leading programming and initiatives. Do you guys remember that article from like 2014 where they said, the outdoors is racist, that's white supremacy stuff. Uh, we all thought it was a joke. Turns out it's not. The outdoors is actually white supremacy and we need equity in the forest. Disability, IN, leading nonprofit organization, serves as a resource for business disability inclusion worldwide. And they have a management leadership for tomorrow. Our partnership with this national nonprofit organization will allow us to launch Black Equity at Work a first-of-its-kind certification program designed to establish corporate standards around the support of racial equity. So, obviously, I would like to not spend any money on anything that is in the VF Core umbrella, but it goes—it goes a little bit—it goes a little bit more than that. I, I decided to Google around anything to do with Bridge and this uh, this corporation, uh, VF Core. And I found this woman, Dee Dee Shum, who said, I'm still speechless from yesterday's amazing panel discussion with top women leaders in marketing, Aselda Bun Susan, Kim Courtney, N N Nilukshi De Silva, Jessamine Myers, Tracy Spiegelman. These are moments I've hoped for, and I'm really thankful for each speaker's on being transparent and authentic. To know that the audiences walked away yesterday with encouragements and inspiration, this is why I continue to keep going. Thank you to Brand Innovators, Great Jones Distilling Company, and AdsMobile. Down here we see VF Corporation's Kim Courtney. So VF Corporation had one of their people in marketing attend this and be a speaker at it. And it was also promoted by AdsMobile. And if we, if we go to Bridges' website, if we go to Bridges' website, AdsMobile, their chief revenue officer at AdsMobile, is on the members of Bridge. That's, uh, that's an interesting connection here. Uh, that's, that's interesting. And uh, Dee Dee Shum, Dee Dee Shum here also, AdsMobile. Interesting. Interesting. Odd. AdsMobile member. AdsMobile member. 
And then that led me to the Brand Innovators YouTube channel, which, much like the DEI After Five channel, has a gajillion videos with barely any views. And I really was interested in finding this summit that they had nine months ago. We closed off our content at Great Jones Distilling Company with this inspiring panel on shaping the future and leading the way for women in marketing. I really wanted to find this. And I couldn't seem to find, as you can see, I'm down here at 10 months ago. Down here, down here at 10 months ago. I, uh, I couldn't find anything from this specific panel. But we can, we can see some of the weird names of these videos. I haven't had time to really watch any of them. But we have, like, Adapting to the Future, an inside look at the marketing organizations of tomorrow. How three wishes succeed with a cliffhanger mindset. Digital transformation, data-driven strategies. Uh, d driving social impact with partnerships. Uh, so, like, you gotta, you gotta look for the, the strange words that they use when they're talking about certain, certain initiatives, as it were. And they have, they have all sorts of companies, obviously, because it's a, it's a brand, nice fucking thumbnails. Well, they, they, they start just using, like, the, the people who were there. Um, so I haven't, I haven't gotten to watch any of these behind the taco. <laughs> the future of consumer loyalty. Building brand experiences that matter with the Indianapolis Colts interesting and so there's a lot of there's a lot of just like strange titles in here and you can see they're about they're about half an hour or so for most of these videos 20 minutes to half an hour <coughs> so it would take it would take a good chunk of time to try and parse through some of these and there was one if i scroll all the way up because they're an active channel posted like two days ago right uh we have Exploring media strategies and channels to reach consumers, which seems normal enough, right? Cultural relevance, shaping and embracing today's multi-general culture with AARP. That's one I would probably want to watch because it has weird language. Building brand relevance and lasting loyalty. Using influencers and brands to drive consumer connection. Let's, let's see, anything, anything else jumping out here? Anything, anything else jumping out here? Uh, no... But it's like it's just looking it's just looking for that strange language and trying to trying to find them. And I found one that I started watching called DE and I and Cultural Fluency Panel. And I, as you can see, did not get to finish watching this, and I do not have time to play this full video today. But I do want to play it probably tomorrow when I start stream. And I have Tiger Knox uh Pixels deep dive to go through as well. Since Pixels is involved with all of the, uh, sweet baby stuff. But during, during this thing, at one point, and I remember them saying, and this looks like, this looks like some, well, she's, she's got a very, it's like, I can't tell what that person is. But you can see that most, these people are, are all women. And at one point they talk about how diverse their panel is. And I'm like, there's not a single man there. There's not, there's not, there's not a, a single, that's a man. I mean, it kind of, it kind of looks like it, but you know, it could just be an unfortunate, unflattering picture, y you know, <laughs> you know, it could just be D E and I didn't earn it pretty much. HR Karen's making video about HR Karen's for HR Karen's. I wish it was just that unironically a human designated birthing persons. Very clever, Foxy. Notice they're in chief. Boycott Warhammer. Thank you for the two pounds. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll probably I'll probably start stream with this video tomorrow. And in in searching for like this weird stuff that I found, we have I found more bridge posts. Bridge on the Supreme Supreme Court decision to overturn affirmative action. Cheryl Dijer writes, The Supreme Court's decision to overturn affirmative action is yet another devastating setback in the ongoing fight for diversity, equity, and inclusion in this country. As Justice Sonia Sotomayor commented, this decision rolls back decades of precedent and momentous progress. Affirmative action was instituted to level the playing field for underrepresented communities and to bring equity to a system that favored the wealthy. Wow. I'm glad, I'm glad that somebody has the balls to actually say what affirmative action was instead of just calling people who said that racists, I'm gonna be honest. 
typically white families, of course. The irony is that the very argument used to overturn the ruling that it biases black and brown students now reverts back disproportionately to biasing those who are already advantaged. This, la this lady, Cray. This and the government's attacks on DEI are a gross mischaracterization of the benefits and opportunities it creates for everyone. Because students of all races would unequivocally receive a better education when exposed to different viewpoints and people with lived experiences that aren't their own. I wish I could say something about, you know, being, being the white kid in an inner city school, but I feel like that might get me banned. <laughs> Citation needed! The targeted assault on equity is an intentional effort to preserve the existing power structure rather than strive for a more inclusive society. Harkening back to the days of Jim Crow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Jim Crow to not give people special advantages and privileges. That's, that's so true, sister. So true. As we can no longer rely on the government to build a more inclusive and equitable country, Bridge calls on corporate America to do what the government won't, to double down on their commitment to build more inclusive brands and companies to accelerate further representation across their organizations, both in the workplace and the marketplace. We stand ready to help. We have the grit to fight this. No way city slickers can stay away. <laughs> Wait, can Kirsha be a product? Yeah, and they Kirsha Cube. Well, technically Uwu Market did, but it was my idea, my brain. <laughs> Not going to a high school made you motivated in middle school to make sure you got a tech trade high school. It's like the, the one diversity these people don't focus on is diversity of thought. You know, they used to make fun of people who literally use ads to find the politics in a ham sandwich, and now they've actually slathered it in there. Unironically, the people who are like seeing the weird shit in the ham sandwich, they, they were right, dude. Why a cube specifically? Because they're easier for honorable chatters to make a hole in. What the fuck is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? We got a uh, more on the bridge page, and I'm I'm really excited about this actually. Don't miss out on our early bird savings for Bridge 24, and they're ending soon. Register by April 4th to save $200. I, I wish... How, how much are these passes that this early bird special is saving? 200 Holy shit. Join us for Bridge 24. Inclusion is good for business retreat. May 5th to 7th at the stunning Estianza La Jolla Hotel and Spa. I can't wait until this fucking retreat happens, dude. Like, I hope we get some crazy fucking talks out of this. Like, we'll see from uh, from the game developers conference. I, like, I need to see. Especially if they're calling it inclusion is good for business. Like, please, dude. Can you, can you be any more on the nose? Ah, help. How could they have diversity of thought when they're a hive mind? And then, uh, Cheryl Dijah here with another post that I found interesting. Love all my conversations with Mark D. Walker, bridge board member. They're insightful, determined, and transparent, and totally agree with him. DEI is the responsibility of the entire marketing community. We have to start opening up the conversations to all portions of the media value chain. If we only judge the components of what goes into the last mile, we missed the mark. Read more of the interview below and stay tuned for some news on how we are bringing the industry together on inclusive media strategies. If you can't say something, then I'll say how it is being a black kid that acts white. My stuff was destroyed and stolen. I got beaten a few times and all for the crime of reading and doing my school work. I want to glow harder, but in a city hate. Dr. Fost MD, thank you for the five dollar doodles. I'm sorry you had to deal with that dumb bullshit. As that sounds literally not enjoyable to be around whatsoever. I'm glad you're doing good for yourself now, dude. Lived experience is unreliable because someone telling you they met Bigfoot as a kid and were confident of it. Just be a schizo. You can't take their word as truth. God damn. <laughs> and this this was posted seven months ago. 
So this was right before they released their IMAX initiative in August of last year. Their IMAX initiative was in August. Insulin! Thank you for the five Canadians! The goal of being colorblind, fair, and meritous dies with DEI. Off to work for you. Thanks for quickly becoming a Friday tradition. Have a good night at work! I'm sorry I keep going over my normal stream time. I am terrible at time. On this, uh, this, this We Are Bridge post that Cheryl is quoting says almost 90% of diverse slash multicultural consumer reports taking action after a marketer invested in their community. Meet Bridge board member Mark D. Walker, co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Direct Digital Holdings, which owns and manages several buy and sell side ad tech companies. He knows that money is being left on the table when brands and agencies look past multicultural communities. In the Bridge Q&A, we talk with Mark about DEI and ad tech and the responsibility of marketing community to invest in minority-owned companies along the entire media and marketing value chain. And I think, I, think it's, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting when you, when you see some of these things. Let me, let me see if I can actually find it really quick here. I want, like, Macy's, and I want, like, maybe this... Let's see, let's see if it shows up here. No. Um, maybe, maybe it was this that I searched for? Coupon excluded. Excluded. I don't know where I found it. I don't know what I searched for. I know it was on Macy's. I know it was on Macy's because I saw it and I was like, what the, what the heck? What the heck? And this this kind of ties into like, I guess us making lists on the on the schweer baby stuff. Okay, here's here's one. Here's one, but I don't see. I don't see coupon. It's all coupon excluded. Maybe maybe it was. Oh, you know, I think it was jewelry. I think it was jewelry. Let me open a new tab. Um. Yeah, gold. It's gotta be gold, man. It's gotta be gold. I don't think more like this. Ah, here we go. Okay, here we go. So on Macy's, and I haven't noticed this on any other website. I haven't noticed this anywhere else. But like on this shoe here, on this shoe here, it's like Katy Perry, obviously, but it says woman owned. And I was like, that's interesting. I wonder why it's telling me this is a woman-owned shoe. And then I was I was looking at anklets because I really I really want a dingly dangly anklet that makes a lot of noise because I I like I like having pretty feet, okay? So, <laughs> so I was looking over here and there's some gold chains here, and it tells you that it's black owned. And I was like, that's that's interesting that you're putting these identifiers to show that a brand is either black or woman owned. That's uh that's a little strange. So they're making easily identifiable lists so people can support certain businesses based on gender or race. It tells you <laughs> Oh god, does <laughs> don't notice that they're chains, chat. Stop it. <laughs> and so people cannot support, yeah? It's, it's just like, I haven't bought anything from Macy's in a hot fucking minute. So when I came to the site and I noticed these like little flags here, I was like, that's a, that's a little strange. Didn't Google try this on maps and it backfired horribly? I don't know if it was on maps, but I remember that they put out a list for this years ago. And it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the sweet baby thing, right? If you're going to make a list, people are going to use the list to opt out of buying whatever kind of social justice issue that you're pushing by notating it. But also there are people who are probably going to use it because they believe in that kind of thing and it will make them more likely to buy that product over something else, right? Like, now nah, you mean Japan sells used panties? But why jewels are pre-owned? They're not pre-owned! It means, it means it's an owned business. Kirsha wants to buy chains. I do. I want. I want the ones that are like belly dancer anklets. They're so cute. They're so cute. The children yearn for segregation, but we'll only give them the minds. You're on Macy's right now. You're not seeing that. Uh, I mean, 
it's not on everything as you can see like this one right here this one doesn't have it gianni bernini doesn't doesn't have it it's only going to be on the companies that are black owned woman owned i don't know if they do it for other ethnicities besides black because like this was the first time i've seen it was like the other night what did you miss <laughs> I was like, I, I'm not, I'm not like editing the website, so I, I don't know what to tell you. It's on my machine, man. <laughs> no Hispanic owned, not buying. Where, where is my anklet with little maracas hanging off of it? <laughs> Our product might not be the best based on merit, but we are black owned. I mean, they could have a very good product for all I know. I'm just saying it's a little weird. It's a little weird to try and like influence decision like my my moon cat nail polish that i've always bought they they've started talking about how you know they're they're a woman-owned company and it's like well yes you are but that's not why i buy from you ankle cat collar with bell three dollars done what the fuck i feel like this is marketing products for companies to avoid it's very weird it's very weird Whatever, whatever happened to buying something that was good quality i don't even know how you buy something that's good quality like jewelry anymore like, I feel like it's very easy to get taken advantage of by being sold something either lab created or just plated. When we ended forced segregation, we should have gotten freedom of association. Instead, we got forced integration. Now they want to forcefully segregate us again. That's just like, I thought I thought we had always had freedom of association, but I, I guess not if we're calling for segregation again. It's real fucking weird. Even running shoes are hard to buy. Yeah. Eh. Brewing Storm, thank you for the two dollars. Sus! <laughs> because money influence decision one way or another. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously there to influence decision, but it's like, I don't know, it's, it's weird to me because like, I don't care. I don't care if I'm buying from a black business or a white business or a woman owned business. I like, I don't give a shit. Is your, is your product what I'm looking for? Is what I give a shit about. So just like noticing that they put this on here is just like meh. That's kind of that's kind of weird. That's kind of odd. When the government contracts for purchase or services being woman or black owned matters, that's kind of unfortunate. I think if there was another World War Three and these people got drafted, you'd hope this shit would stop. You're only okay with segregation if we're allowed to do it too. That's not how it works. <laughs> You should care because the message! I don't care about their message! They're fucking weird! They're fucking weird. Alright. Alright, I am giga, giga, giga over. Uh, I'm assuming Peeba is streaming tonight. So I should probably... She's on She's on old school RuneScape right now. I guess I can I can dump YouTube people into her, uh, into her waiting room and then just uh, raid on Twitch. Let's just raid on Twitch because I know I know she's at uh, 9 p.m. soon. It's almost 9, Jesus! I know. I'm I'm a bad influence chat. I can't I can't stop yapping about Bridge. It's ogre. They know. Yeah, speaking of black women, let's uh, raid into Pippa. <laughs> get it custom made by a local jeweler. That's true. You could get custom jewelry. I have no idea how much that would cost though. Literally no idea. The yickening, it's coming. Don't say that. Don't say that. I don't want to yick. I'll do it if she wants to collab and suffer together, but that's the, that's the only fucking way I'm playing any yick shit, dude. <laughs> so let me let me figure out YouTube's, YouTube rating here. Hold on. Hold on a goddamn second. My browser's being really slow right now. God damn. God damn. A bridge to yik raid. You know, whoever we raid on Twitch is gonna have no idea what that is. <laughs> She's a old school RuneScape. What's the? Close oh the god. Fucking tab. She's oh psychopath. god. What's the? What's the name of her uh, motherfucking vod for for waiting room for nine? <laughs> because all I see is her old school RuneScape, and that's what she's doing right now. She's starting in 20 minutes. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna dump you two people in her waiting room. You got you guys can pee and yeah, get some food before the Benoit is live. Black owned raid. Don't do that. Don't remember remember the rules, chat. Don't don't be terrible. Kato is Shoho. 
upcoming Katowa Shoho part five. It's got to be part five, right? It's got to be that one. May, March 20, I almost said May. 9 p.m. March 20, today is the 22nd. All right, save. All right, save. Part five, thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna dump you guys off in our YouTube waiting room and then uh on on Twitch, who will who will I raid on Twitch? We raided Hanya recently. We raided Hanya recently. Ah uh, no. Yeah. Oh God, help! Oh, Pickle's on. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Threaten Pickle with eating her family again. Let's go. What is what is this creepy house thing? Does a 40 year old confronted his ex girlfriend? What the fuck? What is happening? I don't know what's happening. We're gonna raid Pickle. If you're if you're on Twitch, we're raiding Pickle. If you're on YouTube, you're gonna get you're gonna get sent to Pipkin Pippa's waiting room for her Kato Show Show stream. A bridge to Yik is fine. Well, thank you for hanging out with me on this uh, fancy Fendom Foxu Friday. Thank you, thank you. I will see all of you nerds tomorrow for a, a little bit of bridging once again, and then uh, some Chillizard game. Chillizard tomorrow! I'm excited! I love Chillizard stuff! Uh, please give Pickle some love, and I will see you guys tomorrow! Have a great rest of your night, everyone. Bye-bye. Police were getting close. Jeff Box picked up bed. the larger oh, knife. No. When he saw the patrol cars outside the house, he put the 10-inch carving wow. knife to his neck, said something.